uh, Beneath Dark Wings, uh, episode titled Beyond the Gilded Cage. Uh, if you know that, you get uh, one half of a meatball from Sabaro. <laughs> Sabaro <laughs> clothes! Fucking, and oh, and we, those and we, uh, like, you can't, you Wait, Sabaro is gone? No, just the one the that one was here. down the oh. street. I can still, uh, you're saying I still go to New York and get my favorite pizza the on the planet. Cage. My favorite New York style pizza is Sabaro and a half a crusty meatball. <laughs> I have a sure. crazy meatball as my other only fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's one of those days, folks. What happened last time on Beneath Dark Wings? Previously. <laughs> you all began the session. <laughs> we need an exclamation point only fans. <laughs> Where's our wake? Hey! <laughs> Low guard! Uh, okay. Ooh, I'm not even drinking. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, because everything's not avian yet. Yeah, it's not yet. It will be. Uh, that said, <laughs> you all are in, were in the lair of Rajani, the eternal blossom, the ancient golden dragon who had been pulling the strings uh, basically for this entire time. Um, as you made your way down to face her, uh, you, you saw as she tried to plead with you to join her cause, to see the world as she could make it, with a plague that did not bring about uh, bestial chaos, but brought about submission, order, and potentially good. The greater good at the very least. Maybe not good as each individual defines it. Um, and you all rejected it as you saw that at the center of this chamber, Herja and Torvald were working feverishly to forge Heart Cleaver, the glaive of Baphomet, into the glaive of the Seven Laws, which had the Rod of Law within, into a single super weapon. Uh, a great uh, battle was uh, uh, engaged in, and uh, in the course of the battle, Caprice was slain by the dragon, and most of the party almost was slain. Just a That's couple close. of very lucky rolls. It was about to be a 1v1 with yes, the dragon. Yes, it was about to be a 1v1 uh, dragon versus Toa. But at the end of the day, they were able to, Toa was able to smash the skull of Rajani, her life force, her anima, uh, fizzling out, causing a great explosion at the forging, the great forge at the center of this, uh, of this, of this chamber. Um, and in the process, it instantly turned Torvald into a jade statue, which she had been doing to all of her artisans and minions, humanoid minions, that had forged her magnificent lair over the centuries, uh, or the decades at least. And uh, Herja on the side with Heart Cleaver immediately got fully transformed into a beastman, uh, musk oxen variety, uh, full, just full transformation. Uh, although she was unconscious. Uh, as the, the dust settled, Iris attempted to resurrect Caprice and he came back momentarily, but his soul was ripped back to Malibolge in the Nine Hells uh, with one final taunt from uh, from Glossia, his, his patron. And uh, in the Nine Hells, uh, Caprice found himself up to his neck in, in molten lava eternally burning but cannot die, his flesh singeing and, 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 and healing and singeing again, surrounded by the screams of all of his family, and completely desperate, he called for the name he had heard. He called it three times, Pazuzu, Pazuzu, Pazuzu. In an instant, his soul was temporarily ripped to a strange realm of a barren wasteland of portals and ziggurats underneath an oppressive red sun. Pazuzu would free him of all of this, but he asked for assistance, for, for fealty to help bring about his great goal, a great eclipse in this realm, allegedly, and a massive war that dwarfed the battle that you had seen when you had faced the remnants of Miska the Wolf Spider. Before Caprice could answer, another voice possessed him, another entity possessed him, and... A, a being who had allegedly made a deal with Pazuzu to maintain something called the Blood War had accused him of treachery, and now his treachery had been fully revealed. Pazuzu in rage attempted to strike down Caprice's soul, but the soul was ripped back to the Lord of Lies, to, I think everyone knows at this point, Asmodeus. Or uh, Carl Satan. Or Carl Satan, the father <laughs> of Glazia. 
Best uh, friend in this knows. chamber, uh, Caprice made another deal. The the old contract was was turned to embers, and a new deal was to bring about the retribution to Pazuzu, for, to show him what what happens to those who break contracts with Asmodeus, the Lord of the Nine Hells, as well as bring about whatever aims he seeks beyond that. Caprice signed immediately returned to life with the power of Anubis, his soul released by Asmodeus. Asmodeus also took within great, uh, within his own concealing rubies, uh, Torvald and Persia to be returned, to be used collateral and returned healed when Asmodeus was confident of Caprice's loyalty. The party then left the, the chamber with only five of them. Uh, and a uh, defense mechanism after the death of Rajani had melted everything. Uh, so Felix had to see just the charred remains of all the great knowledge of ages. Woof. They then convinced Hazaki somehow that uh, that she had, that Rajani had been tricking him, that was true, but that she had, had cursed him in her dying breath. And so he took them back to Mogur Kai, they rested. He went off to the upper plains, perhaps never to be seen again. Uh, to at Doubtful. least decompress from what had happened and mend his broken heart. And they said farewell to Ravali, who had decided to stay and help these orcs of Mogur Kai and, and Gron more broadly figure out what it means to be free again after decades of subjugation to Golden Lotus. And it was then when they were deciding their next step that a raven with six eyes landed on a branch next to them and with the, ver the voice of Virgil Zern said that two more seals had been broken and that they needed to discuss their next plan. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> you all are standing in what had been the glade of the Eternal Blossom, still beautiful, undisturbed by the assault of the Horn Legion and Baphomet. You see the large raven with six ruby red eyes staring at you with the same lack of intelligence of you'd expect of any kind of normal bird, but speaking with the voice of the human high general of Korvakia as it had told you that you must return to Zentra and must discuss the next plans it, was, it looks blinking at you, awaiting a reply what do you all do? <clears throat> uh, I suppose I could take this one. Um, uh, what time is it? Shit. Afternoon? Uh, morning. yeah, afternoon. Uh, morning. <laughs> morning. Morning, morning, morning. Yeah, you had slept. Uh, you had slept. Uh, oh, uh, good, good morning, uh, uh, General Zern. Uh, this is, uh, Felix Ackerman, uh, here at, at your service. Um, yes, Felix, I know. I, I, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, listen, I, I know that you want us to return to, 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 to Zentra, but we... We have uh, very pressing matters uh, in Dusk Elf territory, and we were thinking about heading out immediately. Well, I'd, I suppose it is a, a bit of providence. Skethrenil is where I was going to send you next. Oh, uh, well, that w works out well for us. Uh, I I'm happy to, to, to continue this brief and, and discuss anything that we need to now, or you could probably reach us again yes. when we reach Skethrenil. Private Ackerman, full report. Full, full report. Right, what happened here? Oh, oh, it's been a while since I've done this. Um, well, and I, I just kind of like look around and and like I'm back, just tapping my group. foot. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> everything here is mostly in rubble. Uh, I mean, it was a pretty serious fight between <clears throat> what happened with Baphomet and 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 all of the the orcs and 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 of course for Johnny, the, 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 the Golden Lotus was really golden dragon and and I go into it and I give him more detail and then I explain <sighs> that, that she's you know what her goals were and that uh, you know uh, I don't talk about the stuff that happened with Caprice uh, I just basically give him a rundown of the lay of the land and, and where the orcs are and where see. You know, the dancing bleed clan is so the threat has been neutralized well for now I mean the leader has been slain Yes, yeah, yeah, but we're worried about the seals. The and a new government, more favorable perhaps, to Koravakia has been instated. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've got you know, Ravali's here. He's, he's going to look after things. Uh, you know, he's a trustworthy person. He's, he's got a 
a good moral compass. You if know. you stop taking their land, maybe they'd be more favorable to you. I am simply sending relief efforts. Do not worry. I'm not even sure that that's necessary. I mean, the, the, the orcs seem to have everything under control here. Yeah, these are these are strong people. I I, I think that they're going to come to a, 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 a unified and, and peaceful place all on their own, especially under the guiding hand uh, of uh, uh, Ra- Ra- Ravioli. Uh, Ra- 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 <laughs> I will send supplies, necessary goods, as a sign of good faith from Cordovacia. I think an olive branch is going to do a, a lot of good work, as, uh, given the state of things here. Uh, agreed, and, and please, I'm not speaking out of turn, but there's no need to send any military anything. Just send privates and people, and, and normal, just, just peaceful, don't make it look like a show of hostility, sir. Of course, sir. <sighs> I am pleased to inform you as well that the ink has dried on a treaty between Koravakia and Erios. I hope to do the same here in Ron. Oh, that's 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 great. Uh, that's good news. What what kind of treaty? That's An agreement. Good. Kind of, like, it's, it, what's kind of, kind of treaty? I mean, that's sort of like, that's kind of what I said. Right? I'm trying to help you. You mean, hey, it's no, me too. I'm kind of touching one another. Now, 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 hold on. Um, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I mean, they, <clears throat> a ceasefire. <laughs> uh, I, I understand the ink is dried, but if you could name the treaty, birds of a feather, that just. It is too late. The ink is already dry. <laughs> All right. A, well. a ceasefire. You see it? Yes. Peace at the borders, at least for now. That's a good thing. Right? I, I, yeah, I agree, absolutely. Trade. And perhaps in the future more. But there is far more pressing matter here. The seals will not hold. My ravens have found out that it was not just the Horn Legion that had been breaking the seals. What do you mean? It was the forces of Skethrenil. They have been working covertly, breaking the seals that, as our attention was turned towards Baphomet and his herd. So, I, I mean, I'm sure you're going to tell us why you needed to send us to Skethrenil anyway, but... but... Does that mean that any of the seals or the only seal that's in Skethrenil is already gone? I'm afraid that with the power of the Chain God, with so few seals remaining, it is only a matter of time whether they're broken by force or not. They will erode within a matter of weeks, perhaps months if we are lucky. Is it because so many have already been broken? Yes. Once the seventh seal is broken. There is no more that can be done. It is inevitable. So then what we do? The only thing we can do is strike the chain god down when he emerges from his prison. How do we do that? He's a god. Can we kill gods? You have the answer in your hands, and the bird looks towards Iris. Well, to be fair, these are more like paws. It was more of a metaphor. <laughs> hmm. I'm not sure that means what you think it means. Wait, uh, so, so this raven, is it like doing this as mm-hmm. it talks? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Straight out of Demon Slayer. <laughs> ah, head washed! Head washed! <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what, what do you mean... Uh, I look, I look in Iris's paws. What are you holding? That thing. The rod? Rod of law. The, so what did what did Asmodeus take? Do oh, we I have it in my notes? Asmodeus took heart cleaver. Okay. So he took heart cleaver, and the in the explosion, all of the glaive adornment got completely shattered. They were separated. And separated. Yeah, so, so the rod, rod of law remains. She's the pure rod of law. And when I picked it up, I heard new this. Where I like, Osiris. saw that. Felt yeah, Osiris. Osiris. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. Damn it, Derek. Get a hold of yourself. Oh, yeah. So we use 
This is how we do it? Well, it just blow them up? Sort of like how it blows everything else up? <laughs> when, you know, it just it kind of makes contact and just goes... <laughs> if it was powerful enough to strike down the prince, the original prince of demons, then if it is not powerful enough to defeat a weakened chain god, then we have no hope, truly. All right, so what are we going to Skethrinal for? What, what are our orders? Your orders, remember, you have your own free will. You are the wings of the raven. But I can simply make a request. Of course. And you hear a hesitation and a pause, as if he's taking time to do something in his personal chambers, looking around, perhaps. <laughs> He's actually talking to us from the shitter. I'm a very busy man. This was the only time that I could make. <laughs> Why do we have more than you anyway? <laughs> He only has one arm. He has to pull his pants all the way down in order to urinate. <laughs> He's just starting there, ass cheeks flapping in the breeze. Oh, God. Oh, Good times. No. Good times. I cannot trust anyone here in Zentra anymore. <laughs> in my great purge following Diamante's betrayal, I discovered that there were goings on that I was not aware of, and neither was Diamante. And the, the raven's head turns to you, Felix. The Horrific war crimes that you committed, Felix, along with the Talon Guard, and the abduction of children. I, I very visibly go pale. Are you okay, Felix? That was not for the cult of Moloch like I had suspected. I have discovered that the children have been shipped to Skethrenil. What? what? For what? years. What? 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 what, what what's happening to them? I do not know. <laughs> no, there's no word. There's no word about what's happening to them. The skies of Skethrenil are even more inhospitable to my ravens than Erios or Grond. Despite not being predators, the vultures and whatever dark magics are in those skies prevent me from seeing much. Are they still alive? Can, can we save them? Can we, we, we can go in and we can we can see. We're getting close to get. We can <laughs> save them. Even now, the storm clouds gather. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to change I pooped my, my pants. <laughs> We're all shitting. <laughs> Wait, but that, I mean that's a good thing. That means that. Milo maybe wasn't, like, sacrificed and burned in one of those big fantasies. Well, provided they're not, that Skatherinal's not sacrificing these poor kids. Well, we, that, that's we, fair. We, we can't wait. We have to go immediately. Do you know where they're being sent? I but guess he, not. He, he sent to Skatherinal. But, but where I is know that, but, uh, like, be more specific. I didn't think I needed to. Is it, like, a specific warehouse or, like, a... What's a warehouse? Like or, a, like, a kindergarten? Uh, or, or... What's a kindergarten? It's a garden where the kinders go. <coughs> What's a kinder? You know, the little ones. Oh. Yes, bird. Speak. <laughs> yes, bird. And you watch as, like, my 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 butt wiggling back and forth and like my eyes I are doing said. a twitchy tail thing. <laughs> can eat that bird. Despite how much I know and how much I deal in secrets, the king of Skethrenil is obsessed with secrets far more than I am. And he keeps his quite well hidden. I have gleaned some knowledge, but I have no idea what is happening to our children. Undoubted, though, with their dark magics and necromancy, it is not a good thing. All I have been able to discern is a potential ally within Skethrenil. A former count that they had appointed, one of the only two counts to ever rule. 
in Skethrenil. Both since count, both counts since have turned against the government, mm-hmm. but have been, been unable to be snuffed out. I have made loose contact with one. I can tell you how to find him. I can tell you where to go. He will. He is not very forthcoming with me. But I am a man with a reputation that precedes me, unfortunately. Perhaps you will do a better job in convincing him of joining our cause, destroying them from within. Toppling the Carrion King is of utmost importance. So there's some kind of infighting. These two counts don't like this king. Yes, but the there is no fighting, from what I understand. They have their domains, and all efforts to force them out have been unsuccessful, so the Carrion King goes on with his plans, lets them exist, does not bother with them, does not is not concerned with them, and that will be his downfall. What, what, what is the name of the Count that we're trying to find? His name is Count Kreskov. There's a castle in an extremely remote area that has been and proven difficult to assault. How he's defended himself this long, I have no idea, but he is far more powerful than I had previously thought. All right. I mean, this is good. <clears throat> this is this is a start. At the very least, this is Count Kreskov will be able to tell us what's happened to these kids. He, he has to know. And then we'll go from there. Yes. And he... And the raven kind of turns and is looking a little bit more dramatic despite it being a raven. <laughs> <laughs> this is being a bird. He... He turns and he... The, it looks back at you and says... Around the leg of this bird are two teleportation circle scrolls. One to Zentra, the other to Arsengard, our easternmost fortress. I strongly recommend you either bring the rod to Zentra for safekeeping, and if you resist and do not wish to, somewhere where you know it will be safe. You cannot let the Rod of Law fall into the hands of the Carrion King. Uh, uh, all right, sir. Uh, duly noted. And I'll just untie the... You the see that there's two scrolls. One is to to Zentra, the other is to Awesome Guard. And we'll use our best judgment and, you know, make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, sir. I've informed the general at Awesome Guard that you are Coming, you do not need an escort. Do not tell them where you are going besides beyond enemy lines. Like I said, I cannot trust anyone in Korovakia any longer. You being outsiders are the only ones I can trust, the wings of the raven. How do you spell Austin Guard? O S T E N G A R D. Austin Guard. G A? G-A-R-D. Guard, guard, G A R D, guard, and that's the easternmost. That's the easternmost like fortress. Are you sure it's not awesome guard? It is not. <laughs> it is not easternmost. Damn. Uh, you might want to double check your notes just to make sure. Uh, Roger that. I will. Oh, Thanks. it's awesome guard. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Now, turns uh, out. Uh, <laughs> turns out I was right. And, uh, is it the Carrion uh, King or the Carrion King? You know, it's it's uh, carry, on carry on my wayward king. <laughs> carry on what happened to a king. I was gonna make that joke. <laughs> Sucks to suck, Caprice. You can still use that as Caprice. <laughs> you dropped the ball, Derek. <laughs> um, that's good. Um, uh, all right. Uh, is there anything else? Yes. Are you okay? <laughs> yes. I love it. You must be careful. These are not orcs. These are not owl folk. <laughs> These Shadow Kai, these Dusk Elves, are far graver threat 
They used to serve the Raven Queen like we do in Koravakia, but they have turned away from her, abandoned her sanctum in the Shadowfell, seduced by the Carrion King, rallied around him to form an incredibly powerful kingdom that utilizes dark magic and in the past century they have been relying more heavily on necromantic magic. They do not use it on the front lines. I suspect because that if they saw the desecration of the bodies of the fallen of all of us that the three other nations would unite against them and crush them. But I suspect that it is far more sinister than even I know. Uh, understood. I know the dangers. I, I've been trying to prepare the rest of the group. I know that they haven't really seen anything like this before, at least here, but I trust everybody and we're all very capable, sir. I trust you will make the right decision. Yes, sir. Therefore, I will not demand that you return to Zentra, but I would prefer to have the rod under my safekeeping. I, I'm sure we'll be back at some point. It's just there's no time right now. We we need to we need to find out what's happening to these children. Yes. And do not forget, the children of Koravakia are an important resource. But the chain guard is what really matters. Right, and that's why we're going to hang on to the rod for now. It may come in use for us. We may be able to use it even before the chain god reveals himself. <clears throat> yes. There is the certainty that you will be venturing beyond this world. The chain god is held within the Shadowfell in one of the dark domains. Bound to that place in a tomb <clears throat> with the power of death itself the prime force of death. And it is Skethrenil that has the strongest connection to the Shadowfell in all of Striga. I raise my hand at the bird. Uh, Mr. Bird, sir, I mean, Zern, sir, um, what, what is a doctor domain? And what, the Shadowfell? Can you explain that? the land of death and shadow <coughs> it is a realm beyond ours with the dead much of the dead find themselves after life many dark domains ruled by dark lords have fiefdoms within the chain guard is in one of the most ancient and that is all I know as the grand master of the 13th order you don't know which dark domain that I unfortunately do not. All right, well. <clears throat> that we knowledge. Just ask someone when we get there. That knowledge was sacrificed by the suicide of the original Grand Master. It died with him. All of that knowledge and so much more. Now it's going to be my next question. What was going to be the next question? Well, I, I, he was chained once. I, I, I keep asking, can we find out how to chain him again or reseal the seals? But if the knowledge... Lost. All of my searchings of, of all of my ravens across the Vantress, there have found nothing. All right, well, <clears throat> we'll make sure that the rod stays safe and we'll... Um, keep you posted, I guess. Very well. Fly high, wings of the raven. Yeah, yes, keep sir. the rod safe. We will. And with that, the raven flaps its wings and... Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Derek. Once Flies the, off. Once the bird is gone, I let out a long, like, sigh of relief, as if I was holding my breath. <sighs> all right. That's, that wasn't so bad. I, I, I think... That we're all right, and we can head out middle, immediately, and we can find these kids. And, you know, 
I, I don't like what's going on with Zern, but I do think that he's trying to do good. And he trusts us. And he's giving us the option to do what we need to do to get this done. I just hope that we can help him too in the end. I agree. I, I, it, he seems a lot more trusting and, and, and uh, web, good intentioned than I was expecting. He even gave us these, <laughs> these nice scrolls for us to hang on to and uh, gave us the, the, the agency to choose whether or not we wanted to go back and trust him with the rod or, or, or not. I mean, uh, that seems like a very uh, cool thing for Zern to have done. Uh, if uh, he, you know, uh, isn't as le- you know, if, if now that he's gone and not listening to us in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> we should be going now, <laughs> Toa. Uh, y- y- uh, Are yes? you feeling sick, Felix? <laughs> a little. Do you need Do you need a potion? I've got a few. No, I, I'm not sure I can keep it down right now. Uh, we should head out, right? Right now. We, we have to go find what's happening to those kids. It's the least that I can do. I agree, and uh, I, I, I'm sure you're not, it's, I'm not the only one who's uh, wondering if maybe your your brother is involved in... I certainly hope so. Well, let's fucking go! It's been a very long time, though, and if they're doing anything horrible to those kids, there's a chance that we're not going to be able to save them all. But we need to at very least find out what's happening now, and maybe we can reverse it, or, or maybe we can stop it, or maybe we can recover them, or find out what's happened to them, and we'll make a decision from there. Well, I think we need to figure out. I'm inclined to agree with Zern that probably taking the rod just on our persons into Skitrin is not a great idea. I wasn't lying when I said that it could come up in handy for us. If... Yeah, and what are we supposed to do with it otherwise? Could we take it back to Arca? And give it to the Windukes and have them look after it. Well, we could, but we also know that there was some kind of taint to Noko. Do we trust it? Well, I think that was partially because we took that weird corrupted gem that was in my pack and we brought it to them. And... Yes, that's true. That was kind of a us oopsie, not a them. Sort of like an yes, our bad kind of thing, not really our, a their bad. Uh, our oopsie, yeah. It's still present there. More than That's true. We just know that we need the rod for when the chain guard erupts from his chains. And I just feel like, you know, if it's an Aka, we won't be able to retrieve it quickly. That's and if we're heading true. into the heart of Skethernal, where, you know, this is the most connected place to where the chain god currently rests, I personally would feel better if we had it on our person, but I am open to suggestion. Can we, like, hide it somehow? I could carry it. That's not very hidden. I have the bag of holding, but if they get the bag of holding from us, then they I just open it. The would they know that it's in there? I don't see why they would. Could we disguise it? Like it's just a staff, of course. Why would any of them know it was the wrong of love? I don't know, but it's pretty magic. Yeah, they probably want it, like a lot. But they would have to hold it. I'm not going to let anyone hold it. Do we know if it goes in them? Bag of holding? Is I'm it gonna sure. like law rod the bag and <laughs> I mean anything's possible. Should we try? No. I think we should just okay. carry it. I'm with you. If you think that's a good idea, Iris, I agree. I, I think it could come in handy. I'm a bit nervous I about heard carrying the voice it. Cyrus. Hold it. Well, maybe we could like, you know, put some of your jewelry <clears throat> on it so it looks a little like Make a religion oh, check of advantage, Iris. And while she's doing that, is it big enough to fit inside what? of my viol yeah. case, or is it? No, it's like a, it's like a yeah, big it's ass like a quarter staff <laughs> size. Basically. Oh, oh, oh. Like a, I know nothing. What is it? Oh, it's a three and a five naturally. Well, what's your bonus? Uh, six. <laughs> so an eleven. An eleven. Um, I would say That's higher than a ten. that'll net us more than it's a rod. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say that with you recall that the energy, this is what you know, the energy that you had felt in the rod reminded you of uh, the energy that was um, radiating from the uh, angel, the wind to go beat up. Yeah, because that was the one that was, that was the, 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 yeah, or the, the uh, seriously one. Yes, yes. And so that was the uh, Osiris one, and you feel that same energy. 
Who's Osiris? Is he like a god too? Is he? We've had we had this conversation recently. But he's like he's like a good mate of Anubis, right? Yes. They're kind of like bros. Sure. They're sort of like friends, you know, kind yes. of like they're like tight. Osiris is, is like a good guy. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, I imagine as good as any god can be. Neutral, more or less. Tawa, I think like aside from you, everybody has a little bit of good and a little bit of bad and it's like a mesh. Oh, I mean, the bed's kind of like bad, right? You don't want to be bad. You will never fully be able to understand the will of the gods. They don't have emotions the way that we do. What is for the greater good for them, and not to use the same term as golden lotus, but they see far more than we do. It is up to us to decide whether we choose to follow in your path. And I do. I mean, I, I agree, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that uh, I, I would feel very nervous if we just are caring and are not doing I do person. believe that the Windu, who we have associated with Osiris, that was one of the powerful creatures that entombed the chain god to begin with. And if the word of law vibrates with his energy, then to me it is good. And I will guard it with my life. Yeah, we'll protect Iris, you will, and we'll make sure that nothing happens to her or the rot. Maybe we just give it to that guy that you just mentioned. Maybe like you just hold on to it. You know what I mean? Just like so we're not You know, so we're not like, oh, we get captured and we go get thrown in prison. We've been in prison at least like five or six times since we started all of this. And every time we have taken our eyes off of something valuable and important and powerful, it has fallen into the hands of someone who should not have it. Don't you agree? I, I, I mean... I don't what know. happened when we gave it to Golden Lotus? Well, Golden Lotus wasn't really a good god, but I feel like the, those, the seven angels, those, those Windu guys, they're pretty cool. That we know. The wind spirits are kind of hanging out with them. They're sort of like chill. And we don't have eyes on them, so should that dark energy that we allowed entrance into their homeland, should that corrupt them, then all of a sudden it has control over the world of war. And we do not have eyes on it. And for what it's worth, when we go into Skethrano, there's not going to be any going to prison, okay? If, if that even looks like it's going to happen, I'm going to burn everything to the ground. They, they, they can't restrain us. They won't let us live. He'll put the nil in Skethrenil. And just because, just so I'm sure that everyone has the full context of what in this conversation, is that with the corruption that they had said, that like the one thing that could just stamp it out easily is the rod of law. So they're, uh, they're, so I want to make sure that everyone is clear that that was... Because they were asking for it, right? Yes, they were asking for it to cleanse uh, Akula from the corruption. Can we at least try it in the bag of holding? Just so we know if we need to, it'll go in there. I want to also see if it just, like, tucks everything away in the neat little trannies. <laughs> Into what? <laughs> well, like, all, we've already got a bunch of shit in the in the bag. I want to see if it, he like... wants to know if it will organize the bag of holding to make things more easy to find. Yeah, all the coins go into a little corner. I, but is it it that it Every works. time we ask you for a water scheme, you take 15 minutes hunting through everything in there, all the trinkets you've picked up. Look at it, it's a terrible mess. There's lots of stuff in there. You refuse to clean it up. Well, uh, That's why I don't take things with me. Do you really need all that stuff? Does it bring you joy? You never know when you're going to need all this stuff. Do Just you... take it and stir it around. You know, is it pronounced skin or skin? I'm not sure. I to be like fair, it. Noah's disorganization like kind of goes skin. really hand in hand with his, uh, you know, carefree okay. nature. It's part of what makes him charming. What? I was not listening Oh, I was saying that his, his disorganization is part of his carefree nature and what makes him charming. Yes, that's why none of us have taken his bag of holding and forced it into organization. Yeah, I also just don't care. It is bad, though. Yes, it is. But Caprice clearly cares. I just want to see what happens and make sure that it doesn't destroy it if we have to suddenly find ourselves in a situation where we need to hide a quarterstaff rod. Where else are we going to put it? I can think of a few places, Caprice. Well, that... I don't have that option, so just... Just put it in the bag. <laughs> Should I try to put it in the bag? Caprice <laughs> flushes much redder than he normally is. That's hard, but it, it's possible. 
You can take it right out. Hey, no, no, just, just, just the tip. tip. <laughs> just, just the tip. And we can try it. See what happens. What happens if it causes some extra dimensional explosion? You're critically wounded, and we're trying to march into Scathrinil, and I have to use all of my energy to heal you. That's actually a good point. That can happen with a bag of holding. I've seen it, and it is ugly. Oh, I don't know how it works. Well, put the bag. If I tried to put my bag of holding in your bag of holding, gone. It would Everything. be half a Korovakia gone. Horrible. Does this sound like entirely different yep. situations? Yes. Big oh. old dent right in Striga. It would be wild. We'd all be instantly atomized. Well, oh. use Mage Hand. We'll stand back like ten feet. We'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> On second thought, let's not put the rod anywhere near the bag. <laughs> Can we get going? Yes. Yeah. I, 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 I'm just <laughs> saying that I think that at the very least, maybe what we do is we at least go to Arca and we bring it back with us. Because if we don't take it back, then Akula is going to just probably get horribly corrupted. We know that they wanted Speaking of a cooler, I am thirsty. Does anyone have water? Ha! <laughs> uh, I can give you this water scheme. Your please. skin. <laughs> I mean, it's been like 10 minutes. 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, while uh, Toa rummages around. <laughs> if we were in combat, it would be feel, one action, but. You <laughs> feel a, a surge. All of you kind of feel like this dark warmth through your body. And you just Ooh. remember the the deal that Caprice had all made for you. As you feel that that dark power, everyone except Iris, uh, as you feel and you're reminded of that, this is a good opportunity to pass these out. <laughs> dark power, dark this to, uh, power. Let's see. Pass this to Rich. Let's go to Toa. Oh, oh hold on, you. I'm read it until it's time to read it. Oh, can I read it? I put my fist down. You can go, you can go first. is gonna start. So hold on, so for our viewers, what, Do what, we have to this? read it? What are the dark powers? You, can, you don't have to if you don't want to. What are the dark powers? Um, so if you've watched uh, Prime, uh, whenever Carl Satan comes up, generally there is uh, the bestowment of, of dark powers that um, are granted to the party, and they're not quite spells, they're just more kind of like abilities they can use. Uh, usually that's my way of incorporating fun stuff from 4th edition into, say, yeah, from 4th edition into the game, uh, and just like fun little additional things that isn't like within the confines of like the magic item achievement slot. Slots and like the spell slots. So, for example, the ones in Prime, at least I know Vandress's is once weekly. Yes, so those right, are the so super ones weekly. that you guys got uh, okay. after the Alphonse Manor. Um, but yeah, this is one in this campaign. So, so why don't we go around the horn and read our dark powers? Kels, why don't you start? Oh, and and you didn't receive to. them because you didn't. I, you didn't accept. Them. Iris didn't accept it because of Anubis. Right. And you it, would be, it that, would be blasphemous. Yeah. For her oh, to take fuck yeah. And probably you give me a sense that it was really only the power of Anubis that allowed you to not take it. Right? Like, you know, had like Toa been like, nah, no thanks. Like, it would not, probably would not have done it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would have okay. gotten okay. slow. I, I can't just use politeness to say no. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> no, I'm good, man. I, I got this. the carnival bounce of Maladomini. Yep. Is that how I say that? Yep. Maladomini. 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 You call upon the grotesque, grotesque clown antics of the jester-like devils that perform in the Carnival Eternal uh, in Maladomini. Maladomini. I can't say it. You make an exaggerated pratfall that smacks your enemies into each other. I like that. So, <laughs> as an action, you may double your walking speed for the round, and when you end your movement, you may choose one creature within five feet of you to make a dex saving throw. If it fails, they take 3d10 plus dex mod thunder damage, and are pushed 20 feet in the direction of your choice. Damn. Each enemy creature it strikes in this line takes 2d10 plus dex modifier Jesus. thunder damage and is knocked prone. <laughs> the target is also knocked prone at the end of its turn. I love that. I know. <clears throat> Capriccio. I'm going Bounce. last, but these are my powers. Oh, that's right. I'll go next. Next. I have the Blood Frenzy of Stygia. Or Stygia. Uh, I channel the frenzies of the sharks in Sekala's realm, deep within the yeah. seas of Stygia, yeah. to cause razor-sharp winds, water, and teeth around me. <gasps> teeth! 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 To blind and rake my foes. When I rage, I may channel the blood frenzy of Stygia. Until the rage ends, you may use a bonus action to deal 5 plus strength modifier cold damage to each enemy uh, within 25 feet of me. 
Additionally, the targets must succeed a con saving throw or be blinded by the teeth until the end. That doesn't say that. Uh, <laughs> to be blinded until the end of my next that. turn. I made that up. Very cool. Gotta give it up. Gotta, 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 gotta give it up. up. I don't know how often can use this. Oh, what's today? Once it's, it's a, a daily. Day. Oh, I was Jeez. gonna ask that. Oh. Fuck you, fish. Damn. Oh, this is. <laughs> Nikki's this is, really upset. This is <laughs> fucked Iris up. Iris is devoted. So this it's is fine. Fucked up. By the way, the Iron Oppression of Dis. This is my second Dis one, by the way, yep. as well. Yep. Very well. Uh, you call forth the relentless oppression and subjugation of the Iron Fortress of Dis to force your enemies to submit and crush them into the earth. Damn. You may target an enemy within 60 feet of you and make a ranged spell attack on it. If the attack hits you deal 3d10 plus intelligence force damage and the target is knocked prone and affected by the oppressive force for one minute the target takes 10 force damage at the start of each of your turns and cannot stand up from prone the creature may make an intelligence saving throw at the end of each of its turn to end the effect holy shit just basically pin someone to the ground for a minute and just deal damage constantly. Them. And they can't stand up. And then they're prone, so totally. Yes, yeah, so prone. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for us to all just use this on one commoner. I enjoy the Hell Wasp, Hell Wasp Sting of Malibulge. Oh, cool. Your mocking words pack the sting of the Hell Wasps of the Gardens of Delight within, within Malibulge. What does Spooky Day be playing to Infuriating your enemy to a confused rage. You oh. may attack an enemy within 60 feet of you and make a ranged spell attack on it. If the attack hits, it deals 3d8 plus your charisma modifier of psychic damage, and for one minute, the creature's damage rolls are halved. Additionally, if the creature hits a friendly target with an attack, the attack must strike one enemy of your choice within range of the attack, including the target in itself. The target may perform a charisma saving throw at the end of each of its turns to end this effect. Brilliant. Oh, wow, charisma. Oh, very, very cool. Oh, Gotta give it up. Go, gotta go. gotta oh. give it up. Great job. I love this. Thank you. I love this. So I'm just so as an happy. added aside from meta point of view, uh, when we were using our powers in Prime, mm -hmm. Every time we used them, there was a little bit of something going on in the background. Do you want to know what yours would have been? Felix yeah, oh, yeah. Felix Someone, is someone in chat asked. Um, so I can feel even worse about so, my uh, uh, decisions. It wasn't 100% fleshed out because you obviously uh, rejected it beforehand, but it's been, it was like some sort of like... Uh, uh, leech type ability or oh. deal damage and then basically take health and then funnel health to everyone around you. Uh, it's kind of like a vampiric situation. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping it was just that golden lotus from the mummy that goes under the skin. Oh, the scarab. 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 Yeah, the scarab. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Um, are, is Stygia, these are all layers of hell. These yes. Layers of yep. hell, right? Yep. So yep. Dis, Stygia was yours? Mine's Malibu. Malibu. Yours is Maladomini. 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 Oh, I swear to God, I'm about the exploited loophole of Dis. I haven't used that in Prime in 20, 10, 10 million years. Yeah, yet. I mean, you have a, a lucky die, so like that was before you had lucky, so. I, I, fuck, I'm gonna still cash in on that. Yeah, yeah, well. cash in. I gotta remember. Maladominate. Um, I am gonna, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna be full devil by the end of this campaign. <laughs> I'm just gonna have horns. We're gonna look the same. I'm gonna turn into a tiefling. Uh, everything for me always ends up in the Nine Hells. One of my favorite You Will Be Witnesses was when we... What is this feeling? <laughs> um, oh, I so finally found that. it! Here it is! And I pull out the water skin. Skin. Easy water skin, skin, skin. Thank oh. you, John. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is... Wait, was there something else that we were trying to do? Just to turn... No, you were still talking. The rod. What I'm trying to say is that... We know that Akula is horribly corrupted, and it's kind oh, of our fault. Thirsty again. And and if we don't bring the rod back to at least help her and help them, I'll feel really terrible. Because it was the th we, we did that to her. Well, we didn't. I mean, we kind of brought the gem you in. It's like didn't. a murky area, if you ask me. No, it's very cut and dry. Toa definitely brought it in. We collectively did not. Oh, that's true. Well, I was carrying it, but it was uh, sort of the will of the group, you know what I mean? I'll take the blame for it. The point is, Toa has convinced me. I don't I, I don't dislike the idea of and giving them the rod. And how do you plan on getting it back there and then getting back here? We're going to use, we have one feather left. We take it there. We take it there. And we get back how? We use the teleportation to Austin God, and we... Then... And where's Austin God? 
I don't know, uh, but does it matter? Austin got Felix? I would know. You would know. It is the easternmost fortress. It is the closest uh, a stronghold to the eastern front of Scathamill. Where Scathamil. we need to go. Yes. Yeah. Was it near the place that, that Felix had the vision in the dream prison? Exactly right. You would know that, that you were uh, outside of That's Austin right. Guard. Yeah. That's right. Well, you were probably miles away from that, but right. Austin Guard would have been the closest where most of those troops were stationed. Yep. Felix, you know all about magic stuffs and and and, and those scrolls, right? Sure. Can, can can we just like scratch out a name and then like put in some other name and uh, and then that's where we get teleported? No. Uh, unfortunately, no. That's not how that works. Okay. So uh, uh, I'd like to hold on to the to the Zern one no. or the Zentra one. No. I'd like to hold up. No. Wait, what? As an escape. No. Uh, well, how does it work? Do we have to hold hands? Is it... It works that Felix will hold on to them. I'm not, I don't want them. Felix. I don't want them. I'm, I'm just saying that it's a good escape. Uh, if we are suddenly find ourselves in trouble, we could all uh, gather around the scroll, and then we're in Zentra, and now we're out of danger. Like, that's a good reason not to go to Zentra right now. It takes we, we, some time to cast, but yeah, I, sure, we could use it as an escape route at some point. I didn't know you that. Are the only My one darling. who can cast it? No, anybody can use it. So that's the beauty of a scroll. I just know how they work by looking at it and reading it, but anybody could use it. That's not true, right? Correct. Only if it's really? on your spell yeah, list. It's got to be on your spell list to so be able I don't to use think... it. I thought scrolls let you... If you don't have no, no, known or prepared, you can like roll to use but it. But you have to be able it to It has to be on your wall. spell list for you to be even understand I take that back. Yeah. I could, I yeah. could technically use it because teleport is, a, bard, is yeah. a bard spell. I couldn't. You could so teleportation not. circle is a bard spell? Teleport. T- teleportation circle. Oh, then I do not... Just kidding. Uh, then I have to cast it. Let, let me check. Yes. Interesting. So it's one well, minute versus uh, an action. I don't know yeah, why those scrolls let people who can't cast magic cast magic. I thought it was like Correct. a very nifty way for somebody who, like, for Toa to be like, I can use this once and... Boom, so it was like how, up. like, in... Uh, I had all the cleric spell, spell scrolls from Stradania. Because you were the only one who could use it. I was the only one who could use it, and it, would just, it helped my spells. Like, I could basically use things without using a spell slot. I learned something. If I didn't have prepared that day, mm-hmm. that could be something, like, that's a, a good thing. It's really, really yeah. handy. That, it's, yeah. it's important I think because way more powerful Homeless Bob and can't grab a power word kill and be like, use it. I know, I literally thought that that's how that works. And that's why they're, like, so rare and, like, dangerous. On top of it, because you're you, and you now have it, you can transcribe it into your book and you yeah. always have it prepared. Yeah, the problem oh. with that is that Shit. circle's no <laughs> good that. because <laughs> I do have to basically cast circle. it in the same place every day for a year for it to become like a permanent teleportation No, circle. there already is one. So once they're there, you know where they are. And so the, the point is, mm. if you put it into, if you put it into your book, if you take mm. the time to put it into your book, we can go back to those two places Anytime. Yeah, anytime. Anytime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's to create a so new teleportation of... circle. Yes. Yes. I'm going to read it. But I sure. hear what you're saying. Um, it is on the Bard's Bell list. Okay. So okay. If, I wanted, if I wanted... Yes. Yeah. There you go. What were you saying? We're not going back to Zentra. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, I feel like we should move because the storms are coming in. <laughs> are you afraid of getting wet? Mm-hmm. No, you're not. I've heard you in a tavern. And so, given the location of this Austin God place, I think we'll probably save a lot of time by going to to Arca. We deal with all of that, and then we teleport to Austin God, and we'll be right at the border, and we can just walk right in instead of having to walk through all the rest of Grand. And then, presumably, my rough understanding of how the locations work, right? There's still lots of Grand for us to get through. We would save, I think, a lot of time. And before the bird left, he also gave you the general location to this castle that uh, yeah, I'm sure the Count Kreskov did. Uh, uh, yeah, so Count once, Kreskov. Kreskov. So once we yeah, learn Kreskov. the teleportation circles sigils, then we can go. I just have to know the sigils. And I will say that basically, so we wouldn't know the we wouldn't know the Zer, the central ones until we go there. But if we go to Austin Guard, we, once you like, use it, it, you'll learn. Basically, so right. basically, you can do oh, it. They'd be able to yeah, just like you, I would memorize yep, them. Exactly, I'm, right. I'm a super genius. Yep, <laughs> Roger that. I'm Didn't not suggesting that, we go. That's great. Yeah. Hey. It's gonna take some time to learn them. Fast travel. <laughs> I feel it, Felix. It's Game of Thrones up in this it's bitch. It's worth it for you to take the time to transcribe them into your book. Oh, absolutely, I agree. Uh, it's a fantastic suggestion. This is gonna take me a while. Uh, many rests. Uh, well, we'll figure it out. 
The point is, we don't need to use it right this second. No. Not right now. We need to use the feather first, and then we'll need to yes. use the oxygen guard one. We could take the time. And I'll there. just keep this. I'll just keep the central one, and then learn from it. All right. Bingo, okay. bingo. We got a plan out. Well, I guess. Yeah, it takes me one minute to commit a sigil, sigil sequence to memory. Five seconds for Felix. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Well, then we should go right away. Who has the feather? Not sure. I think maybe Lufty does, because that's sort of... It's in the holding bag. Oh, it's in the holding bag. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, I probably saw it while I was just looking. Oh, no. Well, you're in there. Get me another water soon. <laughs> oh, all right. It's only the next 15 minutes. <laughs> it is the last thing. You, you overturn the last item, and there's this, this always the beautiful last glowing blue feather. <laughs> oh, my blistex. <laughs> Uh, I pull out uh, a water skin for. <laughs> we had some flickering. Uh, uh, like, we're, we're, still we're, we're still alive. We're still alive. It's green. Okay, no drop frame so far. Ooh. It's green. Okay. Uh, I'll give another water skin to uh, Iris and I'll pull out the blue feather. Um, Alright, are we ready? Sure. If we must. Yeah, we're ready. Okay, let's go! And I like throw the feather. You throw the feather. <laughs> what? Falls oh. down to the ground. Do you remember how to use this? Uh, uh, no. just, just give it to me. <laughs> Isn't there just like there's no word, right? What is wrong with you? The I idea was that? that you would think of um, Alkira, the Thunder Fury, and then and then really I hand it to I hand it to Lofty. I, I, I go here, just give it to Lofty, and I hand it to, to you. What do you want me to do? No, you this? remember how to use it. You just said. You think about your mother, and it's from her wing, and then you channel it, and then whoever your your friendly targets you want to bring, you can bring. <laughs> and I'll, I'll think really hard, and uh, we all swoop. As you think really hard, and you finally feel that sense of of love, as complicated as love. it is, as suddenly the a feather, a, a wind whips up, and then the feather starts to glow this bright light that blue, and swirl around all of you and whip around, and, and you actually see as some of those golden <laughs> petals from uh, the, the beautiful trees in this glade. You're not sure if you'll ever be back here, but you see it and it whips around with you, and in a flash of blue, your your, your your feet leave the ground in a wisp of wind and you feel like you're riding on a, on a soft cloud for just a moment and suddenly your consciousness flickers back and while you were in a pristine setting before, it still does not compare to the otherworldly beauty of where you find yourself now. You look around and Aka, the eternal veil, is exactly where you left it. That perfect temperature, the sun in the exact same spot at all times. A beautiful early summer day as you see the brilliant spiraling spires shining with silver. The great lakes with multicolored fish leaping about beautiful birds of, of paradise flying around the, the lush uh, jungles around this city. Waterfalls pouring in, and you know that the lake goes on a waterfall and it falls off into the mist that oh, protects this go? place. Never know. Just the further down. And you realize <laughs> where you are is that camp <sighs> waterfall. where Alkira had made and stayed there for who knows how long. You see that there's a number of empty wine skins and a number of barrels and uh, a, a fire that's still uh, that's still flickering. And on a, a, a an elongated uh, stick, there is uh, some roasting fish, and it smells beautiful. And this and, you, and, and the, the fragrance of this area is absolutely incredible. <sighs> And as you get there, you look around and you see this camp, and you see crumpled on the ground, blue wings falling over on her side. You see Alkira, her uh, her large uh, 
her large form, now the combination really between an angel and a djinn. She's on her side, facing away from you. Her black hair is all a mess. What is this? I'll rush over and, and roll her over. Um, as you roll her over, uh, her eyes are closed and she looks up at you and breathes and the stench of alcohol is just blast oh. you. And uh, she, <sighs> thank God, she's drunk. Her, eye, her eyes open and she blinks a little bit and uh, she says, is, is that my daughter? Oh, come here, look there, I miss you so much. And she pulls you into- You scared a, me! A massive hug, the size difference between you is insane. And she just is crushing you in her hug and she leans up uh, uh, her muscular body uh, almost like engulfing you in, in her hug as she uh, kind of snuggles into you, her wings wrap around. Uh, as her hair is still disheveled, and you see now the uh, ever refilling uh, wine skin on the side uh, scheme. This is going to be the theme. The <laughs> theme, theme of the scheme. Yeah, the, scheme, scheme. Uh, the scheme theme. Scheme theme. Uh, as uh, she takes Four another schemes. swig of wine, um, and she places it down and says, "You know, Ma. Just because it always refills doesn't mean you always have to empty it." Then what is the point of it? Hey, here, have some. Hey, friends of Lodi, of it's good I'll to see a, you. Take a good solid. I'm, I'm good for it. now, thank you. <laughs> I'm good as well. Is everything okay? Is there any horrible corruption or any evil birds of paradise with six eyes saying horrible things? Yeah, we came back to help. And your fish is burning. And she uh, kind of leaps forward, she kind of throws you to the side, and she just glides over very gracefully, shocking for how inebriated she is, and she pulls off uh, the fish, and she takes a massive bite out of it, and half of it's gone, as she chews it and swallows it, and she says, oh, do you want to show? I'll take some of the wine. Uh, oh, um, yes, my, uh, 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 Everything is fine. The uh, the the window six of the, of the windows are are preparing for a terrible battle. And she points over, and you can see all of the Vati, uh, hundreds of them, are going about the city. Um, you remember those statuesque uh, obsidian androgynous um, uh, beings that were imbued with the power of air, uh, going about making preparations. And uh, she she looks back at you and says, uh, uh, "Oh, but the Akula is not looking good." Oh no! I but feel she's so responsible. I'm so. We're it's, here. We're here to help. It is grim, but I am supposed to replace her if we have to make the final decision. No, no, well, we don't have to. We need to speak to the Windus. You see, we've brought the Lord of Law. That's, that's the thing that will save her, right? Yes. That is it. So, if we could gain audience with them, I believe time is of the essence. So we could put down the wine and the fish. We could maybe save the blood. We can walk on wine. Let's go. Can I walk in fish? Oh. I don't I have extra, I have extra. And she she uh, beats her wings very gently, and she just kind of glides an inch from the ground. Similar Do you have to- more feathers that we could take, by chance? Just one. We used the last one to get here, and should we need you? Leave your daughter. Make a persuasion check advantage. <laughs> Ooh, Oh, this is some good one. This is yep. Oh, okay. Um, 25. 25? Yeah. Uh, she reaches back and, you see, and she kind of looks at you a little bit drunk. And you can tell that she's sobering up quickly. She is a massive divine being of genie and, and <laughs> an angel. And uh, you get the sense that it probably takes a lot to get her to the state. And so she's sobering up relatively quickly. Uh, and she says, oh, it will t- take me a, a li- all of my power for today, but I'm, yeah, sure, of course. I don't want you to be off in the in the bad world with all of the terrible uh, burning. Oh, stop you. And, and not be able to come back don't, to don't mother. Don't fret over and me. Come back to mother. And she reaches back. And <laughs> Wait, she, don't stop. 
She <laughs> focuses her energy for a second and she spreads her wings and they blast with this radiating blue light. And uh, the wind whips around and you see as the, the, the wind whips through the wings, these brilliant light blue feathers uh, swirling around. One flies out and whips around and then lands in front of you, Lefty. This is perfect. And I'm not giving it to you this time. You left it in the bottom of the bag and it was all crumpled. Oh, well, yeah, just, but yeah, I, I don't want to be responsible anymore. The valuable thing about Cho's bag is that it takes him 15 minutes to find anything. A stranger, it would take hours. Yeah, no reason to put the rod in. That's true. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to hang on to it. I'm going to take the feather and kind of like tie it into a piece of my hair. Oh, just oh that's like nice. <laughs> you do that. Oh, that's Everybody nice. likes that. I this. rip all her <laughs> hair off. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> likes that. I do like she that. She leads you. It looks very nice. With my through the city. And, and it's, it's, even though you've seen it uh, come alive beforehand, um, you... It still is a bit of a shock to just see the, the the life that has returned from the first time that you had seen this place. Uh, as all of the Vati go about their business, the preparations, uh, the crafting, and everything is perfectly pristine. There's a precision to their movement that is otherworldly. And you make your way up the uh, spiraling silver towers, up uh, a grand staircase, and you hear once again, as the wind lips through just ever so slightly, the perfect temperature. You hear those beautiful wind chimes filling this entire space. As you make your way to the sanctuary where you recall the wind spirits had been cleansed and Toa's tattoos had begun to glow. The door is closed, and you see that there's that same glowing, or that same panel on the side, and and Alkira looks at you and says, I will talk to uh, Araza and see how she's doing, but she she will be overjoyed to find that that you have the thing that that will cleanse Akula. And uh, she she uh, hovers her hand and says, Actually, I will let you deliver it. I will gather the rest. And she okay. places her hand over the panel and it glows of a bright blue and it flashes. And you see the, the beautifully uh, crafted doors open and the brilliant multicolored light shimmers through with those those hanging wind chimes and all sorts of pieces of vibrant glass as you as the door opens and and uh, Alkira looks at you and gives you a big hug and says, I'll be right back. Okay. And she with a, a beat of her wing, she flies off. You see in this chamber uh, a number of, of, of stations of, of of, of where where uh, all four of your wind spirits had had been cleansed, as well as uh, Tamaka, the great wind rock, um, all empty. All that's left on the far side is the shimmering dome of of this brilliant blue light, and you see within a humanoid figure, feminine and curvy wings folded over and hair hanging down, eyes closed, and you see from this vantage point the wings look black. Standing at the side, uh, waving arms, a kind of flash of of the glow of of strange platinum light that whips back and forth and eventually snakes into this chamber and causes the wings to glow, and you see that Al- Al-Raza, the angel of Bahamut, is very concerned, grim, dire, as she looks up at the almost nearly fully corrupted angel. Looks like we got here right in time. Uh, Al-Raza, 
<laughs> as soon as you say that, she turns and her eyes, uh, despite being this otherworldly being, there's a weariness to them. Uh, you know that, I guess, supposedly even uh, angels can can tire. And you see now that there's there's her face seems sunken as if she hasn't slept in a very long time. And as you approach, you now see these snaking bits of dark corruption up and down the face of Akula as she, with her uh, brilliantly colored hair, uh, uh, conceals most of it. But it's very clear that the corruption of Pazuzu is making its way into her entire being. And she turns to you and says, Did you get it? Yeah, we have it. We've brought it here. It looks like just in time, huh? Yes, I don't know how much longer she would have had. Thank you. Thank you. Is, is Alkira getting the others? Yeah, she's out getting everybody and just tell us what to do. How do we help? You, you have done enough. Thank you. You, we will be whole again. And she approaches and flies over and she, are you holding the, who is the rod? Are you have the rod? And she, hand, right? yeah. she flies yeah. over yeah. very gently <laughs> to you. And she says, how difficult was this to get? It wasn't easy. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's an understatement. It was uh, quite a trial. And most of all, the work was done for us. And you sacrificed much to get this. And she looks around and says, were there not six of you when you left? Yeah, there were. Yeah. But she's not dead. She's fine. She'll be fine. She's just um, being used as collateral for a horrible... Um, oh, I mean, just she's fine. <laughs> we'll get her back. Don't 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 worry about her. She she she'll be back next time we see y'all. I promise. She's not dead. She, she's being used as collateral. She We're horrible. <laughs> she looks at you and then nods. Well, I'm glad she is not dead and will be returning. This I have not held this in so long. And she floats over and says to you, you wielded quite comfortably. That's impressive for a mortal. Well, thank you. It's only weighs maybe ten pounds. I mean not your strength of arm, your strength of spirit. You must be a being of good and law. Yes, she is, and she's my best friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she fought the law, and the law uh, lost. <laughs> Would you like to take this? <laughs> yes. And I'll hold it out to her. And she grabs it very gently and it glows and flashes. And Ooh. as it flashes, you see as a as a as a, a, a bit of energy washes over her. And over you hear very faintly what sounds like a distant roar of of, of a dragon. After after fighting one so viciously just the day before, you know very well what that sounds like. As calms down and she holds this and she looks and says, I cannot believe it. It was even reforged without us. Did not even Moduna need to forge this, but this was reassembled with the power of Moradin. Yes, a very powerful cleric of Moradin. He, he, he had the ability to not. But he was still capable, very capable. Yes, I'm, I'm saying that. Is he was very powerful and also a drunkard. He wasn't drunk at the time. That you know. <laughs> that yeah. I know. I'm with Iris on this He's one. Very we can't really drunk. confirm that. Yeah. <laughs> How would he have had the time? They usually find the time. The morning, <laughs> the later morning, <laughs> in between hammer strikes, 
That's, You'd be that's surprised. That reminds me, and I'll take my skin out. And try. Maybe his hammer <laughs> was a also a flag. So you just be like, ting, <laughs> ting. <laughs> now that is an idea. Right? I, you know, you can market something like that. With that. He was saying. Oh, oh no, just, it was... Yes, yes, the, the power of more and hopefully it's it's as powerful as it ever was. We really need it to be. She holds it and holds it up and she holds it with a, with a sense of reverence and nods and says, yes, it still is. It hasn't lost any of its power and this corruption won't stand a chance. So what do you do with it? How long does it take? Can we watch? Can I help? When Moduna gets here, we will use it. And as if on cue, the door that was opened darkens, and you see six figures glide in. These large angels, halfway between an angel and a Vati, each different and, and very clearly representing the god that the angel served before their transformation and ascension to Wind Duke status. And Alkira, Lufti's mother. They glide in and all of them except for the male angel with the largest beard among them. Braided hair. You know as Moduna, the, the Winduke and the angel of Moradin. He glides forward and immediately looks around and a smile comes to his face. Hey, that's good craftsmanship. He uh, flies over and he grabs it and surges and you hear the clanging of a hammer on an anvil. As... As... It is new. Well done, mortals. I, we will strike down Thara's Dune when the time is right. I thank you for doing our duty for us. And you will be rewarded. We will avert calamity and entropy. Well, that's all we want to do. We just want to... We just want to help. Hey. Now... We are going to save our own... from that... bastard. Don't worry. We have this. But please, you might want to step back a little. Noted. I'll very quickly step way back. So I don't have to. You do that, and you all watch as the other Windukes look at you and nod, and without a word, they reach out and pass around the Rod of Law. You hear the roar of a lion as. Samufa, the angel of Nobanyan, takes it. His long uh, black hair, glowing with power, uh, and a much shorter black beard as he fills with power, even passes it to Aira, the angel of Tear, and you hear the clanging of sword on sword as she surges with power as well. Salima takes it next, the angel of a monitor. You hear the roar of flame, the blazing sun, as he surges, as she surges with power. And then, finally, it's handed to Gobita, who has that almost gem-like skin, a a, a beard that is more, little more than a goatee, tightly bound, and a brilliant headdress. As he takes it and 
holds on to and you hear the blasting of a desert storm as he surges with power. And they all then gather around Moduna and they each put a hand on the rod. And each of them surge with power as that happens. And Moduna looks back to Alkira, who's just at the back with you all watching. And he turns and says, We're going to E7. And she looks around a little nervously and then flies up and grabs onto it. And uh, with that, Moduna points it and at the uh, at the blue chamber of Akula. And in a flash of brilliant light, a beam blasts out of it and combines with the swirling magic that has been uh, trying to stave off the corruption of Pazuzu and it blasts and immediately all of the form of Akula is radiating with this brilliant energy. And you see now is all that can be seen in the light is no longer her body, just the black wings. But you see that there is a tiny handful of shimmering light blue feathers left. And then there's more and more start to sprout out as the black wings fade away and the corruption of Pazuzu is fully cleansed, a final blast from this rod of all seven of these angels. And in a moment, the light fades and quiet returns, even the wind chimes, as if knowing that this is a moment of importance. Stop. And in a moment, Akula's eyes open up and they're clear as she falls out of the energy as it shimmers and fades. Araza catches her and cradles her gently. And she looks at her and she, her tears are welling in her eyes and she says, you've made it, you're back. And she, uh, Akula looks up and says, I would have been fine if you had to kill me. And she says, Shh, we don't have to. And they embrace and all of the other angels all reach in and embrace each other. And... Oh, thank, thank you, God. We did a really good thing here. Is it better? Is it all fine? And uh, they all turn to you after a moment of jubilation. And they turn to you after a moment of jubilation and they all look incredibly pleased as you see that Akula is returned uncorrupted but still weak as Araza glides past you and uh, they say... And she says, it is all right. Thank you so much. I cannot believe that the work that I used to think could only be done by the divine could be achieved by the spirit of mortals like you. Thank, you. thank you, little one. My, my little baby. And she tries to pull you in a little hug. That's the soul I was so comfortable in. And she pull, she feels your heartbeat and she pulls back and Alraza um, turns and says, I'm going to make sure she gets some rest. And they leave and the others begin to thank you and leave until all that's left is the angel of Morden holding the staff, the rod. And he stops and says, I'm going to put this in a very safe space. And now, as long as no more dark crystals 
come into this veil. Oh, you mean like this one? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she kidding, she kidding. <laughs> Funny joke, yeah? <laughs> um, actually, though, about the rod, um, we want to take this with us, yes? I don't think we no, should. No, not particularly. But what if we need it? We have the feather. We're just going to have to come retrieve Lufty, it. Lufty, I, I think you can see it took seven windows to utilize it. We have but five currently. And we're not really windows or no. angels. We're Tabaxi, Genossi, Caprice. Okay. Can you remind me, when we're here, there's like a time still, right? Yes. T- basically, time doesn't pass at all okay. in the outside world. That's so basically, when you teleport back, it's as if it's no time in the in the prime material plane's past. Perfect time to take a week to transcribe a spell into a spell. Ten hours. I need ten hours. Perfect. 250 gold pieces. We got time? Continue. We've almost finished rebuilding the archives and my vault. This is going in a very special chamber. You're... you're... <laughs> goddamn scum. Sorry. <laughs> hey, no, hold, keep it safe. Now, right now, hold on, big fella. <laughs> now, hold on. Tell us about the wounds. Uh, the wounds. How's it on your leads? The road, she speaks to me. <laughs> I mean, uh, mm, 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 mm. so you'll keep it safe, and, and nothing will happen again as long as there aren't any. I, I pr- we promise not to bring anything back, but is there any other way that somehow corruption could come in? Do you swear on everything it will be safe if we leave it with you? There are sent no eight of us now. We were trapped and scattered, hoping that we'd never be reunited, that there'd never be any need. Now that there is, nothing is getting into this veil, as long as we have something to say about it. All right, well, thank you. I... Aris, do you feel comfortable leaving it here? I think it's the right thing to do. No, I don't feel comfortable without anything. But I don't, I don't see another choice. I can't wield a staff and a rod. And even if I could wield the rod, as I've said, we're not seven, eight angels. We're simply us. We don't have the power for it. While a cooler rests. So thirsty. And Alkira sobers up a little. And he kind of like shakes his head yeah, a little bit. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Take all the time you need. Before you go, I want to thank you and give you the means to call on us whenever you need us to strike down Thurish Dune. I will prepare the artifact. Thank you. Remind me the name of this particular Winduke. This is Moduna. Moduna. Uh, Moduna, uh, I know you've got a lot to do uh, to fix your vault and the whole thing, but I was just wondering at some point uh, if I could just borrow a little bit of your time. Uh, we don't need to RP it, so to speak, but uh, I was hoping to <laughs> learn, uh, learn a little bit about Morden. Uh, uh, just uh, have some questions. I'm going to start using that when I'm in like a need I... to know situations and, and social situations. <laughs> really need to RP it with you, but can you tell me you, where this you, is? You, you call me. It's at, it's at your leisure. It's at your convenience. I just, uh, you know, I, I don't know very How much. How long are you going to be here in the Vale? Well, at least ten hours. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of I just kind of shrug. I'll come find you. Great. And he... I have a feeling he is going to RP it with you. He uh, flies <laughs> out with the rod <laughs> until all that's left is the the uh, greenish uh, gem-like visage of Gobita, the angel of Osiris. He looks down at you, Iris, and says, we have much to discuss. I would be happy to. We have at least ten of us. I'm not sure I would like to appear it with you, but... <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> You're fucked. <laughs> Too bad. I'm going to ensure that Akula is resting well, and I will find you. I will be easy to find. 
the only tobacco seed in this entire place. And, and he just he... nods. And he... And there's almost this, uh, th- they all have an otherworldly mess, but you can get the sense that some of them have a bit more of a mortal vibe to them. And this one seems far more un- otherworldly than the other ones, above a lot of it. And he glides out. And by the way, get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I guess I better get to work. Uh, I got a lot of... A lot of time ahead of me here. Uh, you know, I just have to get started. I well, just a moment, just a moment. Can we take a moment and celebrate a, a victory for 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 a hot second? Woo! We took care of business. We we, we uh, did it. It was all yeah. good. Yeah. Guess who's back? Back again. Alcula's back. Tell a friend. That's all. You guys already oh. know, though. Oh, that, well, that was good. I don't have much to do. I mean, uh, maybe I'll write something. Uh, maybe I'll. Uh, I'll make a musical. I I, I can do that. I right? love musicals. That that sounds great. I I'm gonna go fish. I'm looking forward to seeing how the DM is going to punish us for Iris's idea of me copying the spell into my book. <laughs> I'd also like to RP the next ten hours. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. A waterfall swooshes you off the side of the. <laughs> we'll find out where this goes. <laughs> um, I would just go find a. I would go with Tella. And while he's fishing, I would sit down by wherever he's fishing and transcribe. There was the pond next to that camp, right? I would keep him company by the pond while he fishes and just silently transcribe to myself and while you fish. Yeah. I turn around in a joyful, uh, uh, ecstatic mood. I'm like, the weight of the world is off of my shoulders. I just walk to find my own uh, quiet place with some parchment and uh, uh, ink and pen, uh, ink and quill. Uh, Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? (laughs) (laughs) I would go to to Alkira's, like, I think she had a hammock. At some point, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would she like jump in the hammock and yeah, like grab way, a yeah. bottle of whatever's within arm's reach. And <laughs> you, just kinda... you like get like swallowed up by the hammock, yeah. And uh, but it's it feels very comfortable and cozy, and it smells a little bit of that of those uh, spices that she smells of, and uh, that the, she still retains that uh, Ginny nature uh, of hers, and uh, it's relaxing. And then eventually, uh, Morden, sh- uh, not Morden, uh, Morden literally shows up. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, uh, Moduna shows up and you're able to ask him and we, won't, we actually will not roleplay that but Rishi will tell you all about Moradin uh, <laughs> um, Caprice has questions because of course of his yeah. infatuation with yeah. Herja and he would ask uh, generally about what, what being uh, uh, loyal to because he's never had a god and so yeah. he's sort of thinking about that in that way. That's yeah, and you know that he that you learn that Moradin is he's he's the All Father of the Dwarves, the head of the Dwarven Pantheon, the Soul Forger, the Soul Forger, yeah. the All Father. Yeah, I mean, Richie, badass. Yeah, um, and so he might he, try to he might try to squeeze a little bit of uh, Dwarvish. Uh, I guess that would be the yeah. language. So he tries to learn a little bit more how he might be able to communicate with her when yeah. he when he rescues her because he's so. Confident. And you know this, but he would tell you that the you know the the Rod of Law was forged by Moradin himself with the power of the other six god, god lawful good gods okay. uh, that you see represented here and that you know it was that's why he's the he'll be the one to uh, wield ultimately and you recall that that's why in your dream that you had or your vision that you had it was Torvald who represented Moduna in that scene in that dream was the one to initially strike to finally strike down um, the most I thank him for his time you do that um, it's at that point where, oh, Iris, what are you doing? I'm just walking around. You walk around Twitching and cat you cat see cat. the Vati. They, um, they greet you warmly, but they are very polite and they just go about their business. Uh, they are not particularly concerned with your, um, you, with your presence here. They are not unkind, but they, uh, are a little bit aloof, I would say. Um, and, uh, they have far more important matters to attend to. And uh, as you find yourself uh, in perhaps a, a beautiful garden, you hear the very gentle flap of wings, and uh, Gobita uh, flies down and, and, and lands very gently, uh, staring down at you. I'll just nod when I see that he's arriving. Iris of the Sands. 
have you heard from your god? Recently. I have spoken to mine, and he tells me that Anubis has not been seen or heard from in the upper plains. That was my fear. I saw him trapped in a pyramid, essentially. You saw him outside of the pyramid. Or outside of the pyramid. Yeah, so in a strange realm that was very clearly not the yeah. material plane. What the hell? Yes, my vision. He was outside of the pyramid in a strange realm. It was unfamiliar to me. Whatever he is. Did I... I think we talked about this. I had suspicions that it was the shadow fell. Uh, I would say make an arcana check at advantage, and I will set the DC appropriately. DC is one. <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. That is the, the DC was fifteen. Imagine a three stock by Nigel Thornberry. <laughs> In my dreams. <laughs> Rough. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Have you seen the Nickelodeon Smash Bros. clone? Who are you main him? I'm, I'm gonna name Jimmy's dad. <laughs> and then, you mean Hugh Neutron? Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the tweet. I'm sorry, this is a very That's dramatic line, but I need to say this. They uh, actually got the voice actor of Jimmy's dad. Just like, like, oh, like, bad DI, Jimbo. Looks like you're gonna get zeroed to death. No <laughs> way! <laughs> I'm definitely an Ickis or a uh, Norbert main. Uh, I know you're very From fond Angry of Dag. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be a Rango main. If Rango isn't in it, we riot. Oh, right. And what are you it's talking about? There's a Nickelodeon Super Smash Bros. clone that was oh, coming out. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Anyway, so I wish you... Are there all real monsters? Also. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Thank Oblina. You. Oblina. I was going to say, I don't know Oblina. See, I wanted to be Ickis, but Ickis probably isn't in it. Yeah, probably not. He's the man. Crumb. 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 I love Crumb. Hey, Boomer, remember all the real monsters? I've had beer with the director of that show. Oh, oh is, is uh, he your friend, uh, Enzo? Yeah. <gasps> is Rocco it? in it? Is he confirmed yet? No. Rocco would be good. Rocco's gotta good. be in it. If yeah. Rocco's yeah. not, then it's gotta be Spunky. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably. We'll talk uh, about it during dinner. Spunky's yeah, we'll main, uh, dinner. His main move is just spitting, drooling into his bowl, and then eating it all up again. Oh, uh, <laughs> so I mean the uh, host from Double Dare. That's what oh, yes. was it. Mark Wiener. <laughs> Mark no, Wiener. No. Then what um, was the, then it was Mark Summers. Yes. yes. Mark Summers, yeah. I always the, both of them were on Nick, and I always was either Mark Wiener or Mark Summers. That guy was just there for the paycheck. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Because apparently the, he was a huge um, uh, germaphobe, who was and the so camp like he's getting covered in slime. He's like, <laughs> oh, what was his name? God, I, that's what I can't. He has like a, he had a really yeah, weird name. Um, yeah. Fun yeah, that's yeah. one that I can't summon. I can't summon the forefront of my brain. Pillar right <laughs> Toast Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From Ren and Stimpy. He's actually oh, in it. Oh wow. He's actually I mean, in he's, he's confirmed. Yeah, yeah, he's in it. Confirmed for Nick's oh, match. I've been asking. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's get back to the game. <laughs> this is why I played the Repair the Man, Man, Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, Boomer. Oh, no. 90s Nickelodeon. Oh, my God. There's so many great characters anyway. to choose from. Oh, I want to main uh, the double dancing lobster duo from The Amanda Show. <laughs> Bring out the dancing lobsters. <laughs> That's the like, final smash. Yeah, yeah, like, it's a perfect, perfect final smash. smash. <laughs> this thing writes itself. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make a joke, but I'm not going to. Not who the final boss is. Uh, it, it's oh boy! Face, right? I know, I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, He's the, instead of master hand, it's master foot. <laughs> oh god! Well played. Well okay, played. Okay. No, okay. Go. If you know, you know. Uh, oh man. Okay. That's horrible. <sighs> you recall. I would say, Iris, with your knowledge of of the of the dead, uh, that you would tell the, the the sandstorms, the place, the vibe that you got was absolutely beyond the realms of mortals. And I would say, with a, a seventeen, you would say that you get the sense that it was in the realm, the lands of death, and uh, you knew that Anubis was there. He mentioned that where he was was a godless place, and uh, so you could probably put two and two together and get a sense that it's perhaps in a dark domain of the shadow form. And I will relay that. Um, and he will, 
he will just take it all in and he will nod and uh, will think for a moment as if he's thinking thinking as if deciding whether or not he should tell you something. And eventually he closes his eyes and opens and says, whatever it is, that Anubis is, he will receive no aid from the rest of the Pantheon. I feel it's not. It is a true miracle that he has maintained his connection to you. I hope, my faith, It will continue to keep us in contact as long as it never wavers. There is something about the circumstances of your birth. That I believe gives you this connection. There is some plan. Be careful. For where you go, no gods can follow, but we can. And when the time is right, you will call on us. You mentioned the circumstances of my birth. Do you have any more information about that? I really do not want to leave from here wondering if my father's actually my father. It is lofty, and she's made me concerned. It is not a matter of parentage. Oh, that's great relief. <laughs> it is a matter of your soul. It is mine. And more. I will not wish you it. Anubis knows. He turns slightly. <coughs> Make a perception, uh, persuasion check. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Natural one. The dice have decided. He turns and he says, More than you know. Well, when and if he sees fit to impart this knowledge on me, he will choose to do so. He nods slowly <clears throat> and begins to turn and then stops. while Osiris himself, the Lord of the Eternal Land, will not be present and cannot go where you go. I will be there. I appreciate it very much. I will see you soon. It's very and he turns and flies away. You take however long you need to transcribe. Ten hours. Ten hours. Yeah. So can we like basically long rest if we're just sort of resting yeah. over eight hours? Yeah. We can Enjoy a long rest for sure. <gasps> I'm adding a spell to my spell book. <laughs> we're down one scroll. Um, I'll say in this time, and we don't have to role play it. Um, I don't really want to RP it with you. <laughs> uh, actually, no, no, never mind. <laughs> so we oh. took a long rest, yeah. Yep. Uh, and you don't necessarily sleep, but you know you can just yeah. you're milling about and you're 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 in, and also I would say that the peacefulness of this place makes it easier to get a long rest. Uh, it's just so relaxing and peaceful. Um, and after the incredible tension of basically since you left this place, going to Zentra, going marching all the way to Gron and everything that you've experienced, mm -hmm. uh, this is the first like true peace that you've had. And after the 10 hours are up, uh, Alkira, Kira will probably join you and, and drink with you all. Uh, you get the sense that, you know, although she has been made one of these Windukes in some way, that she still feels more comfortable among mortals. 
like she always had. And she shares a drink and a meal with you all. And she, at the end of the 12 hour or the 10 hours or whatever, uh, she says, well, I think now the, they're going to thank you and grant you the, the gifts that were promised, the rewards. But this is not out of thanks. Well, it is, but this is more of a, a gift from, from your mother. And she, uh, she reaches out and she pulls out this very ornate uh, chest that looks like it had been um, carved and, and designed uh, in the most beautiful palaces of, of Nekbet. Um, uh, very much of a, of a genie design. And she heaves it, and she's, she's very strong, and she takes her a little bit of heft as she places it down she in front of you. Chest. What was that? She heaves, she her, heaves chest. her chest yeah. and places it down uh, in front of you. And Is she... it a plastic statue of a turtle eating pizza? <gasps> uh, yes, but no. <laughs> yes, but actually no. <laughs> and uh, Mom, you she have. clicks it open and you see that there is just an absolute uh, treasure trove of coins and gems and jewels just shimmering. And, uh, uh, mm-hmm. and she says, this oh. is the, the riches from my travels, and I have no more need of it here. It is for you, my daughter, and, and your friends. Make sure you share. There's one thing that a mother should teach, I have heard. It's to teach their children to share. Yeah, with mom, I'm like, um, you know, they kind of cover the, like, uh, the kindergarten. Brother Gruba, you know, they cover that. There's a whole oh. song, and, you know. And she kind of looks away, a little embarrassed. But I, I am, oh, I appreciate it. Um, this is so nice. Thank you. Thank I, you so I, much. I left you in good hands. I left yeah. you in good hands. And she, uh, she says, I'm going to miss you. And she hugs you. <clears throat> and in a flash, you see uh, wings flap. And there are six more um, angels around you. All but Akula. And Moduna flies up very, um, very slowly. And he looks at you and says, And now we are in the end game. This is the fate of perhaps not your world, but all worlds, all realms. And while we prepare for a great war, we will be ready to use the rod to strike down Tharish Doom. And he reaches <clears throat> into his person and he pulls out a metal figurine. And it seems to be wrought, seems to have been worked and with beautiful ornate craftsmanship and he hands it forward and you can see that it is a, in the shape of what looks like a rod with two wings coming forward and wrapping around it and he hands it forward to whomever would take it and says clench this and call upon the seven angels and we will come. Who's the most responsible? Felix. What? Uh, I, Fine, and I'll reach out and take it. Uh, I, I, I don't want that. I think that it's, uh, it's, this seems more like an Odyssey kind of thing. The moment he started stuttering in on himself, I knew he was just a... I don't know, I'm not, not going to be responsible for that. You gave him a chance, though. It's like taking the well, baby He's steps. far more responsible than he believes he is. Oh. One day he'll see it. Yes. Um, like and connection. with that, <laughs> not even a chance. Uh, he floats back a little bit, and Alraza floats forward, and she's smiling, and, and there's just an absolute shift in her mood, and she says, I know I'm s- it's probably getting old, but I can't thank you enough. And as a token of my gratitude, and he looks across all of you, 
and he and she turns to you, Felix. And as she floats forward, you can feel this heat radiating from her, the heat of dragon's fire. As she Badass. reaches uh, into her person <clears throat> and she pulls out a, a figurine, an idol of, uh, it seems to be made of platinum and it's in the shape of a dragon. And she hands it to you. And as you touch it, it's actually a little hot. Uh, oh. But it's not, it's just warm to the touch, uh. but not, not, not painful. How, how big is it? Like, just like a... Yeah, like a, like a little thing. figurine. Wow, look at that. This is amazing. It is what you deserve. Oh. Oh, no. It must be cursed. Well, I hope not. <laughs> what is it? Something this beautiful couldn't be cursed. It's just a beautiful statuette of a dragon. <clears throat> the dragon spits oh. in your face. Ah, damn it! And it's in your eye completely dissolved. Ah! <laughs> and she then floats floats over to you, uh, Lifty, and she says, "Kula wishes that she could be here, but she's still so very weak. But yeah. she wanted you to have this." She says that you could work on your fashion a little bit. And she reaches and she pulls out this beautiful headdress of brilliant plumage of all of these different colors of feathers. And she hands it to you. And it seems to be made to fit your small head. Wow. I mean, that was a, is unusual. a little, I, you know, I know <laughs> it's a condition. It's okay. From mother's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and then she gets mad. <laughs> um, it was a little bit of a backhanded gift, but I I appreciate it. I I oh yeah, put it on now. You look wonderful. And uh, a little tear comes to her, her face and she floats back and says, Thank you. And uh, with that, the um, the angel you know as Sanufa flies forward and looks down at you, Toa. And he uh, reaches into his person and pulls out this, oh, it looks like a, 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 a pelt of, of lion's fur and claw. And he hands it to you and says, you are a strong warrior who fights for friends, family, and what is right. Yes, I try every day. <clears throat> the tenants of a king. Thank you. Badass. For Very you. kind. And he hands it to you. <clears throat> Lufty's eyes get really big when he says tenants of a king. And I'm like... <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. You've claimed the strong one. And <laughs> you can handle more than one. You claimed strong one. It is twenty twenty one. No taxi backs. It is so the current year. Twenty one. Felix, I did not claim Felix. <laughs> he's, he's got more muscle than I do. I'm not that scrawny. <laughs> oh man! Uh, and he does have physical fitness tests. <laughs> and uh, with that, I cast <laughs> mostly. Uh, 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 a female angel flies forward. You know her as Salima. She, her hair is is a is, is a dark color and it's pulled uh, back tightly. And as you actually see that, although it's dark, it, it almost is. There's 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 bits of, of of radiating glow from within, as as if she there's some internal radiation. You feel a warmth as she approaches, and she's incredibly uh, proper and put together. And she uh, holds out a ring with a gem that glows with the sun as if a sun itself is trapped inside Whoa. and she hands it and says you look like you could use more jewelry thank you for oh. having a spirit and a soul that shines like the sun it's my uh, uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> this whole He's not even wearing a ring on that finger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, they've been on there for 
It's very human here. Spit on Grace's hand. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Much better. Yeah, really good aim oh. with that. Um, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. I'll put it here on my left thumb. And with that, Gobita flies forward in front of you, Iris, and he says, "I think this jewelry oh, good. is more what you had in mind." I love it. And my he reaches into his purse and, and pulls uh, out a necklace. Oh, I love it. With a brilliant, ad- adorned in, in jewels and gems and gold. <laughs> and at the center of this amulet is oh, amulet the symbol me. of uh, an eye. I love eyes. As <laughs> he hands it to you. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, Continue family. to do the will of Anubis, Always. and you will save him as well. And he floats back, and uh, Modunus flies forward, and he says, You are all now ready. You've all shown what mortals can do. Call on us when the time is right, and we will stop this all together. Thank you for everything, and we'll let you know when we need you. Yes, do you have a litter box? I I don't know what that is. Yes, just there, there's a hang like a waterfall like, hanging off the, uh, you know, just uh. Thanks, Selena. This is really <laughs> something. And <laughs> and they all nod and they, they they express their thanks one more time and fly away one by one. <laughs> Lufty. Uh, uh, Alraza and Alkira give you one big hug one more time. And Alraza flies off, and Alkira looks at you and says, Please, please be safe. Yeah, I'm always. You don't have to worry about me. Look at that. Oh, indeed. Oh. She kind of she, she like subtly flexes and looks down at just the massive size of her arm and says, You're doing very well. Yeah. I know that you'll be fine. Take care of all of them, too. Oh, I will. I mean, that's what I'm here for. They would be lost without me, really. I'm, that's my girl. Mm. And she looks back and says, Well, I have to get ready to prepare for a war. You do the same. Be safe. You too. My daughter. And she gives you one more hug and almost like, you hear a like, crack <laughs> in your back. Ooh. And uh, it Ooh. feels actually pretty good. And she uh, gives you a pat on your head awkwardly and then flies away. As you all, uh, you are now just alone. Even Alkira the Thunder Fury, Lifty's mother, has laughed after a tearful goodbye. Canada! Oh, no. and, <laughs> and you all look at the gifts, the angelic gifts that you were bestowed by the Windukes. This ring is really badass. It seems to be... The Ring of the Eternal Sun. It has seven charges. Oh my god. As an action, I can expend one or more charges to target a creature within 60 feet of myself. Uh, that creature must then make a wisdom saving throw. On a fail, the creature loses its highest available spell slot depending on how many charges I expend. What? So if I succeed, I could be like, boop, no seventh level for you. You could lose a seventh level. Yeah, but like... Which is massive. Yeah, but even like losing, dropping a a, a fifth or a, a sixth, fifth, yeah, yeah. like all oh, holy really shit. Good stuff, well, really especially because obviously I run like bosses that have actual spell slots and whatever. So yes. like, I thought that would be helpful. And it's like, how many times are you just running out of spells to use? It's like, oh man, a fourth level spell, then it's gone. Nope. Or like that's still huge. Yeah, I need to figure out how to get my DC up. I wonder what it costs eight thousand five hundred eighty-eight gold pieces that'll <laughs> allow me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Only warlocks. Um, Okay. I have this lovely headdress. Even though I already just put a feather in my head. You ruined the feather! I ruined the feather! No, um, I am now Feather the theme. So, I have the headdress of the plumed one. While wearing this headdress, you receive plus one to attack and damage rolls. Damn. This headdress has five charges. You may use a reaction to reduce damage by 1d4 plus dex modifier. If you reduce damage to zero, the attacker is knocked prone. Um, so I do have another clarifying question. Yep. Is a, Do I have to use a charge to add 
plus one to attack or damage, or is that a nope, constant? That's just, that's just constant. So you have plus one to attack that's or damage. That's pretty badass. I believe it's uh, the plumbed one. Oh, ooh, it, I'm sorry, it is Lots the plumbed It's sugar plum. She's very sugar plum themed. I'm sugar plums. Thank you, Mike. Idol of the Justice Bringer. Ooh. This idol has ten charges. You may use your reaction to expend one charge and cast shield without expending a spell slot. Whoa. Let's fucking go. That's amazing. Oh, oh shit. shit. How many charges? Ten. So you're just going to be shielded all the, all the time. Never I will be able to cast shield whenever I need to, unless I'm getting absolutely descent upon. He wants you to lose your reaction so you don't use counter spells off. <laughs> that will <laughs> No, dear, don't tell him that. <laughs> that is true. It will work. It's, it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. You know, I think that's, you know. Uh... I got Mantle of the Lion King. When I take damage, I can use a reaction to let friendly creatures within 15 feet of me regain hit points equal to 1d4 plus con mod. That's pretty fucking good. So basically, people that are near me, I can I can heal them. Very cool. Nikki? What? What's your item? Oh. Amulet of the Sacred Land. This amulet has five charges. As a reaction, when any creature targets you or an ally within 15 feet of you with an attack or harmful spell, you may spend a charge. They must make a wisdom saving throw. If they fail, they must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. Wow. Very cool. Yeah, so you're like redirecting. That's, that's badass. That's amazing. Damn. These are fucking sick. Wow, oh, yeah. I feel so powerful with this. And I'm going to add it on top of my boar belt so I have lion and boar now around my uh, my shoulders. I feel so good. So good. I don't know if it's me. Is it me? Is it me? <laughs> but is it me? You look good. It's, it's 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 a pretty good look. Oh, it's it's feathery. But don't fawn over me, please. You're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> All right, Felix. I'll are you ready my to? Feathers. Are you ready to take us? Yeah. Um. The the other scroll is 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 no good. Um. So, but, but I know the spell now. I, I've worked it out, and I think that using this scroll to uh, get us to. Uh, Austin Guard will 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 be a good test run, and and then when we get there, I'll just take a look at the, the sigils on the ground, and I'll memorize them, and we'll be able to go to Austin Guard anytime we want, and then we just have to at some point get back to Centra, and and, and then I can learn those sigils as well. I, you know, that's the only problem is that we won't be able to just go to Centra until I learn the sigils sequence. So did you, with it being on the scroll, would he when he transcribed yeah, would he transcribe the knowledge? of how to get to Zentra as well? Or uh, do you describe both? No, I only, I, okay, I, so, I learned so you, teleportation when you, when you use it and inscribe it, it will give you, you will have the knowledge of, of that. Of the Zentra and Sigils. So you'll be able to use it to get there, and then when you're there, you'll just be able to study it. Well, yes, so for Austin Guard, that makes sense. Yes. What I'm saying is that I had to, I had to consume the Zentra uh, scroll to learn the spell. So if he had done the Austin Guard spell instead, it's both. So you can, do, you can do one and the other. So the question is, yeah. whichever scroll that I consume, and we can just yes. say which one was, do I learn that sigil sequence? Yes. I don't need to have then seen the sigil on the ground. Correct. Yes. Then we're good. Yeah. Then it doesn't matter. All right. I know how to get to Sentra, and it certainly will know how to get to Austin Garden. All right. Well, you, you have, have the sigil uh, sequence for Sentra. It's in my brain. That's a great place for it to be. Right? Yeah, I don't think I'll forget it unless for some reason I would be, you know, rattled around real hard. I cast Modify Memory on Felix. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember how to get to Sentra. Um, I mean, so if we're done here, then we'll take this for a test fit. And before you know it, we'll be in Austin Garden. Let's do it. This works uh, across uh, planarly, right? We're not going to uh, suddenly uh, explode into uh, some sort of horrible void either, right? No, I mean, I, you know, from what I understand, uh, you know, from what I've, 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 I've gleaned off of all of this is that it, we, we're only going to go to established teleportation circles that I know the sigil to. I, if I don't know the sigil, it just won't work. We won't, you know... We won't end up somewhere in the void. Oh, okay. So we won't be turned inside out horribly and made into monstrosities if you fuck this up. If I understand it correctly, then yes, you're right. All right. I just don't understand how you do what you do, because this is all, like, maths and dimensionalities and, like, arcane symbols and memorization and practice, and I just make rhymes, and we're there. <laughs> game recognizes game. All right. 
All right, so you're going to use the scroll for this one, so it won't use a spell slot, so you'll have it. That's right. All right, well, I'm ready. And I adjust my lion pelt. Let's go. So I lay out the uh, the scroll on the ground as opposed to drawing a chalk circle this time, and we all stand around the scroll, and I focus on it. If we're ready, we can go. Uh, the scroll disintegrates and whips out, and you feel that familiar arcane magic shimmering in silver as it swallows all of you. And uh, once again, your feet leave the ground, and you feel like you've descended great, uh, ascended great distances. No, wait! And suddenly, you are within a swirling chamber. Uh, radiating on, standing on top of a shimmering uh, transportation circle. Uh, a number of guards are there, um, startled for a moment, and it doesn't take long uh, for you to explain uh, who you are, and it seems as if you've been expected. Uh, and I'm just going to basically, we don't need to role play all of this, but you, unless you, unless anyone wants to do anything while you're here, um, you're greeted by the general that female general who you had seen in your vision, Felix, in that dream of mirrors and in the dream world that had been created. And she knows that you have been uh, sent by Zern, and she knows that you're not to receive an escort, that you are to go to the front lines, and it'll be up to you to cross over unimpeded. She warns you that they are incredibly watchful. They have very powerful magics. There are watchful vultures and of, the, of normal variety, magically imbued, and also the giant vultures that they ride. Uh, a number of the Shadar Kai ride to patrol the skies, uh, and it is treacherous. But uh, you're able to spend the night there if you wish, or leave immediately. But uh, you are given, uh, given that Zern had given you full access to Austin Guard Fort is really a, a, a city uh, built around. Uh, you are able to leave whenever you'd like. Anything you'd like to do before you leave? <clears throat> I think since we just rested, I, I would be ready to go. This is a military outpost. There's what's nothing like to do here. What's like the general vibe here? Other like what's information? Like what's going on? And like. So, uh, it, I would say that the general vibe is that there's been a recent battle, probably uh, about six days ago, and um, you probably heard that a number of the soldiers were uh, killed off uh, in the front, uh, in enemy, behind enemy lines, and their, their bodies will not be retrie retrieved, unable to be retrieved. Um, like, has this been, like, a long-standing outpost, or is this a more recently active No, post? this is a long-standing. They've been at war for years. Okay. For many, many years, right? So this so is, there's, like, there's skirmishes same constantly. old trudgery as always. Yep. That kind yep. of thing. And the okay. occasional skirmishes over, you know, natural resources. And uh, I would say Felix would know that, that Skethrenil is particularly known for uh, its... its the herbs and plants that only grow there that are incredible for alchemy and uh, alchemical creations. And so- I would share that, we don't have yeah, to RP this. Yeah, exactly right. You, you would share that. <laughs> and uh, you know that this is where any kind of ground you could get and bring an herbalist to harvest and bring back for the uh, the, the alchemists, the, the, the state alchemists, um, in order to uh, in order to, to use is a huge victory. Similar to how the ghost iron in the uh, along along Gron, whenever they could mine, uh, whenever they took territory, uh, the natural resources were incredibly important for Korvaki, and that is what is being fought over, at the very least. I request uh, before at, before and after our next break, we all have to say full metal alchemist. <laughs> and then when we come back, we'll say full, full metal, metal alchemist. alchemist. That's when how I we know. When I cut out the break, it went perfect. That's <laughs> how we'll know that we're uh, going on break and coming back. Um, I would ask uh, the general, uh, and we don't have to repeat this unless yeah, we want yeah. to. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, about <sighs> if there are any ways that, or suggestions or methods that they have to stay 
hidden to stay stealthy away from the vultures? Are there any just guidelines? Or, you know, I would expand also what secret past they may know about these kinds of details. Uh, I would say that with the the, the communication that you do, uh, that you do that they're they're very forthcoming in the sense that there is a point in the front where it there is a uh, a watchtower nearby, but it is in a very treacherous point where um, no major troop movements are going to be, so it's less heavily patrolled, um, and where it is requires uh, climbing and hiding in the, in, in the brush, and you know that this is a, a treacherous dark land full of uh, tall, craggy spires, canyons, deep pine, pine forest valleys, um, and it's, it's treacherous land, it's treacherous terrain, uh, to the point where, where, like, where horses cannot really maneuver very well. Um, across the entire kingdom. So they would recommend to go to the watchtower. They would go to the pass by, there's a ton of watchtowers all along. Right. Uh, but, but, so specific but there's one. a specific one where there is a, 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 a particular pass that leads to a ravine where a number of um, a number of spies had gone in. Uh, very few return, but some have. Um, and that's how, you get a sense that that's how Zern probably got a lot of his information about Skethamil. And, uh... And I will say, uh, and, and the last thing I want to ask is, so Count Kreskov, how do we get there again? Uh, you recall what Zern had told you. Which is, do you have a direction? Or he gives yes. like a map. So, 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 he gets, oh, so basically he you're, you're heading uh, due east and uh, slightly south, and it's probably a good um, hundred miles. Uh, it's 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 in it's into the uh, the into the kingdom. Sorry to interrupt, but did we add a coin to the orgasm pot when we got the yes? We did. Yes, okay. okay. to the orga- I like when that. That's now the sense. orgasm pot. <laughs> that's also it has my been only for fans. years. But we've never come out and said it. Enjoying the orgasm uh, pot. Well, never mind. Now they are going to assume they're going to assume naturally that uh, that we're of uh, of Zentra, right? Where that we're. we're that we're not supposed to be there. There's only really like this, like neutral parties walking across these lines, right? Where it, as soon as we see elves, they're going to be like hands behind your head. It's it's certainly possible. I, I mean, there's no doubt about it that they know that we won't be from there. Uh, they'll know that I'm certainly from Centra. I, at least you might be less hated or disregarded as as as. Uh, should I make myself look like something? I can make you guys look like prisoners and be a dusk elf. I, I have those abilities as well uh, to disguise myself, and I've yeah. thought about it. it. It might be something we want to do, but at the same time, at least for this count, we're we're going out there as as sentients. I, I am. I, we we have to we have to prove that there's a reason for the count to flip and to work with us, and and I don't see any other way. Then starting off on the right foot and showing him that, that, that the sentience can be, you know, helpful and, and extend the olive branch, like you said. Yeah, but if we extend it and they just, you know, cut off the arm holding the olive branch, what's the point? Well, Maybe we just get straight to him, we, convince him first, and then well, go out. Well, that's correct. We're, we're going to do. We're going to avoid the the, the Skethrinal elves at all cost, and and if we have to, we'll fight and we'll, we'll protect ourselves. But but we we just need to try to get to the count as as, ungar, as unseen as possible. But I think until we get to the count, if we are seen, we should pretend that we know nothing about Koravakia and that we're not that we have nothing to do with them. That there's no connection. If they if we say that, then they say, well, then how did you get here and why are you here? Say so we just travelers. on vacation. Yeah, we're looking. Well, we walked by a bunch of troops and, and trenches and watchtowers. This seems like such a wonderful place to come visit for no reason at all. They're, they're right, Toa. We we won't be able to just Maybe talk we can our way out. We of it. Just I mean, this place is the real pits, and I'm from Kirstein. I, I, I mean, uh, excuse me. Yes. I'm the daughter of a pharaoh. I want to go where I want to go and see the world, and you're simply allowing me. They let us through the barracks because I am the daughter of a pharaoh. Oh, and we are your escorts. We yes, your... my caravan. You are your bodyguards. I love it. Let's do that. I um, think your base is made. Sure. You're really on point. I don't know if they'll care, but it's at least an excuse as to why we would be allowed through. Felix, make a history check. <laughs> Not bad. Let's take a look. When will I get Damn it. to roll my dice? Uh, 25. 25. With a 25, um, <laughs> as soon as Iris mentions that plan, 
you actually get the sense that that might actually work. Where from what Zern had told you, the two non um, uh, Dusk Elf or Shadar Kai counts had been given that position in order to entice them and to join them. And so anyone of power or or prestige uh, might be you might be able to to use that angle as a good plan. Then I would echo Iris's sentiments about how it could be a gamble, but I feel confident in her plan and I congratulate her. And offer a, 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 yeah, it's very smart. We don't have to RP it, but. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What the fuck? <laughs> no, I think you should RP that. What did you just say, Felix? <sighs> I couldn't hear you. Well, it was I... like you were thinking in your head aloud. <laughs> well, actually, I. It's not your accent. No. <laughs> I... <laughs> well, we don't have to RP it. <laughs> Iris is right. I mean, the plan could be a gamble, but it might work. It's certainly something to fall back on. But I, I think we should stay out of. You know, wandering eyes vision initially, but but it, but it's a good idea. And she's why right. is it a good idea? Because of these things that Mikey just put in my head. Uh, <laughs> so the idea, what you're, <laughs> you're saying, is that these feeling. counts were given these titles in order to draw in visitors. So they want to gar- gar- I'll garner say power. That, that you know, that basically power. that that that, I just make sure that I'm there has been. Uh, Historically, and it's been a long time, it has been probably decades or centuries since it's happened, but uh, people who have been uh, in power or, or someone who could be brought along to help the aims of the Shadar Kai, of the Dusk Elves, of Skethernel, and this Carrion King, uh, had been granted and enticed okay. with, uh, and people of power had been enticed with station. And with, this so they goes, are, and they these are. Two, these two counts had, had been appointed. And they are not Shadar Kai. No, they're the, they're the only two Shadar Kai so far, and both of them have been uh, t- technically gone against the king. The, wait, they're the only two. They are non Shadar Kai. Non Shadar Kai, yes. Okay. So they are. So, so what you're saying is we are. Ow. They are allowing people of power into their. They have country. in the past. They have in the past so because they could potentially influence and yes. help them with their goal. Okay, that's all I want to make sure I understand. Power and, yeah. Yeah. All right, I relay that because I just want to make sure I understood. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you know, my um, political entry, power. <laughs> well, that's great. Then, then that's what we do. We we, we, we go with Iris's plan, and, and and maybe we even fall back on that if this whole Zoom connection doesn't work out. But I see you get the sense that like that'd be a last last case right. scenario. And I, I want to stress that this is a backup plan. We need to try to be as stealthy as possible and, and just not be seen in the first place. But but it, but Iris had a great idea. All right, well, let's go. I'm sorry, what did you say? I said you had a great idea. <laughs> Lovely. We can go now. You, you know that I respect you. Yeah, <laughs> you should, like, uh, you know, all your jewelry and the stuff, you should just put it all on so you look, like, extra I'm important. trying to say I don't look like I'm wearing enough jewelry. Kind of, yeah. Because I would put more on. <laughs> I put all of my jewelry on. Oh, now? Looks so good. I have, like, eight rings on each finger. <laughs> Let's uh, move stealthily, but regally. Sounds good to me. So, yeah, I guess we'll try to, like, stay off any roads and go through the landscape and try to get a sense of this watchtower and keep an eye for it as we um, go stealthily, but, you know, not trying to go too slow. Okay. Uh, everyone do a group stealth check. Oh, my first roll of the evening. It's not bad. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is going to be... Oh, natural 20. Okay. Hey! Oh, shit out of me. Wow, I'm not proficient in stealth. Uh, 25. I'm not Vandress. I got a 16. Holy fuck, I suck. 16. 10. 13. 29. 13, fuck. 10, 16. 16. Okay. What do you get? 25. 25. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's. I am the wind. <laughs> but where there's not a number of us, and three of us need to succeed. Well, I think three of us got pretty, did pretty well. Depends on what the perception Almost check did. is. Yeah, that's what I'm They're fucking elves, man. We're fucked. Those damn you elves. I know. Leave Awesome Guard behind uh, with your plan in place. Um. It, Knowing that at least you have a backup plan if all else fails, if you get completely overpowered. As the as you make your way, you see is the the gloom of Korovakia behind you. 
is nothing compared to what lies ahead. The darkness of the cloud cover of Skethernil, as it casts a darkness over the over the jagged landscape, seems almost supernatural. As you remember the roiling, chaotic storm clouds of Erios, and there's the dreary gray haze of Corvakia. This is almost a a black, thick canopy of clouds, uh, creating just a, a darkness that even though it's the day, it looks, it gets darker and darker the closer you approach to Skethernel. Uh, you make your way, and as you find the point where the general had told you, you see is there's uh, a number of, uh, of pine trees that crosses this river on the front. You're able to find a place to ford the river, um, to cross the river, and you finally make your way into uh, very near the enemy territory of Skethernil. But you see that there is this... Uh, this watchtower of this elaborate, ornate craftsmanship. And where there is the practicality um, of the hard lines and, and clear edges of Korovakian architecture, this is, uh, is, is covered in adornments and uh, a number of statues uh, just for decoration built in this, but still that same uh, uh, readiness of, of, of the, 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 the heaviness of dark stone um, as you make your way and you you see the ravine that has been that has been mentioned and you make your way through it climbing up and you smell as you get further and further it's there's a muskiness to the air and the further in closer to the watchtower smells like rotting flesh as you, you hear that's all along the watchtower uh yes Exactly right. <laughs> you said the thing. And you see, and you hear a, a, a loud uh, squawk <laughs> as you, you see a, a dark shape cross over you. As you see a massive vulture fly around and a smaller one nearby, eyes scanning the landscape. And atop this vulture, you see that there's a, a saddle that's been... Uh, for uh, crafted out of some kind of strange leather, and you see armored uh, with with t- with ashy gray skin and violet eyes uh, and long white hair, Shadar Kai scanning from this watchtower. But you can see that this tower that's right by you has uh, has far fewer elves manning it, far fewer vultures overhead than the ones that you had seen off in the distance that you make your way here. And as you're making your way to the ravine, able to stay into the the, the rough uh, underbrush, as you get closer to this pine tree cover, and some there are some barren patches where there's a, a craggy a rocks and boulders, uh, you make your way and, and, and most of you are able to make it very quietly. But it's Toa uh-huh. who takes up the rear. Ew. Toa takes up the rear, and he he uh, Toa, you feel your foot accidentally clip a relatively large rock, and it hurts your toe, and it, it breaks something free, and then and then as it starts to fall down oh, and crash into a bunch of other rocks. It creates a little mini uh, rock slide. And you you look and you hear another loud squawk and you hear two voices shout. One from the vulture high above calling down to the watchtowers. You see it's up on your left side, about probably 500 feet away. And the noise echoes through this ravine and beyond. What do you all do? Oh shit! Are there any like, like, rocky crags or something that I, we can like jump behind? Yeah, I would to try be to out of like the, the line of sight brush or something. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, what yeah. I would there are there are boulders, there are rock formations. This is a pretty jagged uh, space, so you could attempt to, to hide. If Have you we wanted. seen any um, animals in our journey so far? 
Uh, you've seen vultures. You've heard the howls of wolves or some sort of canine creature. Heard the roar of bears, perhaps the snort of some boars. And, you, and you've seen the occasional woodland critters. I would, uh, uh, trying to think quickly, um, oh. uh, thirty feet out from where we are are currently, uh, uh, made the sound of scampering and the sound of a wolf uh, running, uh, as if it tipped over the rock. And I would definitely die behind. <laughs> yeah, uh, I you know, would immediately take cover. You make a cell check at advantage. The rest of you are fine. You're able to die behind it. Toe, you make a cell check at advantage. Caprice, you make a deception check. Oh, baby. Oh. Big money. Ooh, that's... Come on. Yeah. Big money. Yeah. I rolled a four. It's only going to be an 18. <laughs> I got an 18 as well. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Okay, oh. perception and insight. Go jack of all trades. Man. Natural one. <laughs> Natural talent, so, talent, whatever it is. As you make your way, and you see now that there are the, the, these uh, statues that loom over are in the shape of just vultures, their heads peering over, watching eternally downwards. As off to the side, you uh, make the illusion of a wolf as it uh, maybe lets out a yelp and, and, and scatters, and you hear the, cra the crackling of, of stone crashing against stone, and you see overhead as the elf and the vulture's attention is brought in that direction, and it soars away. And Toa, with you behind, you're able to dive out of the way, and you slip into that ravine. You're able to make your way further and further and you hear some voices call back as if all's well. And, and you leave the watchtower behind. What language do the Dusk Elves speak? Uh, from do we understand it? Uh, I would say if you if you speak uh, Elvish. I think I know Sylvan. Oh, I know. Ooh. I don't I know if I, I don't know if it's specifically yeah. Elvish. I know, I know. Oh no, I do know yeah, Elvish yeah, and Sylvan. They're different. Okay, no I know high both. five for you. I speak Elvish. Roger that. The side of the table. Um, you, you, and you. All you can hear is voices, but it's the tone of it is is as if it is all well, and the vulture just begins its patrol down further south from where you are. Um, and let me just pull this up. And as you leave the watchtower behind, you hear the kind of uh, clap of thunder and low roll, maybe a, str uh, a strike of lightning, as you the smell of rotten flesh occasionally uh, fills your nostrils on the wind, and the, the air gets cooler, as, uh, as you hear a, a distant howl, and you are in Skethrin. Oh, God. Toa, watch your step. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't notice it. My toe still really hurts, though. It's okay. If you were worried about me. I, I, of course we are. Uh, man, oh. everybody's okay. If that happens again, I'll create an illusion that tiny little people lift up your nail like the hood of a car and jump in. <laughs> ah, no, please. Oh, God, no. What is wrong with you? Just making him sensitive to his feet. Oh. Also, it was from a commercial that I watched once. It scarred me for life. <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> As you emerge at the other side of this ravine, you see a large valley with pine forests and a, a river coursing through. You see spiraling uh, or jagged mountain tops, and you see off in the distance a castle, and another castle, another castle, maybe some buildings all around it, and you're not sure how many counts there may have been and what was promised, but there seems to be some light flickering from these areas as you see this strange dark landscape. And as you make your way through the Valley of Darkness, you feel as if the shadows that are cast by the trees and whatever light can come through this dense cloud cover the shadows are far more intense than they should be. And the darkness is far darker. And the shadows of cats are longer, and you swear that they're moving as you pass them, and you look back, and there's no movement. But you just feel presence of darkness and death. And that constant smell of rotting flesh is in your nostrils. Can I ascertain if the rotting flesh smell is coming from 
the dead warriors uh, who may have had battle a few days ago uh, nearby, or if it's make just, a perception check for me, I'd be happy to. Uh, that's going to be a 15. 15. You... You smell you smell the air, and it feels like the, whenever the wind changes direction, there's a different... smells different, but it all smells like rotting flesh, as if it's from all over this place. You know that there's there are bodies. Um, but as you make your way, you see a road winding through the forest, through the, the jagged terrain, and... There's no horses, but far off ahead, you see what looks like a, a wagon making its way through down in the valley, and you get a whiff, and you see the piled up high in the back of this wagon, just a number of corpses. And you see that pull, pushing this thing through the jagged terrain as the wagon shakes back and forth is not a horse. It seems to be some massive humanoid-like figure pushing and pulling in a hood. Fuck. As it leans and you see a slender shape riding at the driver's seat. As there's a number of uh, humanoid figures also hooded walking alongside it. So it's still like a wagon being like pulled. But it's basically, yeah, rather than like a harness, there's this uh, There's no thing. yoke. There's, there's like no a, yoke. Like it's on the shoulders of this large hooded figure and grabbing on and it's pulling this thing. How how big is the figure? I would say it's probably uh, about the size of, of, of uh, a large creature, I would say, using Dungeons & Dragons terminology. And how about the, like, like... The other figures walking along, how normal humanoid size, humanoid size, yeah, okay, cool. and they all walk with a strange gait. With a strange gait. Oh yeah, that is disgusting. I mean, it makes it makes kind of sense, right? Necromancy. Oh, gross! They're going to take them back. You think they're going to like do stuff with those bodies? I yeah. thought they were just like you know tidying up. Yeah, I, I bet they. I'll do all kinds of stuff with those bodies. Oh, God. What do you think that big god pushing the wagon? Is he a giant of some kind? I don't know. Felix, do you know of any kind of creature that might live here? I would like to uh, try... History check. History? History check. Okay. I was going to I was going to RP it. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, I'd like to ascertain any kind of yeah. knowledge... I was trying to do the whole, like, I don't want to make a history check. I want to make, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, so I'm this. telling you to make a history check. Uh, can I yes, give him inspiration? Yes, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. History is going to be 19, I think, but let me double check. I gave you inspiration. Oh. Uh, yeah, history man. is plus nine. Yeah, I got a 19. I'm going to save that inspiration, if I may. Or you my... have up to 10 minutes to use it in the reality of this world. Mm. I don't, I got a 19. I think you're this fine. This our world or that world? No. In the reality of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to save it. Yeah. If I lose it, I'll lose it. Yeah. 19. 19. You think of like what this size and shape is, and there's some similarity to the ogres that are native to this continent. Do I know about necromancy? Yes. Like the yeah, fact yeah, that they yes. use necromancy? Yes. But Zern told you all that. Yeah. Uh, and you know it's an abomination to the Raven Queen. Got it. That makes sense. Well, you know, given the nature of the magics that they use here and, and necromantic in nature, uh, I'd be willing to put some kind of bet down that that could be some sort of reanimated ogre. Uh, yeah. Oh, so like the same kinds of ogres and things that we saw in Korvakia. I Just did? Like, he, he's probably dead, maybe? Well, right. I mean, that that's the idea behind a reanimated corpse, is that they could essentially bring them back as, as to, to do labor. And anything flesh, really. Oh, they, that's they, gross. They could, they could... Keep on. Oh, I'm going to make a joke about Neko wafers. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be... I'm, I'm just making an assumption as a character, and I, and I don't know because we haven't discussed this. I mean, would it be unreasonable to assume that they, like, just make raids on 
you know, creatures from the surrounding area outside their territory and, like, collect corpses and, like, use them for things. You can see that a bunch of corpses are piled yeah. up in a wagon. Yeah, I so mean, like, probably... Uh, okay. And you know that ogres and ettins are native to... or were native the in many area. parts across all of Striga. Some had wiped them out, but some areas still had them. Korvakia, they had been in the mountains. And they're heading towards the castle that we see? They're heading towards one of the castles, but there's Oh, we have seen multiple. Okay. Yeah. I think this, this is, one. This is okay. exactly why I'm, I'm worried about the, the, the kids that they're, they're, they're taking... I mean, there's a very good chance that Milo and the others are just not alive anymore. Well, if he's undead, would he still be your brother? No, he wouldn't. But, but uh, it doesn't mean that we can't save them, or we can't fix them, or we can't find where their souls might be. Uh, I, there's always an answer. There's always an answer, and we can figure it out. You and I are in agreement. I mean, I thought I was fucking out, and we found an answer to my problem. We'll find an answer to yours. Right. Right. We just need more information. You don't know where he is or right. how he is. We just have to find him. Right, I'm just worried. That's all. We need to keep moving. Should we follow them? It couldn't be a, a, a terrible idea to find out where they're going, but we, if it's not in the direction that we need to go, we, we, we will uh, abandon course, and we gotta keep going where we know we need to go. I would say that you can tell that they're turning around a path that's heading north, and, we're and you're going southeast. southeast. South. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. We don't want to be downwind. Um, <laughs> so I think we just we just keep going. But as we go through, let's try to learn as much of, about this land as we can. It may help us. And I'll try to answer any questions that we might have. I, there was a lot of studying done about it, but you know, they, they, they keep to themselves for the most part. And they obviously don't want Korvaki to learn their secrets. Yeah, we have a long way to go. Let's keep going. And on that note. You look up and you see vultures eternally circling as far as you can see. Dotting the sky, there's no patch where you don't see one at least for a couple of miles. So they fly around almost eternally vigilant. They never seem to descend or take a rest. And you try to stay as stealthy as you can. Is there like brush or anything? Yeah, yeah. Walking? So these, okay. these are these are jagged. Like, is there cover uh, yeah, there's cover. There's there's, there's there's bushes. There's dense thickets. You get to some parts where the for, the pine forests are very dense, and I'll say that you'll hear the barking and yapping of of, of wolves. And maybe you'll look ahead and you'll see a wolf pack tearing apart a huge boar that they've just slain. And you hear the the growls of a bear lumbering around. You see two small cubs, and they just look. Uh, as you look around, though, these these predators seem to have this this manginess to them, shaggy and eyes uh, with some kind of sh almost as if they're sick. As the feeling of death continues, I'll say you make your you continue to to travel, and it's, it's slow going down valleys, up around uh, jagged passes, and at one point there is, you're in a pine forest and you see as there's a clearing ahead, and there seems to be the crumbling of stone, and you see what looks like a, seem to be some kind of crypt or mausoleum up ahead at the center, and you see the broken tombstones, as if this had been an old cemetery, ancient, unfathomably ancient, up ahead. And as you make your way around, you, the, the, the darkness gets intense. And the last bits of light from the day seem to stretch the shadows that this crypt is casting incredibly long. Iris, I need you to make a perception check for me. Tun tun tun. Oh. Good one, good one, good one. Mm -hmm. 25. Boom! 25. Let's fucking go. I'll say, as you pass, you. You see Iris. The shadows. Growing. And not with the sun. As you pass this mausoleum, you see them sneaking out and actually shift direction. Oh. And for just a moment, you see them sneaking towards you. What do you do? Nothing. 
Okay. I don't know what I would possibly do. Okay. You you turn and you just see for just a moment as the shadows whip around you and the darkness fills your vision. And the rest of you see Iris fall unconscious. Oh, I, 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 Iris! Yeah, I, I mean, rush I to her really, side yeah. and like shake her. Iris! I, Iris. This is why you do nothing with me, ass. As you. When your dance, Mikey. What the as fuck? The, as the, the shadows consume you, you have a brief instant. But you feel it strongly. You feel the shadow. You feel even more strongly the death. You feel the familiar sting on your flesh of a sandstorm. Just briefly, as suddenly your vision goes black. And you hear the sandstorm, but you no longer feel it. And suddenly light, a blazing sun over a scorched desert, a giant eagle circling around it. The sun fades and shrinks and turns into a shape it's dark, it's sickly purple. And you realize the shriveled, dried human heart Ooh. within a dusty rib cage. And it beats once. And then suddenly it shifts and forms, and you see as it takes the shape of elegant pottery. You see it's an urn, no, it's a jar. You know the look of a canopic jar. And on the head, it's a jackal. No. It's the skull of a jackal. Oh, oh, no. As it shapes, it turns from pottery to elegantly carved gemstone. Shape it elongates into what looks almost like a cross, but no, it's an onk. And you see an eye unblinking. The same symbol that is on your medallion staring at you, you know this is the Eye of Horus. And then, it shifts away. You hear a song. It's dark. There's no more, there's no more onk in front of you. You hear a song of lute, harp, lyre, enchanting beautiful voices. Just fragments of a song, but swallowed in a box of raven's wings on a shelf. And then suddenly the box opens and no song comes out, but it elongates and elongates and elongates into a large full body mirror, gilded, elegant, beautiful as if one from your many dressing rooms in the palace of Saket, in this mirror, and you stare at yourself. But yourself has a glowing, molten gold pulse within the center of your chest. And then suddenly, the mirror shatters, and the light shifts and swirls around. And as the glass swirls around, you see bits of reflections of, is that you're not sure if that's a if that's a, if that's a person or if it's, it's you or if it's someone else? And then suddenly you see a face, and it stares at you. And where there had been light from your soul, you see two blazing eyes. It's not eyes more than blazing uh, locuses of light in the empty skull of a withered corpse, wrapped in tight bandages, adorned in the gilded vestments of a pharaoh. And you hear a crackling, raspy voice as you feel the eyes boring into you. Ah, yes, my car. 
I finally see you. And as the voice uh, fades from your mind, it shrivels up and darkness returns to you. As consciousness returns as well. Iris! 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 Iris, you're all right! Wake up! What's happened? Well, um, I had a vision of the shadows move on their own. Try not to get too close to them. What? Yes, around the mausoleum. The shadows moved on their own accord. I chose not to run. Instead, I was provided a vision. It was uncomfortable. Try not to get too close to them. A, a, a vision of what? What did you see? Was it Anubis? Did you see him? It depends. Anyway, we should continue. Are, are you feeling all right? No, not particularly. But I need time to process what I saw. Oh, what do you talk about? Toa can carry you. Can I? Can I carry you? Yes. Carry her. Pick her up. I very gently pick up Iris. So you're oh, I feel right. so weak. All right, we we can go slower. We don't have to go fast. We just gotta keep moving. I'll be like moving. tickling her, just like as Toa's carrying her. I'll be like fawning over her. Do, do, do you think if it happened again, you'd be able to uh, uh, avoid it somehow or, or resist it? Potentially move away, yes. Okay, well, well, I'll try that. But it didn't dawn on me that they would set my consciousness and force images into my mind. I know. Yeah, all, right, all right, here's here's how we're going to proceed. Tella, you, you hold Iris, and you're going to stand in the middle. Lufty, I want you to take the lead. Your eyes are good, and you're going to, okay. to keep an eye out for things, and we're going to move slowly. And you're going to set the pace, and you're going to keep us quiet. And Caprice, I want you to take the last spot and keep an eye behind us, and I'll be behind Tella, and try to do what I can with magics and, 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 and ward us. But I need the two of you to be our eyes and to set the pace and, and, and keep us quiet and stealthy. Can you do that? Oh, yeah. I, I can. I just, uh, one, if, if I play a certain song, I know we're trying to be stealthy. I'll play it real quiet, but I can, I can, uh, sort of, uh, it's sort of like a counter uh, charm type operation. It might, it might uh, help. I, I, I know that making sound is not the best idea right now, but maybe I can play it real slow. How long can you do that for? Is it something that we should save for an emergency? Let me uh, double check my uh, uh, my understanding of myself. <laughs> why, you, why you do that, Caprice? I will have a greater grasp on the images that I saw, and I will remain. Okay. You uh, relate in exact perfect detail how you remember it. I can start a performance that lasts until the end of my next turn as an action. So I would just continually use my action to play this song each turn in addition to my movement. During that time, myself and any friendly creatures within 30 feet of me have advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed. Ooh, I think that's good. Uh, I think, though, we need to... I think we should save it. In case we get into a situation where we're not really sure how to proceed... Keep that in your back pocket. I'm going to hold my action, uh, uh, keeping this song in mind, yeah. until I see something or until uh, the situation changes. But I'm not going to have my viol on my back. I'm going to have it out and basically just ready to, to do my, my little dance. Iris, do you have any idea what those visions mean? No. They don't sound good. Everything sounds dark and I don't know. Was that Osiris that you saw? The, 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 the eye? The undead mummy guy? It, I wouldn't imagine, because you didn't no. describe it the way. Of no, it, it looked it's very not much a mummified pharaoh. It's an entity that I've that, ever seen. No, it's an entity you've never seen, and it just seems to be, it seemed to have been a mummified pharaoh of insane radiating malevolence. And all, oh. Oh. No, I don't think so. Which I do fear, my dear Pukes. I wonder if this entity has something to do with the reason that he is in the realm of the dead. Wait, did he kill Anubis because of the whole skeleton Anubis head? Can he you hasn't. even kill Anubis? It could be his plan. It, it could just be a fear shadow that just shows you what, what would scare you the most. It's possible. It's true. Well, I think we should, as much as I don't like the idea, maybe we should go further into the mausoleum to figure out... You want to go inside the mausoleum? Well, maybe not inside, but closer to see where these shadows came from. See how they work. 
I think we've been watching them. The shadows all around us. I know, but I didn't even see them. But I wasn't looking that particularly <laughs> hard at the ground. My curiosity is where it needs to be. I, I, I propose that we go around. I, I agree. If, if it's not towards our destination, I don't want to get sidetracked. And, and this doesn't seem like a good thing for us to be messing with. All right. We need Iris to rest, and if you don't feel well, let us know. I will let you know. For now, it's simple concern. I have a healing ointment if you need it. No, I have some of my own. Okay. Would you still like to be carried? Yes, of course. <laughs> All right. Duh! <laughs> and, and walk gently. I'll walk very gently. I won't stub my toe this time. And I'm just going to very carefully follow behind Lufty in the same marching order, presumably. Get in the formation! Yeah, um, so I'll go I'm, out front. I've got the rear. <laughs> and we'll go skirt along, <laughs> we skirt the along, and you guys keep your eyes. All of you keep your eyes at the the crypt, the crumbled crypt. I would be particularly watching the mausoleum for shadows, and also the like. I would be basically like back and forth between the sky and the mausoleum. And as doing the same. Night falls. Oh, it's not night now. <laughs> Night has just fallen. This place is scary during the day. As you hear this place the distant sad. howl of a wolf, or at least you hope it's a wolf. Good priest was As there too. it echoes through oh, the is. valley, and you all look at the shadows, and just the darkness consumes it, but they do not move as you pass. And you leave the broken cemetery behind you, making your way into the forest. What's our status on food? They seem to be still sitting at the restaurant. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very kindly. Thank you very kindly. As you make your way, I'll say that you probably at some point decide to camp for the night. We well, are you going to walk? Are you going to march through? I would suggest we camp. You can. Let's say that it gets you continue to camp, and you probably realize that you're at least, probably one more day's journey. I would say that as long as we feel as though, like, we're not busting our asses, that we don't need to, like, you know, stay long, like, rest longer than we would think we need to, right? Like, I would say we are resting to the bare days, minimum, yeah. right? Yeah. And moving as long as we're not, like, healing, you know, making sure that, that Iris is okay. You know, we're not, like, overexerting ourselves. It's 100 miles, walking, right? right? So it's going to take probably a couple days. Yeah, a couple yeah. days, yeah. Oh, yeah, easy. But, but I'm saying, like, I think we should keep our rests to a minimum. It would be would be what Felix would be advocating for our rests to be at a minimum, you know, to just get by and keep moving. As long as we're not actively fighting things and, yeah. like, wearing ourselves down, right? And if anybody disagrees, feel free. I, that's just what I would be doing. We would time. sensibly camp when we need rest. Yeah, right. Um, I, I, I agree that we should, we should probably camp down for the night and... And, and maybe we just leave early, maybe like six hours of, of sleep. We keep watch, two two at a time, and and get up early in the morning and just keep going. Absolutely in agreement. I'm really bad at early in the morning, so I'll take first watch if that's fine with everyone. Sure. Sense. I'll take last watch. Jeez. I could be in the middle anywhere. It's it's fine, and, and Beatrice will keep an eye out as well. Iris, are you, are you, do you want a full night? You, you can you can have, uh, you don't have to take watch. Oh, lovely. I wasn't going to anyway. <laughs> you sleep through the night, and then can we, do we have the numbers to do two at a time? I do not, not believe so. Not quite, but that's oh, okay. That's fine. that's fine. I would still be setting up alarm perimeters as well. Yeah. Um, you know, casting alarm ritually over and over and over again. I would make like a really, as, as plush as I can make it, I would make a bed for Iris and, and tuck her in and put her to bed and like make sort of a canopy over her face and then I would sit watchful or like in front of her. I uh, take my deck of illusions out and I put one finger under the top card mm -hmm. so that I can go to sleep and if I need to. Yeah! That'll, that'll be <laughs> what just I do. Just the shit out of somebody. Are you I don't know. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we don't quite have the num numbers to double up. We can double up in the middle and go single at beginning and end. Okay. If we're doing six so hours. So you would take second. I'll take second. I'll and I'll go second as well then. Right, so you, you do your second first and last. last. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. And then, uh, and then, yeah, just Nothing enough rest to avoid exhaustion. Right, right? We're trying to avoid exhaustion, but not dwell on resting. Okay. Because a hundred miles is very far. Um, who has second watch? 
crap. Perception <laughs> check for me, please. Lucy, <laughs> wake up. Uh, with wake Beatrice. Up. Everything's as fine. Well. I'm saying, like, we have Beatrice as well. So three of us. Advantage. 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 Nothing happened. Perception. You're helping him. Uh, oh. Well, Beatrice was out there as well, oh. but my perception is garbage. And so make that's a roll for not... Beatrice, please. Do you need me to roll or no? Yeah, you need to roll. Oh. Yeah, yeah. All right, hold on. Let me just look up her at stats advantage real quick. Advantage or not an advantage? I missed uh, Beatrice is at advantage. Straight. Straight. Beatrice, Beatrice is at advantage. You guys are, are, are straight. D and D five. Hey, hey that's pretty good. That is an acceptable money. Yeah. Let me check real quick. Hold on one second. So I, I should. I might need to re-roll. Well, actually, that could be Beatrice's roll, but it's trash. It turns out uh, I think my roll. dice do work. Her perception is only plus four, which is my which plan, is Her passive perception is fourteen. Her perception plus skill. To, her, wow, that's like not very good. Uh, we'll say that this was Felix's roll because Felix isn't, you know, particularly perceptive anyway. Uh, his perception, yeah. So Felix got a thirteen. Beatrice is gonna get a twenty. Hell yeah. 20. Uh, and and Beatrice has a mind of her own and can communicate complex. Uh, yes. Okay. I mean, she like obeys my every command, but she does have like, you know, thoughts. And, yep. and like, he also got a 21. Okay. Perfect. Roger that. Even better. So, I will say, Watching my kid. as you're on second watch, the night isn't really quiet. You hear things out in the darkness. The the, 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 the darkness in this forest where you've made camp and brush, save a spot that you can, you could have found. You just feel a presence, you feel eyes watching you. you maybe see a bit of a glint of, of whatever moonlight does get through this dark cloud cover, glinting off of creatures, smaller creatures looking down at you. You occasionally hear a howl of a, a wolf and Maybe another sounds different of a, is that a hound? You hear the growls of bears and the grunting of other creatures rustling around. But nothing disturbs you and the darkness feels to swallow you. Very atmospheric. <laughs> it's into your second watch, lifting you here faintly overhead, the flap of two sets of wings and a low guttural squawk ugh, that booms down of a giant vulture. And you would point that out to Beatrice. Two sets of wings, meaning like there's two giant vultures flying over you. Oh, okay. Noted. My brain's doing weird things. And so you tell Beatrice this, or like us, like you tell us, and is that what you said? Yeah, I don't know are if you, you want to. You're awake. The two Both of us of and, Beatrice awake. Are awake. and Beatrice are Beatrice is sitting there. Yeah, so if I when I heard this, I would I would like like snap and try to get your attention. Yeah, I, you'd have my attention. Okay. I would mentally I would understand what she's trying. I kind of I, mean, I would look at her weird. But then I would t- <laughs> tell you I would idiot. Mentally, I would tell Beatrice to go fly and get a better look and see how okay. far they are. And see if she can avoid being God, seen. Beatrice is gonna get eaten. And Self-check. fly up in the for Beatrice. Yeah. Be like the twenty fourth time. One second. Right. She's keeping her perception roll though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, damn it! I just had it up and I shouldn't have got rid of it. I didn't think I was gonna have to like calculate. Oh, right. 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 Plus three or four, right? Yeah, it should be. I'm just gonna. I'm yeah. gonna write it all down. Her dex is plus it. three, so it's just sure it's just gonna be. It's just a roll plus three then. Yes. Because that's all it is. Unless okay. she's unless it says separately. There's no, no, no. It, adjusting stealth oh, is not okay. is not that different. Uh, let's go with this die. I feel good about this one. Twenty. Yeah. Same for one stealth. Roger that. She flies up and flies out of your range to see through her eyes, and you wait with bated breath knowing how effective these vultures are at killing any birds in this, that, that fly too high. And... You wait. And it's like, she suddenly appears next to you. Woo! Let's go. And she looks distraught. 
her large eyes in this little bluebird form uh, seems to be very shook, and she's kind of shivering a little bit. Her feathers are ruffled. I would keep and, her close. <laughs> and she communicates to you that not only are there two giant vultures flying overhead towards the south, she tells you that there are also a number of sentry vultures and smaller ones around and she narrowly avoided being seen by one and subsequently devoured. And she heard the voice voices calling out between the two riders on these giant vultures. Shadar Kai. Holy shit. And all she could hear was that they would have to be extra watchful because another child is on the way to the princess from the south the following day. What does that mean? Another um, child is on their way to, to the, the princess. princess. From the south. From the south. The following day. And Beatrice relays that information to you in whatever kind of magical arcane way Another she does. Child. Uh, princess? To the princess. I I would relay this to Lofty and say, ah, but I don't know what that means. Why only one child? And what princess? And, and, and what? It does it doesn't make any sense. When 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 this was happening before, they were taking children in swaths. I I have to wonder if this one child is something special. I don't know. Did I miss the plot? What princess? You're asleep. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> uh, I guess for now it, it doesn't sound like we're in any danger of being seen. Very quiet. Yes, yes, we, 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 we can and we will be. We're heading southeast? Southeast. Okay. Is on their way to the princess. From the south. Tomorrow or the next day. From the south or to the south? No, from the south. Interesting. The next day. So presumably there's a child from the south heading north. Yes. Or some direction. To the princess. Right, to some direct. yeah, yes. From the south, this child is coming from the south to some princess. Right. Tomorrow. Or the day that we are going to be in, and or the day we after. Hear tomorrow, anything say. other uh, than it's this current night, so it'll be the yes. following day. Okay. okay, and do okay. Never mind. Scratch that. I mean, we'll let the others know uh, when they awake, and and I'll think about what I might know about princesses and royalty here. Do you know anything? I don't know anything. Do I know anything? History check disadvantage. <laughs> what I know? Anything? Disadvantage. Uh, I would say definitely not. No, it's definitely not. Definitely not. Eat my wound. Oof. Ooh. Thirteen. Oh, I bet you wish nope. you had my help. No, I don't. All you know <laughs> is you, all you've really known is that it's a kingdom. Okay. And you honestly, they are so uh, insular and they hate outsiders that very and very little is taught beyond just what the their activities are on the front line. I, I'll think about what I know. I don't know anything. <laughs> but what the fuck good are you? What, what do you mean? I, I've provided tons of knowledge up until this point. You're going to give me shit for not knowing about a princess? Yeah, I mean, like, that's the first person you should know about. <laughs> Except for the king. What is that supposed to mean? I, I just know that they are blah, 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 all the things that the DM said. You know what? I don't need this. I'm going to wake up Toa, and I'm going to go to bed. Good morning, Felix. It is not a good morning, Toa. Oh, okay. Not... You keep those sentiments to yourself. Oh, is it spooky also, and terrible? Also, Beatrice is going to stay up wait with you. And also... Lofty and I are fighting. I'm going to bed. All right, I'll just keep watch. Toa. Yes? Tell Felix that I hope he has nightmares all night. Um, Go on. Is it clearly like they're making... Like Felix yeah, well, he's standing right yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, um... Felix? I already heard her. <laughs> oh, tell her to be quiet. <clears throat> Don't you mess that along. I'm gonna... Take my watch now. Good night, you two. Good night. I'm gonna just run here. I'm gonna Oh, it's a night, all right. <clears throat> As he starts to lay down, I'll kind of kick dirt wherever he was getting ready to lay. <laughs> no, continue on. You I do. think I am actually going to stay up uh, okay. longer. Okay. You do that, and you all enjoy a long rest. As <laughs> the pitch blackness of night <laughs> turns to it. just a dark gloom. 
not just the cloud cover, but also the the, the the forest that you're in, making it darker, these dense, gnarled pines. And every, you know, several trees, you just see a withered, uh, gnarled tree with just with empty branches. Um, we would also relay the information that we learned. You all wake and, and you relay the information to the group. Yeah. Look, I, I don't know what any of this means. Obviously, there's something to do with the children that they're kidnapping and, and bringing here, but... As I said to Lufty last night, I, I just don't understand why it would be one single child. It makes me think that there's something special about this child, or, or it has something to do with whatever they're using them for. But and either way, we might cross paths. We should keep an eye out. If we could save the child, we should. We absolutely, we absolutely will. Well, well, if they're coming from the south, and we're kind of headed southeast, we may, maybe we can kind of like shadow the road. In, in, in Do you think they'd be on the roll? Did Beatrice say, are they traveling with someone? It wasn't clear. I imagine there will be some sort of escort, and Toa's right. They have to be taking some sort of roads or, or well-traveled paths, and we should stay off them. Just close by. Yeah, it's going to slow our travel a bit, but we remain hidden, and maybe if we cross paths with these people, we can see what's going on and, and, and take action. All right. Wings of the Brave Informations? I what? wake up. What's it? I pick up hey, I pick what's up going on, guys? <laughs> well, we're about to head out. Are you ready? We had some weird stuff happen after you went to bed. I'll, oh, fill, yeah? I'll fill you in as we walk. If you see any, like, kids, you know, give a shout. I mean, if I see pretty much anything that isn't trees or wolves, I'm going to give a shout. <laughs> I'll shout for the wolves, too. Yeah, okay. Okay, I like that. Full base is covered. Uh, I'll pick up Iris. Do you accept me picking you up? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> Very we'll, much so. We'll get in the same formation and continue our, our journey. You do that. You travel about midday, till about midday, and you keep an eye in the sky. And you see the occasional vulture, but you feel like you're, you're getting to a point where you haven't seen too many castles. Uh, they're getting further apart. You feel like this might be a bit of of relative wilderness. And you see that there's perhaps two giant vultures. Maybe it's the same two Shadar Kai that had been uh, patrolling above. But they seem to do a full loop of the valley. And then keep an eye on them. And then after they do a full loop, they continue north. As if perhaps scanning out ahead of whatever caravan is coming. A caravan. And as you make your way through, you arrive at a, a cliff face. It's about a 20 foot drop as you see that there's a gnarled dead tree that grows out of the side and you can, there's plenty of pine tree cover. And you see down ahead now that there's a bend and around the bend as a mountain continues to rise up to your right, you see the road that cuts through this valley. And as soon as you arrive, you smell the stench of death pick up. No. The stench of rotting flesh. And as you watch this, the, it gets stronger and stronger. And then as you walk as, as the smell gets stronger, then you hear from around the bend the creaking and groaning and rattling of wheels. I would send Beatrice to go take a look. Hmm? Through the trees, are we yeah. like in, you know, I don't You're know. the tree cover and you see ravine, you see that there's more trees down below, about 20 feet. Yeah, as long so as there's still tree cover, right? But you're able to see through the tops of the trees. As long as she can stay, river. you know, relatively hidden, I would ha I would send her to go take a look. Okay, so I'll check for her. It's 20 go. again, let's fucking, fucking go. go. Beatrice is just a lordess. <laughs> oh, oh sweet Beatrice. And... With a 19. Oh. 20. Oh, I beat the 19. It get fucked. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Don't hurt oh. me. Oh. <laughs> he didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. Uh, I didn't mean to say that. Felix's balls explode. <laughs> she 
flies back, staying low to the tree line, out of sight of the watchful vultures. And in a flash, she's back. And she messages to you in your mind that there is a procession, a strange-looking carriage on wheels being pulled by a great brute, flanked by six hooded figures, and on either side, two large, two-headed hounds, sniffing, slavering, watchful on either side. And a lone Shadar Kai of well-dressed in the military regalia, driving this brute and holding on to the reins of these two, two large, two-headed hounds. No idea what's, what the, what is, is a carriage, you said? It's a strange-looking carriage. Beatrice didn't really know what it was. So if my numbers are right, it's two large hounds, one military officer, six people. Oh man, those numbers are not very good for us. <laughs> We've killed a dragon, an ancient dragon. Oh, that's nothing. I think we could. How big is the carriage? It's like, it's uh, like a normal. It's modest. I would say that like Beatrice knows from the carriages that she had seen, like the stagecoach that you had all uh, taken to um, Erios, to the front of Erios. Uh, it was a little bit smaller than that. So what? Four people could fit in it. Six yeah, people possibly, could fit in probably it? four would be tight. Yeah. Does it look oh, like smaller? Okay. Does it look fancy? Does it look like royalty would be? It it looks fancy, okay. but there seemed to be some some uh, strange paneling. It was a little bit lower to the ground. Uh, a little bit the the cab was a little bit above the lower ceiling, mm-hmm. uh, and that's why Beatrice wasn't really sure what it was. She's a bluebird. Well, yeah, she's just yeah, I'll shoot it. Well, I mean, well, so be it. Uh, let's let's assume that this is the, 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 the caravan that's that's carrying this child. If we're wrong, we swoop in and just murder all these people. It's going to give away our cover here. I mean, eventually they're going to find the charred remains of, 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 of people in the, the caravan. If there's a child in that carriage, we can't just let him let them ride by. I trust me, I know, Tully. You're preaching in the choir here. I understand that. I want to do everything I can to find these kids, but I also don't want to necessarily just blow our cover on the wrong thing. Maybe we just let them ride slightly past us, and then we pick them off one by one. We're sneaky. Why are we murdering these people? Can't we just get in front of the carriage and set up like a toll or something and be like, oh, not with the birdie bird, the child? They'll swoop down and just, you know. I can't stress enough to you what's going to happen if we have a run-in with these people. They don't like us. They don't want us here. They especially won't like us if we're killing them. Uh, we're trying true. to take their children that are not their children. That There's was... going to be a fight. There, we will, It won't be avoidable. How many bur- How many vultures do we see above us currently? Uh, you see uh, a number, like but they're far, number they're far control, away. Yeah, but like they're crazy. actually pretty distant. This seems to be a pretty uh, relatively unguarded. Mm-hmm. You see, that you get the sense probably you'd be able to deduce they did a loop of the valley to, to take a look and then are scouting up ahead to basically take a look uh, in the direction that the carriage is going. Okay, count them off again for me. How many of these fucks are there? It was 600 figures, two oh, wow. large, two-headed dogs, yeah. one military person driving the caravan and one large one large shrouded brood brood. Some, yeah with a, with a large leather hood hanging down I'm willing to do whatever it takes to rescue these kids and avenge the ones that we can't save I might be able to take care of the six I mean not even that alone would be a huge help can we but we make this decision there's no going back <clears throat> and we have to act quick quick even Caprice, maybe you like jump out and do some kind of act and learn what you can. Maybe you could ask the like, where are you going, or or whatever, and and it'll be you could be like a I don't know, like a circus guy or a, something. Do your <laughs> thing. Cookies and cream. I just. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I hate to just sound like I'm repeating myself over and over again, but if if you do that, there is a chance that they will just kill you. 
I mean, how often is anybody going to see a tiefling around here, let, let alone when the one that looks well, like a, I mean, a traveling circus jester? I can make myself look what I like whatever I want. Yes, yeah, so be it. Make yourself look like one of them, one of those dusk elves. And jump out and be like, I think you should am stop. I, am I familiar enough with the appearance of dusk elves at the, enough at this point to be able to alter self and be able to make <laughs> yes. myself into a Yes, I would say you don't need to roll for that. Yeah. <laughs> look, I... So I trust you. Jesus. And then we'll I jump out you. and kill them or stop them if we need to, but we need to save the child. I, I'm agree with Toa. We don't want to make the wrong decision here. If we can find out what is in the is in this procession or what this procession is about, eh, we, we, we could at least potentially not blow our cover under the wrong circumstances. Do All you, right. Can you handle it? I, I trust you. I... I bought myself into um, what appears to be a middle-aged man. Don't you mean shaboop? <laughs> no, that's only human. Oh, um, I, I bought myself into a dusk elf. But you shaboop into a human. Okay, I understand. And then, uh, 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 why, 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 what, what's my motivation? I just, uh... Motivation? We we're potentially trying to save someone here. Well, no, but you need, he needs to, like, play cool and try to get information. Act like you're like like, a, like a, a military officer, and you need to know what what they're doing, and that you're under orders from the king, and, and just pretend to like show some kind of of decree. I mean, this is a good idea, but I can't really give you much about their uh, socioeconomic just, uh, political structure. Just, yeah, exactly. I don't know. Fucking, uh, 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 you know, just I'll just fucking figure just it out. All right, all right, all right, all right, right. <laughs> uh, I um I try to get in front of the caravan and uh uh put myself on the road. Um, and I'm walking alone as a dusk elf, as a middle-aged man towards the military, military-esque. No, 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 no. I'm oh, just, you fuck! I'm just gonna be in rags. <laughs> I'm, oh, gonna, I'm gonna like fuck get everyone to the tree line. Like, yeah, we hide hit, right, behind, be right behind the yeah, tree line. Yeah, all right. As close as we can be to Caprice while still you know, being hidden. I don't okay. know about this. <laughs> uh, did Kelsey go get the food? No, she's okay. back. Okay. Um, Still so, no ETA on food. Yeah, the uh, they keep pushing at ten minutes, and, and they so love doing it's that. The ten minutes thing, it pushes. They love doing minutes. that. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, in well, the we can time, break whenever we need to. Right? Indian, we want to take a break. We no, 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 no. Let's keep going. Give me more time to think of what to do. Let's keep going. <laughs> Indian and Thai just take forever. Um, you uh, actually make in acrobatics to see how well you down you get, in the, and I guess the, probably the rest of you are all trying to get down on yeah. the ravine. I'll say you could probably take your time. Um, and Caprice will see how quickly you can get down there. Uh, with a 27. Okay, 27. Caprice, you slide <laughs> down like a really cool Marty McFly. And, uh, yes! Like a really and, cool... Uh, but a no middle-aged uh, uh, Shadow that Kai that. Marty McFly. <laughs> you and as you all yet. make your way down the ravine, the smell of rotting hard. flesh gets stronger and stronger and stronger. As you hear the rattling of wagon wheels, obviously just clattering in this rough terrain, and you hear the heavy thuds of footsteps as each footstep of whatever's pulling this carriage gets louder and louder, and you all hide in the brush. I'm gonna need one more cell check from you all. <laughs> and Caprice, I'm going to need you to time. do a from all of us. Oh uh, yeah, from all of you. As you hide in the brush. I don't even think it's worth twisting, honestly. I don't. I don't think it is. I think it's just one of those. I'm good. I got an 18. 19. 19. A magic can go one. 18. 18. Okay. Four. Shut <laughs> up. I'm How is that even possible? I'm I'm one. One. You're like, okay, Caprice is gone. Ow, my foot. <laughs> oh, my toe again. <laughs> it's the same toe, which is why I'm it's yelling. <laughs> As the rest of you <laughs> hide around, uh, uh, hide the you you step out into the road, Caprice. Yes, disguised, and you hear rattling, and now you see shadows cast on the far side of this uh, of this road, down on some of the trees, as you see a massive shape looming and lumbering as the, the ground shakes with each step. And from around the this bend, you see an incredibly macabre procession as a massive hooded figure dressed in leathers, bits of gross gray skin peeking out from slight uh, 
uh, patches in the clothing pushes what looks like it's not a wagon it's not a carriage looks like a hearse oh, as no. it oh, is fuck. pushing it and flanking on either side are three hooded figures in those same gross oh, leathers moving around weird. and you see now where there are gloves there are long claws ripping through as they shamble same grayish whitish greenish flesh in each patch as they march on either side heads down hood shrouding faces and they seem to be of different dimensions different size one's larger the other seems to be of a standard humanoid shape and the other one you actually see as there's a bit of a bulge in the back uh, and, but for the most part they seem to be of the same general gait and then you see a dusk elf of ashen gray skin of 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 a, of a lighter gray hair it seems to be a female or actually a dark hair a dark black hair apologies um, a, a light gray skin piercing violet eyes that uh, it's impossible to miss as she holds on to the reins of two massive uh, black hounds, each with two heads, sniffing and slavering massive tongues, huge muzzles filled with sharp teeth, bulging with musculature that does not seem quite natural. As they sniff around and are, are <laughs> growling, as they're air, they, 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 they just constantly hear the loud sniffing. And you see this dusk elf, and she's not heavily armored, but seems to be wearing some kind of vestment. Perhaps the robes of a spellcaster. As, oh, no. as the she holds onto the reins, oh, uh, and uh, you make a perception check for me. Yeah, I will happily do that with my dice that will roll a 20. That's not a 20. Close. That's a 2, but without the 0. The yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Perceptionis? Yep. 9. 9. And the smell as you stumble out into the tree line, out of the tree line, is putrid. And you see a strange bucket to the side of the driver's seat. But there's a great number of flies swirling around this massive, more of a large basket. Uh, and it's a bunch, it's, and the smell is overwhelming. You stumble out, and I'll give you a second before they have a chance to react. I will, um, uh, seeing all of this, uh, uh give a good gulp and, uh, just be like, oh, wow, uh, oh, wow. Uh. All right. Uh, let's do this, Caprice. Come on, you got this. No problem. I'll cast Enhance Ability on myself. My man! Uh, and I'm going to give myself advantage on all Charisma checks. Ooh! Um, let me just make sure that I know how that works. Because <laughs> that's the first time I've... You... I think you choose an actual skill. Yes. Uh, I'm choosing... This is stat, right? Uh, I, don't know. I believe it's Fox's Cunning. Uh... I can take right a look here. Oh, uh, Fox is cunning. The target has advantage. Oh, no, no. It's Eagle Splendor. The target has advantage on charisma checks. Oh, you do choose the. Wow, that's busted. Good luck. Um, <laughs> wow, that's busted. Good luck. <laughs> and looking like my elderly, ragged self, uh, I will say. Um, uh, 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 hello there. Uh, hello. hello. Uh, uh, thank goodness. Uh, <coughs> thank goodness you're, you're, you're on the path. Uh, uh, please, please stop. Uh, help. Help, I need I need assistance. What language are you speaking? Elvish. Okay. My man. <laughs> Derek, uh, uh. Uh, make a deception check for me. Is that charisma based? It or is. is it? That is the damage. Uh, both 15, uh, so that's going to be a deception, you say? Yes. Uh, that'll be a tw uh, 29. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. She, you say that. And there's a hesitation as she pulls back on the reins, and she uh, she kicks a lever out in front of her, 
and you see this strange mechanism shoot out and smash the massive uh, brute in the back of the legs, stopping, uh, causing the, the hearse to grind to a halt. And as soon as these hounds uh, see you and notice you, they immediately are tugging at these chains that uh, that this that this elf is um, is is holding on to, and in an instant you see a crashing blast of Eldritch magic. Three arcs shoot all alongside of you, but none strike you. And you see the uh, the gloved hand of the Shadow Kai as she stares at you and says, what are you doing at this leg of the Widow's Road? I'm sorry, I uh... I'm going to, as soon as I see the crash around me, I'm going to start uh, looking past her. And in, in into the distance, I'm I'm I'm, I'm oh. I've gotten lost in the woods. I I don't know where I am. I I I can't <laughs> see a thing. I I just heard you. Uh, 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 it sounds like you're 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 you you've got perhaps a wagon there. Uh, I I need transport. I need assistance. Please. Um, make a deception check at disadvantage. Oh. As the hounds, come on, baby. No, 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 it's just one. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I'll just roll one. Yeah. Wait. Oh, because he's normally my save. Good call. Uh, Good call. nineteen. This is a battle of wits here. Um. And uh, the hounds are barking and yes, sl- and slavering. And they are—you can hear them. It's just—it's in your—it's in your ears, echoing as 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 she steps off the driver's seat with a graceful hop, and she kind of lurches forward as the hounds are scraping, desperate to get to you, and she continues to follow behind them, and she says, "What village are you from? There's no civilization here for miles, old man." I, I call no village my home. I I was transported here. I was transported. I I, I am but a simple traveler, and I I, I don't even know where it, I am. Right? Can Can you tell me the nearest village? And are we on a path? Uh, uh, can, can Can you point me in the right way? Who Who are you? What spell level uh, is your is your illusion thing? Uh, well, the altar self is the mask of Mombasi uh, that I that I got. Okay. And the um, enhanced ability is a second level. So, what thing. is the what what level is altar self? What spell? Level? Uh, that yeah, I can Fourth tell you right a na- uh, right away. It's not that. Uh, no, it's second. It's second. Wow. This is very bad. As the as you see as the uh, the massive brute uh, is head leaning forward as he had stopped and all of the figures on the side hood stopped alongside it. And as this meeting lingers, the howls and barks of beasts, of these hounds, of each, all four heads staring at you, barking louder and louder as you start to see as there's a bit of tension and movement in all seven of these lurched hooded figures. And you see from one a long putrid rotting tongue lit down as saliva as if it's lapping up hungrily. And a glance, but I move my And she just narrows her eyes at you and she raises her hand in a glow of this dark violet magic, she casts a spell magic on ah! How far away is she from us? Uh, I would say, I don't know, where, where, where were you guys? How far is the tree line from the room? Yeah, I mean, that's really the question. How close could we have gotten? I'd probably say, like, probably like 40 feet. Okay, we're probably like, yeah, we're probably 50 or 60 feet away. Oh. But maybe no like problem. a little so, so we wouldn't be able to hear any of this stuff. You'd be able to hear it here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, 40, 60 feet away. Yeah, that's, not, that's not that far. No. It, it would be like, you know, imagine, I mean, that's only... Yeah, yeah it's not that far. But, but we're not, like, right up on And also the acoustics of this place, it's catching on a lot of the ravine behind it's you, and like, it's echoing. It's quiet, right? Yeah, it's and it's woods. quiet as the woods. And Can I ready, can I ready something? Same. I will say, as you see this burst of magic, and you see Caprice's dusk elf form completely drop. Oh, 
And so you have a moment to ready your so I will un- use my feline's grace and charge straight forward, and I will yell out, Caprice, what is this? Get back to the caravan, you imbecile. The daughter of the pharaoh of Saket demands it. I was just having a little fun. I... Well, I don't find it funny. I do not have time for your pathetic, peasant ways. I thought, I thought, you know... Shut your mouth. Or I will shut it for you, yes, and I will st- I will like stomp up to him, and I will push him down with my claws. That is an order, Caprice. Yes, yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, uh, your highness. And I will turn towards the dusk elf. My apologies, my servants. In impotence or impetuousness. Okay, make a performance check or intimidation check. Your preference. Performance or what? Intimidation. Uh, 16. 16? Mm, not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad. Uh, with that, she uh, she looks at you and there's a And I am covered in all of You jewels. are covered in all of your jewels, absolutely. All of your jewels. And <laughs> she seems to make no motion against you. But then you see the chain in her hand start to slip as she says, I don't know who you are, but your servant has to pay. And she drops the chains. I will calm emotion. As the hounds leap out and begin to attack and the magic washes over everything. I mean, we're going to take a break. <gasps> oh, oh, we have to the thing now. Ready? On one, two, three, yep. oh, or three, yep. two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Full, Full metal, metal alchemist. alchemist. Full, Full metal, metal alchemist. In Lord of the Rings. <laughs> no! You're the worst! That's going to look so good when it's edited. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't believe you've never done that. All right, so I believe that where we picked up was that so, we had charmed the... Uh, there's... Well, no, she's going to <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm decision. not going to, because I was attempting to do that before. Our, our, our military let friend the, let loose whatever. the chains. Let loose the dogs of war. Yeah, but... Uh, who let the dogs out? So, so she let line. it go. She let it go, oh, and then you said I cast calm emotion. Well, no, so I wanted to cast calm emotion before she let it oh, okay, go. Okay, so okay. if she let it go, I would like to cast something else instead. Okay, so if you're going to cast something, we'll roll initiative for just the dogs. Sounds good. And oh, and, that's and, that's great. May so, I join? Uh, yes, because you're on the ground. So the three okay. of you will be will be uh, rolling for initiative. It's the four of you now at this point. <laughs> the dogs win initiative and Caprice eaten before she does oh, oh, oh. Uh, so, What's up, dog? Hell no. Um, <laughs> oh, to no, set the scene, the the dusk elf looks at <laughs> you with their piercing there, violet uh, eyes, uh, seemingly uh, seeing through the facade, if you're rolling quite well, uh, and letting the chains go as the dogs leap forward towards Caprice um, as... Uh, as this happens, we're going to uh, have a roll-off between, uh, we'll say Iris and the dogs for now. Oh shit, it's a roll-off. Uh, and Caprice. Mm-hmm. Uh, mean just for initiative in general? Just for initiative right now, yeah. Roll. Yeah. I did. No, uh, thinks the uh, whole so, uh, 20 to 25? He's not rolling. Six, oh, 20 now. Look at this. 25? 15 to 20? 17. <laughs> Where does it go? Uh, 17. Uh, oh wow. The dog's got an 18. <gasps> uh, uh uh oh! <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> as they use to get your leg as a shoot toy. Uh, so we'll put monsters one here. <laughs> monsters one are the hounds. Uh, then it's Iris. They're Capri- Iris and Caprice, right? Yeah, yep. Caprice, Caprice and, and Iris. Caprice and Iris. And so as this happens, the the dogs lunge forward. Let me roll for her as well. So just uh, like for your information, seeing the dogs begin to lunge, I would begin my trek forward. So okay. whatever that let's roll. Let's, let's, uh, we'll have this round, and we'll, everyone, then you guys will roll for initiative. How about yeah, that? Yeah, that sounds great. That. So for now, it's just this, and then she is, she'll be the big oh bad, because I don't have enough monster. Oh literal fucking god. Uh, so the dogs <laughs> leap forward, and Caprice is actually in front of Iris. Iris is like, I, I, I imagine, like, kind of from behind. Like, were you like, Oh, I behind? wanted to step out in front of him. Okay, so you're, yeah, so you're in front of him. Oh, and... <laughs> Toe is dead. Uh, so they're going straight for Caprice, though. Whatever it was, she had whatever work had at least not gotten them on you. They are lunging for Caprice. Uh, can you move the death dogs up? 
and they're going to do four attacks with pack tactics. Oh, uh -oh. sweet Jesus! This is far. <laughs> and back here is the carriage with the big guy and prisoner. And the six hooded figures. Ooh, I'll, um, I'll use my reaction, reaction on question. one of those attacks. Uh, uh, I guess that's how the, this works. One uh, is going to be a nineteen. Uh, I'm going to. Oh. <clears throat> On that first one that is a 19, yeah. I'll say, um, uh, all dogs go to heaven, I'm just saying. Uh, cutting words. <laughs> I'm just saying. He needs to subtract 1d8 from that. Uh -huh. Unless you roll a 1. You, you, roll, you roll the 1d8. I do? Well, shit on me. Shit on me. Shit Two. on me. Okay, that's, that, he misses. 17. So he misses? Yes. Okay. So he misses, and the next one is literally... Oh, no, 17 is meter to beat it. He hits. So he does hit. Damn! Um, the second one uh, is two twos. Uh, misses. So you are... You do get bit by one head and the other. And we'll just roll for the, the other one. Pack attack, because that's going to be a 20... Yeah, 23. And then that's going to be a two and a three. So a one head of each dog. You're able to, to dodge it as you get up from Iris's uh, uh, act as you're able to uh, do that. But two the of the one heads I tried to you. prevent. <laughs> um, can, I, can I use my uh, my pendant and my reaction to have the one dog uh, attack the other one? Oh, you mean, yeah. How did I even word that? <laughs> Probably, uh, yeah, it that's... is, I believe it's a wisdom saving throw. Oh, wisdom saving throw. Roger that. A DC 17. It fails. <laughs> So, um, as you do that, you channel the medallion around your neck. Brand new. As the Brand eye new. of Osiris flashes out and uh, blinds the dog as if there's sand in its eyes, and it lets out a, a yelp and lunge, but its, it's momentum That's is there. It lunges that. forward, and we're going to say number one chomps into number two. Uh, and so we're going to do, this is going to be DD for the death dogs. And then uh, it's going to chomp, and that is going to be the one head is going to be some damage here. I'm going to, as I do it, I'm going to call out, no, you will attack him. Bam. And Got him. he chomps in and tear, he lets out a yelp as he tears in, looking confused. For one head, the other head still leans in. And so only one attack. And I'm going to turn and I'm going to make direct eye contact with the woman, knowing that I control the dog. She oh nice and she looks at you and she she seems surprised at these these strangers who, who looked wildly different not even Korvakian uh, as they as they lunge out and uh, the other one is only going to do uh, eight points of piercing damage to you Caprice and oh. And I'm going to need you to make a con saving throw as these sl these, this, this horrible disease mouths on this dog uh, tears into you. Is this uh, poison? It's against disease. It's against, well, I'm, I have an advantage on um, saving throws against poison. Poisoned effect? Yes, it's a poison. Dis okay. Uh, so that'll be a con saving throw. Yep. That'll be a 19. 19, he passes. You're able to resist that. Uh, and with that, it is uh, Caprice's turn. Oh, um... <clears throat> uh, I'm, sc I'm screaming because I just got my leg bit and it hurts. Uh, Ow! <laughs> I fuck! It. How do you like it? <laughs> I will cast uh, Thunder Wave. Why not? Uh, that's actually amazing. Fuck. <laughs> That's actually incredible. Oh, that uh, all right, so they need to make a constitution <laughs> saving throw, um, DC 17. High is 16. Okay, so both of them are going to suffer some thunder damage, and they're both going to get knocked back uh, 10 feet. They both, oh, you hear four yelps <laughs> as they uh, get blasted back. And they both uh, As you hear a, uh, his... Caprice barks it louder and louder and louder. The final bark, as it barks, and they get more blasted. Thirteen points of thunder damage to them both. To both of them, that's hilarious. Twenty-six, thirteen. Roger that. As they get blasted, Iris, you're up. I'm going to look to her, and I'm going to raise my hands towards the sky. Do you think a woman of my stature would venture into this dark land unprotected? It would be in your best interest to stand down, and I'm going to cast Dawn. Oh! Ooh! <laughs> Roger that. And so the blazing pillar of like a radiant um, summer sun, uh, the sun on the desert, and you can feel the, the oppressive warmth of it um, as it shoots down from the sky. And uh, they have to make all of them 
have to make a uh, constitution saving throw. Okay, so we're going to do spells, uh, get wrecked. Do dusk elf, and then we're going to do uh, one, two, three, <laughs> six, and then we're going to do one. Sorry, I'm just getting set up here. I should have done that ahead of time. Uh, so a, a the clouds open up just briefly, and a massive beam of dawn uh, shoots down on all of them. Yep. Roger that. Uh, so she's going to make a... What is it? Con? Yes. Roger that. She is going to get a 17. Fails. Uh, dog's going <gasps> to fail. Uh, other dog's going to fail. Wait, what What did you say it was? 17. Oh, no, 17 succeeds. Okay, so she's going to succeed. The dogs fail. So is it big enough for all of them? Uh, yeah, it's 60 feet. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. But it's a cylinder. 40, 40, 50. So everybody except these last two. Yeah. Roger Perfect. that. Um, okay. So, or you can choose not no, to do the dogs. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the beam blasts I down. I step on yeah. it. Uh, yes. uh, so you're getting all of the, the, the hooded figures? All no, the all but the last Okay, yeah. so we're going to do the one at the lead. Uh, oh, that is going to be uh, 14 fails. And we're going to do just one at a time. Uh, so one, two. Uh, so the uh, on the right back it right so passes good. and then we're gonna do the other two um i feel great uh, both of the the, the, the middle ones succeed mm-hmm. and the beam a uh, blast down and singes away and you see as uh the the dogs let out a yelp as well as the uh the shatter kai and she covers her eyes but then you see as the light burns away the leathers and you hear a loud hissing from the the six as the as the, uh, the, the massive brute lives, as the hoods all fall back, as they shriek, and you see now the bloated, brutalized corpses with long, slavering tongues, oh one God. massive, uh, reanimated ogre with sharp teeth and a massive putrid tongue, tongue, and you see uh, two human what looks like reanimated humans, and then you see what looks like a larger reanimated orc, and then another reanimated air cocra, its wings snapped oh, off. No. Empty Ew. eyes, slavering tongues, and so you can flip all those those tokens over. <gasps> I as want to do it. The, they're the, too. Well, no, they're, they're all, I just wanted oh, to, okay. to, to hide. The, as ghouls, these 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 ghouls Holy all, shit. Sh- all shriek I'm out. I'm trying, I'm very excited. As the beam, as they all seem to be affected by the sunlight. So it's very apparent that this dawn has done, is effective. And so yes. anyone that failed takes 30, and anyone that uh, succeeded takes 15. So the dogs take 30. Radiant. 30. Oh, radiant. Roger that. Yeah. Uh, oh, Nikki, I the love one, you. Uh, I love you. Pound number one. Uh, lets out a yelp as the as his fur singes and pops and he looks up as the, the the divine energy of Anubis, despite being trapped wherever he is, is still channeled through you. You are able to call on it, even from that godless place. And the uh, hound number one lets out a yelp and shriek and collapses to the ground dead. Whoa! Oh. I will um, not one. one. I'm keeping eye contact with this uh, uh. with this elf. I will say, stand down. Three, uh, so three, thirty. Yeah, I'll, I'll then, let you. Uh, I'll yeah, let you yeah, finish sorry, your, sorry. your math, and then I'll say what I need to say. And then six is fifteen. And then six. Damn, I'm a little far away. It's a little shame. It's and a uh, she's also going to take fifteen. Yes. We're taking okay. spell sniper. As the radiant beam, That's true. Uh, and she's being burned by the energy. It wouldn't apply see, in this situation. You get the sense Double that the it's not just the that that. That for the for the ghouls, uh, it's not just the the radiant energy; it is the sunlight affecting them. But she's just being burned by the radiant energy, and she's adjusting to the sunlight. I was more just trying to be like oh, imposing and like wreathed in sunlight. And, like, Roger that. Intimidate you take an advantage after that. I love that. I love Did that. Did two survive somehow? Yes, yeah. two's alive. It took Natural the same... twenty. You said Whoa. intimidation. Um, it should have taken the thunder wave and then whatever she does. No, one bit the other. One with the other. Oh, what? Twenty-seven. Woo! Twenty-seven. Okay. Money. She um. Hmm. How would she take that? How would she? 
I would see how she takes this. Uh, as soon as she takes damage, burning in the light, she looks at you, and uh, as the sun beams down, you see as, the, as it singes her skin, and she backs, uh, she had been full of bravado, and as soon as you boom that out, and she sees what's happening, you see her poof into a cloud of shadowy mist and fog, and disappear. As uh, she uses Misty Escape, uh, and uh, will uh, pass her turn. As, as she poofs uh, very clearly uh, frightened in this moment. Uh, at this point, however, the uh, the, 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 the ghouls are all, boo- the, the, the massive ogre snaps off the, uh, the, 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 what is it called? The, um, on a horse or something like a harness? It's like yeah, a the, yoke, right? The, yeah, the yoke, yoke. Or the harness and snaps off of it and, uh, looks forward ravenous. And you see that one of the ghouls, uh, uh, it now unfreed their, their master all disappeared. Uh, one reaches into the, the basket and pulls out a rotting human leg. Chum. Gnarls into it and chomps into it, bucket. and then they all turn ravenous at li- uh, ravenously <laughs> at you. I need everyone to roll for initiative. Twenty-one, chum bucket. I got twenty-one. Twenty-one. So uh, rather that. Uh, Toa witnessed it. I didn't. Felix. Toa. Seventeen. 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 Uh, which ties with Capri- uh, Iris. Uh, Iris I'm or sixteen. Toa oh yeah, sixteen. Oh, tied with Caprice. Uh, I'll go second because I'm later. Okay. Capriccio. I was a 13. A 13. Great. So, ah, big bad. Got it. All the way down here. And so, sucks, boink, sucks. boink, boink, boink. That could uh, be your next character. What do you, 13. Right. And then I need to roll for the ogre ghoul. I don't know what that is. I want to play halfling sometime. I feel like I want to just be a little You could be a good halfling. Yeah, it'd be great. You get to re-roll once. Yeah. Uh, you got 21? Natural luck or whatever. I got a 21, yeah. It's so good. Oh, get the fuck out of here, Mike. Layer action is, go- is over. Okay, I can deal with that. Wait, he... Oh, boy. And I, can then, deal with, I can deal with that. Uh, I can deal with that. Uh, and then at the... Uh, uh, in between Iris and Lufty are the uh, humanoid ghouls. Oh, great. As you see now, their jagged teeth for the one that isn't a beak. <laughs> as this empty, massive owl eye sockets... Uh, uh, are, 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 are ravenously uh, trying to run forward. Their claws are extended as these horrible reanimated abominations uh, uh, lunge forward, uh, causing the uh, the hearse to shake and creak, but is the, 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 the sunlight does not harm it. And their master has disappeared who knows where. Uh, with that, uh, our round begins as the ogre- Wait, um, oh, they didn't I have know, a turn? I know, Was that? They didn't have a turn? Who, the, the, the big bad? No, the monsters. No, 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 that was part, so they they had not been told to be uh, commanded yet. So basically okay. they, they didn't go. So uh, now basically we're starting initiative with just the four, uh, big hounds, uh, Shadar Kai, Caprice, and, and, and Iris. And so now we're starting again. Um, and with that, the ogre lunges forward and is going to- Did they take uh, damage at the start of their turn? Or they, they, oh, yeah. At the end of their turn. Ah. At the end of their turn, Rush of that. Um, so they're going to go and uh, charge forward. Right? How far? Uh, uh, 40 feet. You might be okay here if they don't move. Yep. Okay. okay. And with that, he takes both of his claws and lunges forward, one close at you, uh, Iris, and then the other close at you, Caprice. His sharp claws are, this seems to have some sickening disease on it. Boy, do I love our cast. I'm gonna use range. my reaction again and have him target the dog. Okay, um, let's see if he fails that. Con, uh, con saving throw? Wisdom saving throw. Wisdom, oh wow. Oh, I love that. I love that a 13. So much. <laughs> As he, the one at you swings forward and rakes, I don't know how this dog survives this. Uh, no, I don't think so. There's yes. actually no way. Uh, as the ogre uh, takes his claw and the dog is not expected to be blasted back by Caprice's barking, it rends into it and just completely eviscerates. You see its gut spill out as, as, uh, as, 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 as it lets out a yelp. And so both of the death dogs are dead. How about that? 
<laughs> How about that, the DM <laughs> says? Uh, you you gave me this item! I did! No, I mean, th- this is the point of that stuff like that. Do you regret choices? Uh, no, I think that's really fun. Uh, the <laughs> other one is going to lunge forward to, gra- to slash at you, I Caprice. Um, and with that, it does hit. It's going <clears> to <throat> rake into you uh, for a claw. And okay. then you're before, on before you resolve this, uh, do I feel There's like I could uh, uh, cut in words this again? Uh, does, does there have any rules if, about undead or like it being? Uh, no, just just if I yell dead, something to fuck I'll it up, uh, could I get it under seventeen based on its roll? Oh, um, it currently a roll. it got a sorry, uh, it got a uh, seventeen plus six is twenty three. I'll let it hit. It slashes oh, wow. into you, dealing sixteen. What's the die? Is that anything? That, that is where the missy, missy lady was. Yeah. Sixteen plus three. Is 19 points of slashing damage. Also, there is that Mystic green skate. to just put a mark there. It's different than Mystic Step. So she blinks out and you have ah, no idea. Fuck. As it rends into you and you feel this sickening, horrible, creeping disease uh, pouring into you, I need you to make a, uh, a con saving throw for me. Uh, is it against poison? Uh, I would say it's a, so that's not against poison effect. No. Okay, so just regular style. Yeah. yeah. So cool. Constitution saving throw. Uh, I will enjoy a 16. 16, that's enough. As you feel uh, this uh, this disease uh, that is uh, trying to paralyze your muscles, you resist it. And uh, with that is one more attack as it is not in range. It's gonna lunge towards with this massive maw of teeth is over, just okay, chomps down on you, down. Iris. I'm coming! That's the natural <laughs> Negate it? Uh, she can't. Can't. She reacts my reaction. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize it had three attacks. Nobody did. <laughs> Nobody One, did, except two, for my that fucking. Except for me. It's okay. It's I, already, I already rolled for my, my dong, so I don't take some damage. Yeah. Dong. Oh, dong. <laughs> Here comes the dong, bitch. <laughs> Ten. Ten. Here comes the dong. I was going to say, the night is darkest before the dong. Seventeen. Uh, Who's plus getting 16, hit? 16, 17 plus 16 Iris. Oh, wow. I'm 30. blown away. That was this is the first time uh, anyone else in this campaign 40, has gotten critical three? to me. 43? 43 plus... So that's like half your life, right? Yeah. 40, 45 points. Like we have to have similar health. Or 46 points of, of, slap, of, of piercing damage as the it chomps into you. And... Uh, you need to also make a con saving throw as you feel its bite is also horribly diseased. I fail. Uh, uh, you fail, and uh, your maximum HP is reduced by that. Yikes. Nice. As, oh, as you what? feel this horrible, feverish, ghoulish disease seep into you. So how do I do that on D&D Beyond? Uh, uh, max health modifier. Yes. Yeah, yeah you I, do I minus. I override mass You just hit minus something. Minus yeah, so for three. max health modifier, you minus and then whatever the okay. damage you touch. And that is the over 46. Chart. 46, yep. Uh, do they have to roll anything at the end of their turn? I'm so confused. Just I think I screwed this. Yes, they have to. Okay. They have to roll a, a con saving throw. Roger that. Oh, um, you know what? Why just, am the, I just the ogre. Uh, I'm gonna take that back, Nikki. One. He should have been disadvantaged too against all his attacks. Because of the radiance. Because of he didn't sound. Yeah. You might he roll should. another twenty. He, I'm going to just reroll. I apologize. I'm going to reroll that. Well, by the damage. the damage too. Well, yeah. no, just roll the yeah. roll the other thing. See what happens. I roll the other dice. I get a four. There you go. And so you will miss Rooney. That is going to miss. I apologize for taking up the time. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm maintaining the game. You never have to apologize for not time. doing damage. I'm going to roll, and that still hits you, Caprice. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> As it runs into you, as the bite misses, uh, the sunlight so very good. clearly affecting this. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's fine. I rolled, yeah, I rolled no, my con. Got I, to I apologize. Uh, with that, um, and then con, con. seventeen. You're pretty beefy boys. 
Uh, so it's going to be a 19. Ooh, so, uh, so it'll take 15 points of damage. 15 Ooh, points of radiant damage. I killed another 30. That is uh, fucked. As the, the, sin, the, 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 the smell of rotting flesh is, is in your nostrils, and now it's burning rotting flesh. And it's mm-hmm. absolutely putrid as it's starting to sizzle and pop, and it's like... Sizzle and pop like as, as it leans in, you almost get like... Uh, Slapped by its tongue as it misses its bite attack. It's this incredibly Grrr. unnatural tongue, uh, taking another thirty points of damage. Okay, let's drop. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, if I, if we're saying seven and a half at diagonals, right, Rich? So I can do four of them to get thirty feet. Uh, yes. Yeah. Is that pretty? Yeah. So four of them gets me thirty feet. Yeah. Right. Because fifteen, fifteen. Good. Math works out. Uh, as as I see this happen, and I, I begin to charge out of the brush uh, at, a, at a at a diagonal that is thirty feet long, uh, I say I'm yelling out loud. Uh, Iris has the right idea. This is perfect. Time to take it for a spin. And as I, I uh, plant my feet. It's almost as if there's a, like a clock underneath of me. A, a transmutation circle begins to appear underneath of my feet. The 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 light coming up from the transmutation circle is blinding white as I cast Sunbeam, and I target this giant creature. I'm gonna need that creature to make a con 17 saving throw. That's gonna fail. A wonderful Phoenix. Creatures uh, that live re-roll. in the shadows should fear the light. I'm gonna reroll yeah. these two. Uh, so that's going to be 8, uh, 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 20, 21, 22, 30. Uh, plus 5 is 35. So 35 points of radiant damage. Uh, and if it failed the con saving throw, it's blinded. It did. As you uh, hold out your dagger and you let forth from my, a, from my hand, so, like radiant light shoots uh, forth. A in a flash beam. of light in this dark, gloomy day, now being pierced by a massive sunbeam, and now a streaking beam. It arcs out and singes it, blast this ogre from the side. It lets out a horrible groan as it blasts its face. And you see now uh, the side, the flesh starts falling off as his jaw is exposed. Ooh. And you see a, a an empty, uh, an empty hole. And from my hand, how many damage? I'm sorry. Uh, 35 radiant. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then from my hand, hand yeah. there is a moat of sunlight that sheds light in a 30 foot radius <gasps> from me. Roger that. Did we take damage from Dawn? If you're in it, yes. yes. Oh, what's the rate? I might be at no. 60. I might be at it's a, it's a, can you put, it's a spear. Can you put the point where the middle would be? Because that would help. No, it's, it's way back. That's 60. It was in the middle, right? So it cut off. It cut off there. So yeah. wherever thirty is there. So yeah, it's there. It's here. And then go out this way. And d- you said. I think I'm outside place. of it, like uh, barely. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, you yeah. Are. You are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's there. Oh. Okay. Yeah. We're good. All right. Oh, it's so a thirty foot radius. Was sixty feet. Holy shit. Yeah. Forty feet high. Fuck. What the fuck? I guess I did that as Sarnax once, I I almost killed everybody. Oh yeah, you absolutely obliterated things as Sarnax. Oh, but I almost killed my friends. Uh, (laughs) Poopy. Wow. That's my turn. As I am, I I am also uh, mimicking the iris and and, and radiating uh, sunlight. (laughs) Yeah, I I was was following in her footsteps. That is massive. Uh, This is a high level spell. (laughs) And whatever is in the carriage will say at the very least is behind full cover. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I think it's reasonable. Totally up to you. Oh, that's unreasonable. Uh, I got a pee. With that. Uh, as the beam, as this ogre is blasting, is singing, its flesh is singeing away and is absolutely putrid. Uh, with that, it's Capri- uh, Caprice's turn. Oh, shit. Um, how's this fuck did looking? He's a beefy boy. He's taking some damage, but he's a beefy boy. He's he just a beefy guy. Um. <clears throat> I will go, uh. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Iris. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And, um... You, you fucking ogre, you, you blind idiot, you look like a dropped pie. Uh, he needs to make a wisdom saving throw. He's a, a music vicious mockery. Just to, to, yeah, just to make fun of him. Um, just to look this up. That's good. 
Where the heck was I? Oh, I'm the disease. DC 17 wisdom saving throw. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure that I see this. Yeah, yeah, take time. Okay. Roger that. Um, uh, whiz, you said? Yep. Whiz, whiz, whiz. That's gonna be 15. He fails. He'll have disadvantage on his next attack roll. Okay. And he takes, ooh, that's good money, uh, nine points of psychic damage. Nine points. Uh, as he, as, oh, let's see if he's immune to that. Um, uh, with my thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, I give uh, uh, Iris inspiration. Nine points. Finally paying me some attention. Uh, as you do that, and you see that despite him, his, some of his brain is leaking out of his ear uh, as, as the skull is cracked. Uh, it still is affected by this bardic magic, and it uh, lets out And with that, it's Toa's turn. Oh, it's my turn. Um, I will... Uh, Say, Iris, I'm coming! Uh, and I will... Chosen one! Chosen one! Chosen one! Chosen I'm coming. one. Uh, what's my speed again? It's pretty fast. Yeah, it's pretty fast. I was going to guess 35 or 40. And technically, he's there. That's melee range, right? It's a large creature. Yep. So yep. please beat the shit out of him. Uh, I will proceed to beat the shit out of him. Yes! So I was preparing to battle trance before any of this started. So That's so fine. I see yeah. that that yep. was during yep. the surprise yep. round. I can. Battle trance. Uh, okay, I'll allow fine. it. So then... <laughs> I will go in and just recklessly swing in twice, uh, power attack style. Um, Ooh. Roll a an ninety one and kill Iris. This <laughs> <laughs> is so reckless. <laughs> Holy sh! What the fuck is this? So they're color coded together. So uh, these. Those are the attacks for those dice. Seven. You roll a fucking monster attack there. Yeah, but that's only a 40. This is for, for Wind Fury proc to see if I proc. I so, think I'm sad. I don't know yeah, what's it's happening. Not, it's not great. It's not Your great. turns never make any sense. Richard's turns never just, make any sense no matter words. what You're campaign like, Well, right. you know, yeah. all I have to do is discombobulate the, the yeah. fuckinator, and uh, all of a sudden, no, it's 173 these damage. Are, these are my two advantage attacks. Right. Right. Tell these are attacking for what you're Yeah, it's fine. When we get a menacing attack, I'll take another 400 actions. That's how we do it. Power attack means that I subtract five from my to hit. So instead of plus 11, it's plus six. So uh, my lowest is a uh, I mean, 22. Oh, 22? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, no, that'll hit. Okay, so... Wind Fury lets you attack again? Yes, and it gives me an extra attack at promise. It that is not. awesome. Yeah, it's very good. We should just design our own D&D source book. Hey, yeah. Uh, and now I get to re-roll these shit. two dice. Thank you. That'll do. Uh, so oh, that death, is death 9. Is it'll have been 12 and 15. Or like a dead um, hound. Wait, I mean... 15, 15 plus 40 <laughs> is what? what? 55. Is that right? 15 plus 40 is 55. That can't 15 plus be right. 40. So these are my dice. How did you get plus 40? Because uh, when I'm raging and my plus to it's my, so my plus to attack is seven, then raging makes it plus 10. Power attack adds a plus 10 on top of that. So every hit is is basically the dice the die roll plus twenty. So it's oh. these dice. That's two attacks. That's for that's for two attacks. Yes. Okay, so I was gonna two, say why so am I playing a wizard? Me, I'm, how much I'm I'm so, so what was it? Eating this over. Fifty five. Fifty five. Over 55. two attacks is fifty five. Fifty five. You smash and you hear the loud sickening crack of rib cage as you see its large gut in those sick leathers and you smash it out and you hear the crack of the rib cage as its intestines rotting putrid spills out of its gut and it looks like an abomination from World War. Fox wants to know what kind of barbarian he is. Toe is a fucky barbarian. <laughs> I am a uh, <laughs> ancestral guardian. 50 uh, what? Sorry, I'm sorry. 50 what? 55. 55. I, I imagine that when you hit him with your uh, your... Um, club, right? Yeah, totem. No. Why why do I play any kind of caster if you can do that kind of damage? Yeah, it's like punching a bean bag. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's it. That's it. Okay. okay. Uh, I don't have yeah. You do that. And he's um, blind too, so he's still probably up. the nuts. Yeah. He's up. Yeah. He's up. I'm gonna cast uh, it's my turn. Right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna cast spiritual weapon down on top of his head. Get it. Action. Get All it. Right. They changed in equipment to inventory and it throws me off every time. Uh does an eighteen hit? An 18 on the ogre, absolutely. Yeah. He's a big so fucker. He's gonna take. Wow. Fuck, I forgot to do Wow. Oh, well. Wow. 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 
Wow. 17 force wow. damage. And then that was my bonus action. So as my full action, I am then also going to hit him with a sacred flame. That's fucking good. So Roger that. I need a deck saving throw from him. You, uh, you uh, summon the crooked flails or shake your, your spiritual weapon, right? Yes. And it smashes in uh, a, a deck saving throw. That's going to be pretty good, though. Uh, dex is a uh, 21. That passes. He is so. shockingly, despite being an, uh, and sunlight does not make him disadvantage on saving throws. Um, as uh, he dodges out of the way with that, uh, that's of the, the, the that's flame that radiates down, but he's being fucking scorched alive. Yeah, he just accidentally dodges. He's like tripping blind. <laughs> he's <just> like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's my turn. Um, as you see these uh, these ghouls now, the humanoids of four humans, Ooh. one orc and one aracocra, uh, or owl folk, uh, no wings uh, to speak of, uh, snapped bone poking out from the leather. Uh, they then uh, lean down and look at you and they <laughs> they, they turn you hungrily, and they will use their bonus action to dash as they uh, all just all six of them sprint forward. All six of them will sprint Those forward. Poor bastards. Uh, the other one's going to skirt. The, the two in the back are going to skirt the. Uh, oh. Are going to skirt the. Uh, Why are they side. smart? Uh, <laughs> What's their movement speed? Uh, their movement speed is forty. They're not smart. They're just and so yeah. They're just they the zombies eat. from Fallout. So they can go they just at you like the a light speed. So they're gonna try to run yeah. out. Yeah, they could easily get they're there. They're gonna try to run out of the uh, of the sunlight. The last two. Oh no, they're gonna start, they're gonna all try even, to run. Okay, no, you mean they're gonna run through the light? Yes. Yes, because ah, they're gonna all singe. And so if he can make it, it if he can't make 30, it, he's gonna run straight to Iris. 20, 30, 40, he's not that smart. 50. But, and he's dashing. dashing. He's dashing. Yeah. yeah. So he yeah, can get all the way around. Easy. Uh, and these are going to skirt. Those are going to skirt. Try to get. Try so to get one, to two, three, four, five and a half, seven, uh, <laughs> eight and a half, nine and a half, ten and a half, eleven and a half, twelve and a half. Yeah. Ten, yeah. twenty. No, he, he, he's going to try to get also to get. He's going to go this way. I don't know. He's, he's oh, right the other him. way. Yeah, he's, it's going to be one space behind him. We can't it's walk through the cart. It's not. Yeah. He's not walking through the cart. He leaves over the car. Like Thank you. He leaves over the car. Thank and you. The My other immersion t- has been broken. <laughs> uh, he leaps over the car, and I'll roll an acrobatics check to see how he does. All right. He gets a he 19, it. actually. I hope he is, too. Uh, <laughs> and it does. Uh, mm, I see. <laughs> As these ghouls now approach you after being so far back, now as they approach, the stench is so horrible and horrific that uh, it's so overwhelming that when you start your turn within uh, 30 feet of them, (gasps) you are going to have to uh, make a con saving throw. It's all of us. Uh, That sounds like bullshit. Yeah. And so with that, no, they're going to do uh, the they're going to do four claws on you, Felix, and they have pack tactics. So yeah. they're all they're all advantage. Yeah, good luck. Pack tactics. Uh, that one's going to be a twenty-four. Pack tactics. Yeah, we got So no, so hold on one second. Hold on one second. Oh, you give me one second. I keep rolling. Keep rolling. But do your thing. But give me one. Give me one moment. As you do your thing. Uh, where is it? 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 Where's my uh, fucking spell book? 15? That's fine, keep going, keep rolling. Keep Natural rolling. 20? That's... No, it's not. Yo, you have your action, right? So it hits. So I'm it, working on it. Can so you have your action? Do, do the thing. It was so I'm working on it. Just 24. Just 24. Thing. And it's a mess. Oh, so uh, so what I'm going to do... What I'm going to do is... Until your next turn... Uh, this will, yeah, so I am going... This looks like a job for the idol of the Justice Bringer. Uh, I will cast shield. Uh, the that. problem is the 24 still hits. I but am up to it. it's not a crit now. No, 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 no. No, no, the natty 20 is not a crit. Uh, but uh, my AC goes up to... God, that's pathetic. 21? Yep. So two hits still? Yeah, no? probably. Whatever, you, Whatever's above 21. Uh, well, the, the natural 20 still hits. It's just not a crit. But then the other one's a 24. That so hits. So, yeah, so both will hit. Okay. Uh, so they, they have to roll for you con. twice. You need to roll two con saving throws. Well, I'm going to have to roll a million con uh, saving throws. I'm going to roll because, damage here. Because of uh, my concentration. So, oh, well, really poorly. what's my plus con? My plus uh, con I'll, is plus I'll seven. Do both hit right, separately. So, so these are going to be for uh, the whatever Mike is having me roll for. Seven. These are going to be for me having yeah. uh, concentration. Seven, seven. the first swipe. Is this a hill? 
Is this like that's a tree line? Wow. Oh, tree line. But it's flat land. Yeah, wow. It's like pretty flat. So I got double natty twenties for whatever you're having me roll. Okay. Yes. The stench. Uh, but I lose concentration on my spell. Roger that. Because I rolled a two and a three. So Sunbeam. Plus wait. Plus seven. Yeah. I lose Sunbeam. That feels really bad. There goes my sixth. Wait. Level. You're radiating sunlight as well. Yeah. I was. So you're disadvantaged. <laughs> so then I take back my thing. Yep. I apologize. I'm sorry, guys. I forgot. We got no, no, no. It's just happening. a lot to remember. It's a lot to remember. Uh, the, uh, the a twenty. It still gets a twenty. So the first one hit. Second one. So that that misses. First one now. The first one that did hit that miss it missed. Okay. The second one that misses because it already missed. Uh, the other one missed. Because uh, it was the natural twenty, I just rolled a yep, I rolled a, a ten, and then this is the last one that that. Oh no, that also missed. I'm good. So I missed. I'm good. So the, the as they're approaching you, desperately trying to attack you, the, their eyes are blinded and they're they're horribly uh, the sunlight is an, is a problem, uh, and they're just gonna both try to attack you. We're gonna try to get an attack. That's gonna miss for me. Nope, the bites. So they have three attacks. Oh okay. no. Nope, okay, uh, and then on Toa. Oh. Can, can that one get to you, number six? Oh. They've all... Oh, oh yeah, he, he's... <laughs> yes, that. sorry. He okay. seems to be there, yeah. Uh, we're going to get a round of... Are they out of the sunlight? Yes, yes they're out okay. of the sunlight. Yep. Uh, it's 30 It's thirty foot radius. You Wait, you... My sunlight has... Sunlight. Is around you. Yes. yes. Oh. It radiates from my hand. Okay, they're all fucking in there. Yes, they okay, are. Well, okay, well, okay, well, hold on. Let's but just... their advantage against me, so it just evens oh, it out. It's even. It's even. Uh, so I'm going to just take both of these as both claw attacks. And it's going to be a 22 and a 24. Move, move, hit. Swipe, swipe. Damn, sorry. Uh, yes. Claw. Swipe, swipe. It's all right. Sorry, Egg. Sorry, Egg. Egg. Woo! Um, that is going to be... The only good thing to come from that movie. 5, 10, yeah. uh, 11. Was that, 17 uh, points of slashing Sparta? damage. And then uh, you roll two constitution saving throws for me. 17 is from two attacks. Well, because it doesn't matter. I have it all of them. Uh, 17... In, uh, Six, uh, I take what eight damage. Yep, and you roll two con saving throws for me, actually. Uh, two con saving throws. Yep. Uh, I get DC twelve. Oh, you crush it! <laughs> you feel the paralyzing <laughs> venom in their claws. Um, <sighs> and with that, I shrug it away. Yep, uh, you do that, and then uh, uh, two uh, two bite attacks, normal on you. On me? No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm still doing you it. Like, they both fail go? horribly. Uh, didn't you just go? And then, uh, and then, same oh, thing. Same you. thing with Iris. They are still in the, in the sunlight too, right? If uh, I don't think the ones on me are in sunlight. No, I. I no. think they're more than okay. thirty feet away. Yeah. Okay. 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 So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Roger that. And then uh, we're going to do. Uh, one is going to be twenty. I'm going to use my reaction 24. to make one of them. Uh, okay, with saving throw. Yep. What the fuck? We'll do that. Uh, he fails. That's amazing. And he swings in. He's going to rend the flash. We'll say uh, number one is going to tear into number four um, and do damage. And that's going to be, wow, max fucking damage. How about that? <laughs> uh, so number uh, four is going to take uh, max damage. Oh, boy, how? Oh, oh. Okay. Rends the flesh. They don't seem to care. They're ravenously focused on you. Uh, we're going in for a bite on Iris for that for that one. Um, that is going to be a sixteen. No, 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 17, seventeen. Sorry. A seventeen. 15, 15. Okay. Nope. Eighteen. Okay. 19. Uh, it misses its bite. Okay. And we're going to two two more claw attacks on Iris. They're just straight. Uh, it's going to be one's going to miss. The other's going to be a twenty-three. That uh, uh, 22, yeah, 22 actually. <laughs> uh, 22. Uh, it's going to tear into you. You need to make a con saving throw for me. Um, Boom. 11. Uh, are pretty. You fail, actually, as you take, and this one's on the last one. You take uh, first. Uh, uh, 13 points of slashing damage, and you your body locks up and you are paralyzed. Wow. I use one my minute. reaction to send one of my spectral ancestors to your body locks up. 11, reduce that by 11. Okay. 
that is the end of their turn. Wolf, do you're up. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, interesting traits. Do I have the one where it reflects back yet? Do I get the hint? Probably not. But maybe. No. I see you haven't done it yet. No. Not yet. Anyway, but yeah, it's so only take two of those guys. Yeah. <clears throat> Lofty. Lofty. Me. And um, I hold my spell. So, finally, oh. I will pop out of the, t- the trees. I'm here now. I'll say, Felix, watch out behind you all. And I'll run out. And just as I do, my new headdress will slip over my eyes. And I will trip and fall and roll forward and then spring up just at the last moment and just totally lower my shoulder into this fucko. What was that? Um, and so True that will be my fashion. new carnival bounce. Ooh. Um, so, so that guy will have to make a deck saving throw. What that? You turned clumsy into a power. Mm-hmm. 16. Oh, motherfucker. Okay. Um, sorry, I heard. It's based on your decks, though, by the way, not wisdom. Apologies. Mm. Okay. Well, that's spells, than a 16. Your spell save DC will be affected by decks. Okay, so that's what we were talking about in the break. So help me with that. What does that mean for Eight me? 8 plus 5 plus our proficiency is 4. So it's eight plus eight plus it's nine. Like eighteen is eighteen. Seventeen. 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 Okay. So it misses. So yeah. It fails. 17. Okay, I will adjust that. Thank you. Um. Okay. So then this guy is going to take three d ten damage and be knocked back. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and then this guy will take two d. Okay. Um, from the roll. So roll three d ten for number two. Yep. So it's seven plus five. Four and nine, so it's sixteen. So twenty plus five, twenty-five to number two. Twenty-five. You fall forward, and you feel just this dark power rise up within you, and you uh, fall in this really in, in this comical but also grotesque way, and it blasts out this thunder damage. And thirteen to number five. Thirteen to number five. And then they're what? Uh, and they're both not prone. Damn. As you sni- as you basically have sent them bowling into the other one. And uh, as it falls back, and you see bones Snap. snapping in its body. Bone. Mm. Nice. Um, and so that takes, so I have two attack actions. That takes my full, I can't That's your full again. action. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because cool. so you, 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 you only get the extra attack if you make the attack yep. action. Correct. Correct. Perfect. Any bonus action or anything? Is it? Uh, no. Okay, right for that. Um, Actually, I'm going to use my bonus action to smack Felix on the butt. Roger that. Oh, uh, so you do that. Uh, can What's a 30-foot cube? Can I get all of you in there? Yeah. Oh, I have to 30 foot do cube? the con, though, yeah, to be in with it. diamond style it. Do I need to roll a con saving throw for uh, having started well, my turn? Well, that's attack roll, so it doesn't matter. So, yeah. Roll it anyway. Roll it anyway, actually. Maybe. Close. We'll just give it to us. Yeah, you can get all of us. Uh, 25. 20, yeah, you pass you all of us. The stench you're able to, 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 to come forward there. We'll give it to him. Um, That's tough. A 30 That's foot cube? 30 foot cube. Yeah, it's close. No, it's definitely not all of us. It's very close. Do you I have a 30 foot cube? No, we got a 25 foot radius. Can you get here. everyone but Lufty? Or, or Iris. I would say it's one of the two uh, ladies. Yeah, yeah, out yeah. Of it. so basically you can either dodge Iris or you can dodge uh, uh, Roger that. Okay. So. Um, you see, uh, as this is all happening, you see for a moment this flash of gyrating purple violet swirling light as it shines around you and is absolutely mesmerizing. As you all look at it as a hypnotic pattern is cast from the uh, invisibility of Misty Escape. I don't have a reaction. As she appears. Dusk Elf appears uh, about right there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, And that's actually... Oh, so she's all the way... She's over there. She's all the way over there. Everyone besides Lufty to make a... Fuck, what is it? Wisdom saving throw, please. DC... 22. Passes. Wisdom. Natural one. DC 16. You can twist that Is shit. this her real we order to reappear? Yeah, we should we should save it until we what? Is this actually her over yes, here? Yeah, it's okay. actually her. Just, that feels pretty bad. Eighteen. 
I failed. Twelve. Twelve. Uh, so anyone who got below a sixteen, uh, it's so mesmerizing. You are now charmed and incapacitated as you stare up in the light. Uh, as you stare up in the light, and it, uh, it it seems to hold your. It's absolutely hypnotic. Does that mean you lose concentration? Uh, no, you just can't take actions or reactions. Right. Okay. And your speed is zero. Okay. So your speed is zero. You can't take actions or reactions. You're just b- all both looking up at this beautiful gyrating light that disappears, and you're just in this feels bad, strange man. hypnosis. Um. Uh, and that is going to be. I don't think she can do anything else. She loses a spell. Use your action, get over there. Yeah, yeah, here we go. What's up? I'll be out here. Okay. Uh, with that, it's uh, it's Ogre's turn. And he, is he advantaged? Uh, not if well, he's, he's in light. He's in light. He's in light. Um, could walk out of it. Let's see. He's, in- he's disadvantaged anyway because I hit him with Vicious Mind, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to roll an intelligence check for him. He's also disadvantaged against everyone that's not me. Uh, I think he's this ogre is too stupid uh, in order to do that at this point. As he's so beat up and so bloodied, he is going to uh, lunge forward now seeing two targets as he's just in He's agony. also blinded. And he's blinded, he can't see, and he's gonna make a disadvantage, he's gonna, gonna swipe blindly. He's disadvantaged like six places on yep. that. He's, he's normal for me though, because I'm in he, he'd be I'm into ogre load. <laughs> 20 for you, Toa. Uh, yeah, that nails it. It's wow. going to swing, slice into you, and he's going to take, uh, let me get my other d6. 6, 10. 13 points of slashing damage, con saving throw, please. Uh, so 13, I take, uh, half of that is 11, And then six. one disadvantage on IRS. That is going to be 17. Misses. Misses. You 16 dodge, on my con saving throw. Dodge out of the way. 16 on your con saving throw. You pass, you, you resist the, 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 uh, the, oh, but are you paralyzed, Iris? I am paralyzed. Okay. So, so am I. And he hit me. Okay. So I should roll at advantage then. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, I was already, I was no, already. No, I yes, think it's right. an auto crit. So you, uh, is paralyzed an auto crit? I think so. Yeah, because that's be. yes, because because that's why hold monsters so. Any attack good. that hits yeah. the creature, yeah, yeah, that's a crit. The attacker so within I, five feet of the creature. It tears okay. into you. Uh, you're you're huh. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you're uh, I'm gonna roll three more. Oh yeah. Just add this. Actually, there's another. Uh, one roll too. add nine to your damage. And you never told me what my damage was. Uh, your damage. I don't think I forgot to. Oh, oh it, it missed. missed. Are you paralyzed? No. I am paralyzed, oh. but you missed. Like it's um, but I am. You would be advantage, but he's. But then I did everything else. So. So yes. he's just straight. So I'll just take these two, and um, the. I mean, they both miss. So he's one. Yeah. So anyway, it's uh, they still miss anyway. And because the highest is a 17. Uh, and then he's going to uh, roll in, and we're going to see who he's going to attack with his bite by rolling a uh, d2. One is Iris, two is Toa. Two is Toa. And he's going to uh, roll straight. And that's going to be a natural three. As he lunges forward, he is being uh, horribly singed. Is the sunbeam still up? Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't know about your sunbeam. Oh, sunbeam. So the so if I'm incapacitated by rules as written, I am I drop concentration. Okay, Roger, Roger. And so uh, the the sunlight fades, but he is in this in in the in this, the dawn. He rolls a natural one on his con saving throw, and so whatever damage that is. Um. So incapacitated, a creature just can't take actions or reactions. It doesn't drop your concentration. Yeah. It says under spell casting, being incapacitated or killed, you lose concentration on the oh. spell if you are incapacitated or if you die. Got it. Okay. So I guess you are hypnotized, yeah. and so it would, I guess, technically wouldn't be concentrating on it. Um, so I rolled a natural one plus I failed the saving throw on some on Dawn. Okay. Um, so uh, it is a total of 17. Okay, 17 points of damage as it, as it singes him. He's looking very rough. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, with that, uh, Ogre's turn is up. Um, I am, man, I feel which bad. Is Felix, you're up. Yeah, I'm so, incapacitated. So you can reroll the, the saving throw. It's just a whiz. 16 whiz at 16. And what are you incapacitated from? 
I rolled it that fucking time. I got a 23. Uh, you uh, you snap two after being hypnotized. Uh, that's my uh, old team. That's, uh, that's my uh, turn, though. Yep, it's the end of your turn. Can't uh, move. I'm, I'm stuck with there. With that, uh, you snap two as the as the, as your, as the, hypnoti- the hypnosis uh, leaves you. Caprice, you're up. That's a big uh, yikes. I'm uh, looking around. I'm seeing people looking in the sky getting dazed by this hypnotic pattern. It doesn't affect me. Uh, I'm seeing them. my friends get surrounded, and I can see her right in the brush. Uh, She's looking right outside the tree line. I can see her. Breaking your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Sometimes you gotta go, and I explode with energy. <laughs> a destructive wave of sound as I smash into the uh, strings of my uh, viol. Uh, it's gonna be a destructive wave affecting all of these creatures. Does it hurt friendlies? Nope. Oh, thank Yay. you. Oh, wow. Thank I was gonna try to do that. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing D and D for how long, and I've never, never realized incapacitate. Thanks for keeping the game state, Andy. Um, each creature I choose within <laughs> thirty feet of me must exceed a Constitution saving throw. Well, after that, uh, is it everybody? Uh, everything that's that I consider to be hostile. So literally everything within thirty feet of me is everything except for her. Roger that. Okay. Uh, constitution saving throw DC Yay. seventeen. And I'm they're gonna start prone, rolling. so I don't know if that it does anything. But maybe. Uh, uh, first one fails. Five over here. Second one. Five over here. One in the back. Good court for me. Let's get two rolling bins. Gone. Shit. Fourteen fails. Uh, and then we're gonna do three. It's gonna roll. Con. Uh, Fourteen. Ten. Six. It's gonna fail. 14, 15, one is going to be twenty-one on one. Four is gonna be fifteen on four. Ogre is gonna be a twenty. Twenty-two. So number one, at ghoul number one, ogre ghoul no, uh, are the only ones that succeed. Okay, so they'll they'll take half of this. Okay. It's going to be 10, 15, 19 points of thunder damage, okay. and uh, nine, 10, 14 points of radiant damage. And the ones who failed are not prone. So just add all that up for me. Oh. Um, how much did I say? 10, 15, uh, 19 plus. 29, uh, 31, 30, 33 points total, uh, or half if they succeeded. Uh, number four is instantly blown apart, the one that's closest to you. Boom. Uh, it's bones and guts spill everywhere. Um, number four is here. 30. Is that three that you're talking yeah. about here? Uh, that four. Uh, oh, no, number, number, uh, yeah, number four, number four. Actually, it's not close to you, actually. Okay. Sorry. No problem. He's destroyed. Uh, so, uh, number... One succeeds, he's going to take half, which is... Oh, oh. And Toei, are you uh, inca- incapacitated? I indeed. Iris, you're incapacitated? Yep, yeah, which means, Mike, you have to heal that guy for 17 points of health, because if Paralyzed para- incapacitates me, which it does... You would drop Don. I would have dropped Oh. Don. Well, this is turning very quickly. <laughs> Uh, not paralyzed, our a creature is incapacitated. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, paralyzed is fucked up condition. 33. Spell. Uh, he's going to succeed so far. So why are you guys paralyzed? Um, because heal something, him for how much? something oh. hit me that, and I didn't pass it. Not, not the moon. How, how much, how much do I need to heal oh, him for? 17. 17. It's a paral- 17. You got paralyzed by the disease. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay, okay, okay. That freezes your muscles. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so the claws have a disease on the ghouls. And I'll turn to Toe and be like, Wake up, buddy! Come on! We're, we're gonna go and sail or some shit! Fucking fish! Uh, come on! And I'll give you inspiration. Okay. Um, <laughs> number three's looking <laughs> rough. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, as the as the dawn drops and that and the and the sunbeam drops, the darkness descends upon this battle. Sure. And she looks at you with a haughty smirk as the ghouls descend all upon you, seemingly not caring that her hounds uh, died, uh, having no care for them whatsoever. So this is gone now. Yeah. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, who's that? That was Grace. No, totally, yep. you're up. A couple of ghouls. I uh, touched her and passed her. At the end of the like right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. That's why you have inspiration. It's a, it's a whiz save, isn't it? Like oh, it? For, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Against yeah. the yeah. blinded yeah. by the Whiz. light. And you have inspiration. Ripped up like a douche. And you also get the inspo. Oh. Which you should cash in uh, on. What's the inspo? <laughs> 1d10. That's if pretty I get good. lucky, if I get lucky, I can crush the gobble ghouls. 11. 
Uh, Plus? 12, 13, 14. 16 wins. No, no, 12. Should I twist this? We only yeah. have like two. I mean, I didn't use a twist. Uh, Sunbeam would have been really fucking good to keep yeah, up. Yeah, I would say no. No. Yeah, no. It's fair. Up to you guys. 16? I don't give a shit. No. What do you guys want to do? Okay, you are continually mesmerized and hypnotized by the dark magic of this dusk elf. God damn it, toe up! Fuck! I'm gonna do the toe thing again. Uh, Iris, you're up. Uh, no. So Con I guess I'll. Because this, this boy's is, venom. This is yeah, so this is against the. This is con, so it's much lower DC than what is 16. Lavix or whatever. Yeah. No. Nope. Like, <laughs> 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 okay. okay. You uh, you are continually it's like a toe uh, paralyzed. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Nasca. Thank, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much for the thank twist. Let's that now. Yeah, let's put it into the orgasm pot right away. <laughs> yeah, we, we need it. We need pot. it now. <laughs> but you're not paralyzed anymore, right? No, I'm good. I wasn't paralyzed, but I'm not uh, incapacitated. So we're gonna get. Uh, 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 um, and we are going to get my uh, two attacks, and they are still disadvantaged because it's not you. So it's just straight because their advantage on Iris. Okay, we'll do straight. As long as you don't lose whatever your one misses, vanish thing is, fall, right? Another misses. <gasps> the what? Bite. Whatever natural one you do to um, everybody else be disadvantaged. The one on, on Iris, this its body is falling apart. Right, it yeah, is that, still that try. It is so, missing. Oh, time out. Uh, attack rolls on paralyzed creatures are advantaged. Yep. And and he's saying that we lose our. He doesn't give. He's not giving us the benefit anymore because he's also he was. And also that was balanced. just on the ogre. I didn't oh, attack okay, okay, him, okay. so he has no so longer advantage. So those were all three, and they I rolled really terribly. So I'm just going to roll another one again for each of those. Okay. Yep. Claw is going to be a 19. Another claw is going to be a 22 and a 15. The bite is, is is a fifteen. So do both of those hit? To whom? Uh, Iris. Uh, my AC is eighteen. Okay, so two hit, uh, two hit, and so it's gonna be two crits. Yep. As they slice into you. What the fuck? Two crits? As yeah, they paralyze, rend paralyze, your uh, flesh, they paralyze. They descend upon you like pet. Wow. <laughs> four ones, wow. he says. Wow. Four, wow. ten, wow. fifteen, wow. and twenty plus uh, ten is thirty points of slashing damage as they tear into you. Um, and so that is Iris, and then uh, on Toa, it's going to be you are uh, your your what you call it? I only have one on me, right? Okay, uh, yeah, there's just three attacks. Uh, was that? I'm paralyzed. Yes, you're paralyzed. No, no, you're incapacitated. You're not paralyzed. Paralyzed is the disease. Hypnotic is, is, is incapacitated. Were you diseased? You can't take actions or reactions anymore. Yes. But it the, doesn't. The difference not. is all so I don't crit, crit you, no auto crit. I don't crit you. Oh. And I'm not advantage. And I'm not ad- advantage against you. No. Okay. Oh. I'm doing. I'm okay. doing uh, all four claw attacks. Normal. But well, actually, no, I'm going to do claw attack here. It's going to miss. The only thing is, you lose your actions and reactions. Right. Tw- Twenty-two oh, to hit. Great. 22 hit. Uh, 22 hits. That's going to be. Uh, Here we all are. Five yeah. points of, sl- of slashing damage, and then con saving throw as, as, as the disease seeps in. How many points? In. Five. And as then the a con saving throw. Seeps in. Uh, okay, con saving throw. Yeah. DC uh, 12. Yeah. Oh, you're good then. Uh, bite is going to miss. So now the other one, now number six, is going to go. Uh, that's going to be a. That's going to be a 22. That's going to be. Uh, six points of uh, slashing damage. Con saving throw. Uh, okay, so that's three points of damage. Oh yeah. Okay, you pass it. Uh, one more, one more bite. PZ. One more bite on you. That's gonna miss. Uh, and then we're gonna have one. They're both gonna get up. The prone ones are gonna get up. One's gonna go to Lifty, and one's gonna go to Felix. Uh, Felix is no, uh, no one. None of you have uh, status effects. So no, gonna, but I should have my reaction back, right? Yes. Because yep. I passed the check. Yep. Uh, we're gonna do Lifty first. Uh. It's slash is going to be seventeen. Uh, nope. Twenty one. Yes. Okay. Get ready for the slashing damage. Uh, Cause saving throw, please. Uh, eight plus uh, three. Eleven points of slashing damage. I am going. I want to use my thing. Uh. Oh, right. Fuck. I want to use my reaction to reduce damage. Okay. Just 11 points. So reduces 
uh, by nine, so I take two points two of points damage, of damage yep. and then my con. Uh, as he goes in, a flurry of colorful feathers bursts in its face, and uh, it manages to not hit you as deeply. Fifteen on the con. Fifteen on the con, that succeeds. Uh, and then a oh. bite on you, that's gonna fail. Uh, we're gonna get uh, Felix, one more, fails. Uh, uh, Fifteen. Felix? No, miss. Uh, and then 20 on the way. Shield and it passes. Uh, and it passes. Block. lunges in. You, you channel the thing. And that is their turn. Um, with that, it is Lufty's turn. We're going to have a Okay. Um, okay, so her her mesmerizing shimmery boo-boo-boo. Would I be able to see that? It was, that a, one t- it was a one-time thing. Oh, it's it not one-time. lingering. Just cast. Yeah, yeah, it's not lingering. It Got it. Um... Well, I guess since they're up on me now. So I'm going to uh, raise my spoon up and just come down as, as much as I can over top of both of them and make mm-hmm. a strike on both. Okay. Um, um, that is a 24 and a 19. Uh, both it? Okay. Their AC is 14. Let's see, that'll be uh, 16 on Two. number five. 16. Oh, uh, it's looking rough. And 14 on number two. Number two, 14. And then, um, so after I make that strike, I will, I will take my spoon and jab into number five. Uh, you smash into it, you smack, and they're both looking very rough. Uh, uh, one's jaw rips off and their tongues are hanging out. Their yeah. eyes are wide with, with ravenous hunger. All right, and my other one fails. Okay, Significantly. after that, uh, it is her turn. Uh, as she is going to... Um, <laughs> Let me um, let it pee. Let, let it, it pee. pee. Let it pee. Let, let it pee. pee. We have all got bladders. As she let it reaches pee. out and she stands in the tree line, and her hand it glows with this violet light and blasts out. As uh, it's gonna, she's gonna attack Iris, Toa, and Caprice with Elder's Blast. Nice. Iris is going to be a nineteen. Toa is going to be a 20. Wow, that hits. Mm-hmm. Caprice is going to be a 22. Yeah. Oh, as, <laughs> as they blast, <laughs> they crash into you. So that's a crit on me. It's within five feet. Well, crit on me. Get crit on me. Uh, we're going to do Iris first. Sorry. 19 points of uh, force damage. Uh, Toa. Seventeen points of force damage, Caprice. I can't take reactions, correct? Uh, if you haven't passed your if thing. You're, if you're incapacitated, I've... then no. Uh, Caprice is nine plus five is fourteen plus five. Uh, Nineteen points of uh, force damage. Nineteen. Hmm. Mm. Uh, okay. And she just looks confidently uh, uh, it, by the tree line uh, with her hand out. But that's I'll her turn. Find out if I maintain concentration. I do. Uh, the ogre uh, still. Let's we'll see if he may, if he's smart enough to get out of this. He isn't. As he's just lunging forward, um, you're not paralyzed anymore, right, Iris? I am. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be advantaged on. Uh, he's still blind. Let me see if he actually gets out of the blind. Nope. Uh, that's so. Uh, Iris uh, advantage. No, there's, there's no there's more. No blind. There's no more dawn. Oh, oh, okay. Oh wait, I, there was another. As long as he didn't pass, he 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 can. Oh, okay, he okay, was okay. blinded from from my my oh, attack. Oh, Roger that, Roger that, Roger that. But I assume that he can make that saving throw. He did. Uh, I'm gonna, over I'm, and over I'm gonna again. Do that. Let me double check. And I'm, I'm I presume it's one minute. Uh, I'm gonna presume that. Uh, so that fails against Iris. He's gonna make so one attack on Toa. Advantaged. That's gonna miss. And he's gonna lunge blinded. and bite. Oh, he's only blinded until the next turn. Yeah, you're oh, good. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. you're good. So, uh, so he's at advantage against me. He's right? at advantage, so I'm gonna roll one more time for Iris. Uh, that is going to uh, hit as the claw rends and it's gonna be a crit. Oh, no! 
One, two, three, four, five, six. What is it gonna get swish of smoked here? Uh, 10 plus uh, 5 is 15, 19, 20, 23. Uh, 23 is uh, 26 points of slashing damage. And uh, with that, uh, Toa uh, is going to attack on you. You're, it's just regular. Uh, and that is going to be a 17. Uh, that misses. It misses. And so uh, as there's these oh, targets, so good. Uh, he's going to bite on Toa. Baseline. That is going to be a uh, 24. Yep. It tears into you and is going to do a bit of damage here. Yes, I do resist. Uh, <laughs> I'm like the Elder's Blast. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. 12, 14, 14. 17 points of uh, sli- of piercing damage and con saving throw for me. Good old attack on uh, Okay, that's his turn. Uh, and with that, it is um, Felix's turn. As I as I snap to from the uh, the uh, the mesmerization, I, I look to my hand and there's no more orb of, of sunlight. So oh instead, no. I say, "Oh no, nah, fireball!" <laughs> oh. And I see what I can snag here. I'm trying to figure out. Get a yeah, I think it's pretty close. If I go like, is this guy oh, dead yeah, you, or you, what's you happening? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. guy's dead. That's okay. a, yeah. Just, I'm gonna fireball all of them, and I'm gonna keep him? all of my yeah. friends safe. So yeah. I need them all to make yeah, these, and I'm casting it at a fifth level. Okay. So I need them all and to make a Dex 17 saving throws. Okay. Every other one. Yeah, all of them. Everybody but the uh, the, the the leader. Let's fucking go. Here we go. So I'm gonna reroll this bad boy. Oh, and this one because they're ones. What's the DC? Seventeen. Okay. Dex. Five Here passes. Go. So that's gonna be twelve. Uh, twenty-two. Six passes. Well, that was a five. Uh, twenty-two. Uh, thirty. Thirty-seven. Five and six pass. No one else. Thirty-seven. Uh, and I reroll this bad boy. Uh, 37 plus 8 is 45, plus 5 is 50. 50 points of fire damage to everyone who failed. Half if they passed. 50 points of fire damage to everyone who failed. It blew it. 55 points of fire damage. Good lord. And I don't move because I don't want to draw opportunity attacks. I just want to singe all of their flesh. 25 or, well, yeah, no, 27 or 50 or 55. I can get mad. Yeah, 27 or 55. Fireball, you say? Yes. Fireball, I say. Felix says. Right, well, Felix says fireball. Half of 55 is, is 27. Uh, 20, yep, 26? 27. 27. Uh, which is. A lot. Exactly enough. Yeah, get fucked. As your Not the DM, as, the minions. As, your, as you clutch your dagger, a flame whips around you. And this is no sun, but it is pure, raw, elemental flame. As it whips off and a bead goes in the center and a massive explosion. It shapes around all of you as every single ghoul. Burns, I'm not, un, not alive, but undead, as they all <laughs> they singe alive. away. You smell sizzling, <laughs> popping flesh. Is the ogre as... okay? Tell me he's okay. No, they're all dead, right? Is the ogre dead? They're all dead. All of them? Every single one is dead. <laughs> and as, as the ashes and the smoke and the off. horrible are... smell begin to drift and fall, I look directly at the opposing mage. I pass my turn. She, uh seems to be completely shocked or if she had such the upper hand as now all of the ghouls including the ogre, are dead. Caprice. Is hypnotic <laughs> pattern still doing work? No. Nope. It was, one time it was a one-time thing. It was a burst of a hypnotic pattern and then <laughs> you're just basically stunned by fucking Blair Witch. Oh, so it's not hypnotic pattern the stone, or the, the spell. It's hypnotic pattern just like esque effect. Um... <clears throat> Because I remember using hypnotic pattern when I was a young, younger Caprice, and it was a concentration. Oh yeah, maybe, but we'll just say for this, this is a special Dark Elf version. I mean, this happens because I That's it fine. Up. That's fine. It was I, a one time effect. I was just trying to decide if, got, I'm, yeah. if I'm in a breaking concentration mode or if I'm in a, in a go and fuck her it's, up. It's mode. weaker because she's a minion. Um, uh, I will turn to her and I will. I'm gonna use my blow another spell, I guess. Um, what do I have that I want to do real quick? The pattern appears for a moment, so you can keep them hypnotized for a minute. It doesn't stay in the air. So oh, I believe so, it's correct. Right. So you don't. It's not like you pass and then you, you can, can fail keep, again. You can just keep as long as you're right. You can just keep them hypnotized, right. but you can't rehypnotize. So right. technically, it breaks on damage. Now that I'm reading it. So can I just say I'm now I'm broken out of it? I've taken like shit tons of damage oh. while I've been hypnotized. 
So well, like, not her taking any, you taking yes, damage. Yes, as long as I take any well, damage. Or someone. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, fine. That, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. I'll turn to her and I'll be like, nice. uh, making your way in the world today takes everything you got. And I will attempt to cast slow on her mm. to see if I can hold her. Uh, Toa, get her! I'm going to inspire Toa. Uh, you already have an inspiration. He no, you used it. I used it. Toa, so. get, get her! Uh, grab her! Uh, stop her! Uh, but she's hearing, stop her. Break her stop skull. Her. <laughs> I'm okay with that option. Uh, she needs to make a DC 17. She fails catastrophically. Okay. These guys are done. I slow her to You a see her as she moves, and as she she turns to you and she feels the magic, she's trying to resist it, and she looks Move at up. the hearse, and then back at all the ruined ghouls, and you can see there's a moment of hesitation where she's considering running. Yeah, good but she luck. steals her resolve, but it is uh, there's some trepidation there. Okay, so she's slowed now, and it's your turn. Yeah. With inspiration. Uh, it is my turn. Uh, is there any way to gain a bit more speed? I don't think I can reach her. If you can give me an action to haste you, then yes. What? <laughs> this is going to take three movements. So let's say I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then eight. hit her with your boomerang right in the head. <laughs> Um, you got a net? <laughs> he used to. I think the net no, like, that's like gone. fluttered through the oh, skies right. of Erios. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I remember yeah. the boomerang. Right. There's literally the end of, of Avatar with Sokka. Yes. Oh, goodbye, boomerang. Oh, is a moon sword? What, 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 he throws moon sword. the both, moon sword. Both he, he, yeah, he throws both of them away. Goodbye, moon sword. Got it was to show a level of sacrifice what he'd do to save his friends. Yeah, so everything. he sacrificed both everything his boomerang and, yeah, and his moon sword. Um, so what space sword, I guess. Space sword, moon sword. Yeah, by space sword is uh, I'll use a bonus action and I will swirl my hand around with my bracelet. Uh, a watery shark will erupt, oh. uh, and uh, as opposed to the other kinds of sharks, chomp onto her. <laughs> it's a land it's shark. It's a, it's a boulet of water. Uh, so I'll do him first. Oh, I see. Uh, he is going to uh, erupt, and he's AC large. seventeen will. Uh, as she shimmers. Really like it right here. Uh, move onto her space so you can put her on top. Oh. So she's going, he's basically going to jump and chomp her. Oh. Uh, and she's going to be inside of him. Oh. And she needs to make a DC Chunky 15 chunky. strength saving throw. Okay. She's a wizard. Hmm. 15 strength, you say? Strength. It's plus zero. Uh, 11. So she fails. This is great. Um, and she's like. Uh, she's going to take uh, 11 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Uh, and she is now grappled inside Miku. That's so what I wanted you to do. You, you channel your bracelet, and Miku explodes into sea, uh, for, uh, in the form of sea water. A shark lunges forward. She does not have time to react as it splashes on top of her, and it's also the end of Avatar with Azula. And she's floating <laughs> around, being crushed by the water of the shark. Uh, and so Get now. Right. She is grappled. I'm going to have Miku swim towards me with her in tow. <gasps> yes! Uh, I have speed Two, to move her 15 three, feet. Four. Oh, get right. Back one more. Back one more. Because she's slow. He's slowed. So that's as far as he can move. Now I have the movement to walk up get here. Get fucked! Yes! Yes! <laughs> and I'm going to come in with my mom. Is she, is she incapacitated in some sort? Uh, she just grapples. Just grapples. Oh, so, fuck. Oh, she just can't move. And she can only use this escape. Cool. And she can't breathe if that matters. No, don't, she can't breathe. Don't worry. She gets she's negative two yeah, penalty to AC. She's alive. She's plus two penalty to AC. Negative two. You see her. Uh, then I will go ahead and make two power attacks and we'll see what happens. Well, that sure turned around very quickly. Uh, I like how you're like, I'll make two attacks and roll 400 dice. <laughs> right. So uh, recklessly, of course. Of course. Um, her dying breath. He breaths. says that after he knows what the dying breath is. No, no, no. no, 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 no I, I always, it always, always recklessly. Right? Yeah. Uh, so my lowest is a 13 plus 6 is uh, 19. 19. And her AC is reduced by 2. Uh, was it 19? With her AC uh, minus yeah. 2. Uh, so her AC is minus 2. Yep. Right? So it is, so that's, uh, so her AC is now 15. 
Oh, please. Okay, so I, I hit both. Did you proc? And so, and I, and I did proc. proc. And I did proc. I reroll this guy. So make sure you just tell me the full damage, and then I'll... That's pretty good. Death. Dude, this is uh, fucked up that you do this shit. You get at least one more attack. And I, I get one more attack. So wind fury procs, and... Uh, this is like a pinata. It's like literally a water shark oh, pinata. That actually, I think, misses. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It does yeah, miss. Yeah, fuck. Am I inspired? Yeah. Let's fucking go. Add it, add it. All you need is a two. You, no! Someone. What's that? That's exciting. Oh well. It was, uh, right. it was still. She's probably damage. good. It's like she's like the inside the hearse is like a nightmare. <laughs> Twelve. Uh, Twenty two. Murder all these people. Uh, yeah, that's what I said before 22, we attacked. I was like, hey, we got a forty-two, sixty-two points of damage. Okay. Get fucked. She's dead. Her brains spill yeah, over the. Uh, how much damage? I apologize. Sorry. Sixty-two. Sixty-two. 62. I'm trying. Okay. She and literally dies. With Nico now grappling, she is drowning. And suddenly, just she Nico, doesn't even know what's going on. She, her, eyes, she, her eyes are adjusting to the salt water as it stings. So that really sucks if you open your whole <laughs> this eyes is, underwater. This is irritating. It's and really mildly inconvenient. You just see Toa smashing into Miko uh, uh, as he does that. Um, Miko is getting redder and redder. <laughs> uh, but Miko does take damage from that. Right? If, he, if you're smashing into him as well. Uh, so she, he's grappled in, in his space. I think that's fine. Yes, but so, I so, believe technically yes. I can target okay, so you smash in, and Miko manages to sloop his water away to not get hit. And she is getting absolutely fucking dumpstered. Uh, as that is a shock. I'll drink to that. I don't have any reaction. This, this is what happens when we spend any amount of resources on no. a fight. Well, turret's also restrained. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, where's that? Uh, Iris. Uh, what's the DC for 12. the... Yes, then I finally... You finally come to, as the paralyzation, you see the, the sheer power of these horrific ghouls, um, from something as simple as a scratch, uh, as you come to, monsters too are dead. Love to, you're up. Oh, yikes. Okay, uh, I can now move... I'm, I guess I'm just gonna, I'm gonna dash and get behind her. Okay. Like, yay. You sprint around and uh, she's grappled inside, floating inside of Miko. <laughs> and that's my turn. You can use a key point and make it a bonus action. You want to step of the wind, I think. If you want to. Put it to you. Oh! How in the fuck have just I been losing money? dash. Yep. What? This is horse shit. Oh. I don't have to tell you, man. I meant. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna make two, um, hmm. two strikes. I didn't code her. it. I should look at it. I'm gonna kill everyone for this. It's probably not worth it. To be doing that, it's probably not worth that. You know, it's probably just like, you know, it's probably just a game in chat. And I think you're advantaged. Uh, the restrained. Oh. Check the restrain feature. Okay. Yeah, let me know when that. That would be big. Uh, oh, I can check here. I'm sorry. I can check too. Yeah, that's your advantage. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so it'll be 22 for my first attack. They all have her AC is now 15 because her AC is lowered for some reason. <laughs> slow. Oh, she's slow. What's her AC? 15. Oh, 16, 16 is my second, so both of us. I'm about to tee off on this bitch <laughs> as uh, long as she's still restrained. And... Sorry. Eight and eight is sixteen plus twelve is thirty-four. Is that right? Sixteen and twelve is thirty-four. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Sorry. Thank you. Um, twenty-eight. Plus... I play a lot of blackjack. <laughs> I'm really good at numbers through one through thirty. <laughs> twenty-eight plus four is thirty-two. Um, thirty-two, four of which is thunder damage. Okay, you a smash into a bam bam and a burst of thunder damage as uh uh yeah 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 thirty two incapacity grapple strain she loses her turn and it's Felix's turn again uh she is restrained so she can use an action she can try to escape uh, except for she's slow Ooh. she's, she's slow, slow so she can use one action yes 
Uh, in action or a bonus action, not both. <gasps> try to escape and then I'm like trying also to figure out. Get melted. Get I'm melted. trying to figure out what I can nope, do here. You can't do anything because it's Felix's turn. You're about to be. You know what? We're gonna. I had a plan, mm. but now I've you got break the, a You can use your action plan. to break the grapple. I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah the skater really is 14. You're really taking this on a musical journey yeah. here. And, and, you can say, and if you do, plan. then you can say, how do you like them grapples? <laughs> and everyone would relax. I don't know laugh. if we would. We would have laughed. We would have laughed. Now it's already using my pattern. Hypnotic pattern's not good. How did I lose all my money? She can try it again, but very, Felix has very other plans. <laughs> Um, it's gonna be fun when she enjoys her last moments. She's going on to the look surf. around and just is incredibly. She looks around and she. You can see now she's restrained and she looks. Uh, even though she's drowning, she's choking and sputtering, trying to, to hold her breath now, realize what's happening. She's now a spoon in a fucking totem, <laughs> had been smashing her. She's bloodied and uh, there's blood now floating inside of Miko. And the blood in the water, it's like Miko goes into more of a frenzy. And she's gonna turn and then uh, her hand flashes violet and then she disappears. <gasps> and then I cast Counterspell as my wait, reaction. Wait, wait, wait. If the creature attempts to cast a spell with a casting time of one action, roll a d20 on an 11 oh. or higher, the spell doesn't take effect until the creature's next turn. Uh, it is, uh, it's a 13. Yeah. So it doesn't take effect until it's next turn. Oh. No, uh, no, 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 no. It doesn't roll up. Uh, on an 11 or higher, the spell does not take effect until the creature's next I turn. I don't cast <laughs> and spell. it flashes and swirls as she's casting invisibility <laughs> in the final last effort to try to trick you. As, uh, it it'll take effect in the next turn. <laughs> I don't think and she's moving very slow. I should have been also pantomiming her being slow. I can roll at the end of my turn though, to get out slow, right? Um, or no? It's no, it's concentration. You have to. Hurt Roger me. that. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, it's uh, it's uh, no. Ogre's dead. Felix, you're up. I thought so. <laughs> uh, I, I, as I am looking at her in the eyes, and she's she's uh, you know hanging in there. Uh, I'm I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because of the the, 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 the the pain that she's put my friends through. How's I feel? And and I look at her and I snap my fingers and I cast immolation. That's so I'm gonna need her to make a Dex 17 saving throw. I don't know how that affects uh, you know her being restrained or whatnot. She has a in water, so I don't know how that changes things. She's totally consumed by water. And she I mean, does it? Does it matter? She has a negative two oh, penalty. I would say that because it's the nature of raw elemental fire for this spell. I'm also an addict. There's no resistance. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I just, I just don't know how it would, you know. I'm just at, uh, yeah, I think it's a great. No it, disadvantage uh, according to slow, but a negative like two. Send fire is, it, right? is, it, is it a deck save? Yeah. It is a deck save. She's restrained, so yes, this is a good So idea. one's a natural 20 with my good die. Unfortunate. And the other one is a natural eight. <laughs> Uh, minus dex, minus uh. Minus two. Yeah, no, this, this is a catastrophic failure. Roll this guy and this guy and this failure. guy. You know we try. So that's gonna be twelve. Pretty good. Uh, plus ten is twenty-two. Plus six is twenty-eight. Plus seven is thirty-five. Plus five is forty points of fire damage to her. Forty points. These and magical she... flames can't be extinguished by non-magical. Oh, that's magic water. Mm-hmm. But I'm not trying to extinguish. Technically, it's not magical water, is it? Water it's it's part, animated water. I curious. would say that the elemental that is burning through it's boiling or it's alive. boiling. Yeah, it's boiling, literally boiling. Yes. It's it's I was curious if it was like a go. fire, like so a rock or like fifty. Uh, I said it, uh, 45, forty-five. I believe. Okay. Yep, yep, um, yep. and then uh, in terms of as she. Uh, is attempting to And then on her turn, she's going to take another additional force. very slow six. bubbles. Boop, boop, boop. Her eyes are wide as she's boiling along. So at the end of her turn, she'll take another 46. So just let me know. Uh, you know okay, roger that. As, as Miko now heats up, as he's a boiling ocean shark. Boiling a little bit. She's on fire. She's, she's, she's on nice. fire. She's flaming in the water. It is horrific. Uh, Caprice, you're up. No. Oh, let's turn here real quick. Um... I'll walk D&D up. D&D swings real quick. Action uh, comment. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, I'll walk up and I'll be like, uh, you're probably regretting casting Dispel Magic on that old, nice, blind man. 
<laughs> Alright. Uh, gesture like this if you give up and we'll just take you prisoner. Gesture like this and maybe we'll let you live and you can tell us a little about yourself. Persuasion check at disadvantage. Um, I s- lost, uh, I have concentration on slow, so I do not have enhanced ability, so it's just regular, uh, disadvantage action, so that's going to be a persuasion, 8 plus 14 is 22. 22. She... She looks at the carriage, and then looks at the ghouls and looks at all of you and she you see that there's a bit of crack in her resolve but she steals her eyes and continues to drown and she she holds her she yeah. she she actually does this and burn and she like, looks like avatar she does like a uh, commander zhao an admiral zhao and puts her uh hey. his hands Zuko. Fuck you, fish. I'll cast Vicious Mockery on her. She has to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, with saving throw? Yeah, 17. Uh, let's say 12. Uh, she takes six, seven points of uh, psychic damage, and if she gets the chance to attack something next at some point, she just disadvantage. Okay. Uh, you see her, uh, some blood starts to pour out of her ear into this as she's boiling alive. Uh, this is a, a horrible, <laughs> horrible situation. Uh, Toa. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, so at the start of Nico's turn, he will crush her ah, in yeah. his waves. Yeah, of course. Dealing uh, another 2d8 plus uh, 4 damage. Roger that. There we go. Pretty good, actually. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 18 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Being grappled, much as passive. Uh, she's be boiling and also being crushed. Let's see if Whelm recharges real quick. 18. It does. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, there it is. <laughs> well, there it is. <laughs> well, there it is. Uh, can you slam... No. It's Into whelm. whelm. No, it's whelm. It's whelm or or two. Okay, spins. well, it recharge. It's gonna whelm again as its action. Uh, DC fifteen strength saving throw. I mean, it's already blood. It's already grappled though. That's a natural it? one. Okay. We'll take more. Doesn't damage. matter. Not great. Uh, three, seven points of damage. Blood okay. damage. Okay. Uh, and then for Toa's turn, uh, he is going to just make two attacks. Okay. Oh, I've, I've lost my whole setup here. Uh, might not need it. Uh, okay, so, uh, recklessly. Uh, the lowest is going to be a 22. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Yeah, Gracie's a 15. These guys. Nah. Uh, let's see if, it, if either of those proc. Any other detail? Nope. Uh, nope. So it's it's going to be a uh, 6, 12, um, 17, 18, 19, uh, plus 40 is uh, 50. <laughs> what did I say? I said 12 to 19. Uh, so it is 59 points of bludgeoning damage. You smash in and smash in and smash in as Miko's crushing her. She's slowing, she's burning, she is looking horrific. She's alive? Uh, and barely, barely, barely hanging on. 50, 50, how much? Sorry. 59 points of damage. Looking incredibly, incredibly rough. Um, and then for my bonus action, I will, uh, do nothing. Okay. Oh. Iris, you're up. I'm oh, going to walk Julie. forward. I'm going to reach in and I'm going to grab her by the throat. You do that. And I'm going to say, you don't touch my friends. And I'm going to cast your foot wounds at a six level. <laughs> How does that work? Well, that ought to do it. I mean, and that doesn't. Jesus. I have to roll. Okay. And it's plus me. Yeah. And like a human paper shredder. What's your AC? 15. <laughs> I miss. 
Oh no! Okay. Fuck. You Wait, your advantage though, because she's oh, restrained. Yeah, you're. Yeah. I hit. <laughs> Jesus. How much damage is that? I didn't know her strength it's was gonna advantage. It's going to be eight d10 no. necrotic damage. That's got to be like. If she rolled all one, she would she? <laughs> I'd like to see. I, I, as a dungeon master, I'm curious. Um, let me guess. Let's find out if she rolls above the min. No, this is not the BBAG. This oh, is a tiny minor mini balls. Yeah, but I want super tiny mini mini. No, this is just an average commoner. In this yeah, this, realm. yeah, this <laughs> is just this is just regular Avantress combat. I'm so going I to any dice. How many eight D10s? Do you need more D10s? I do, but I have them. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna compare you against the mean of the roll, just for the fun of it. Um, it's the average is is what half plus one per die. The average of a D10 is a five and a half. Yeah. So call so. six. Six times eight. Five I'm five gonna need to. So forty four is the average. Don't eight. count while I'm doing this, please. Thirty-one points of necrotic damage. Oh. How would you like to do this? <laughs> I, I just want—I literally want to choke her out and watch her life force. So, as, as you do this, you rip out and through the flames and the water. You being, despite you reaching into the fire that she's impossibly ignited in, in in seawater. Your hand is also impossibly not affected as Felix is an incredible master of, of the arcane. Mm, as your power yeah. reaches in and she very slowly reacts and suddenly a horrible pestilence uh, pulses through her veins and her eyes go wide and blood and bile spill out of her mouth as her violet nice. eyes bleed and they roll back and she just floats dead. Still burned. Oh, the flames will go out if she's dead. Oh, so they, they ignite, Once and now she's, yeah. she's in within Miko. Her corpse now Good is floating. And I'll, I drop slow. I'll sloosh it back in with the bracelet. You do that. Um, Holy fuck, she got dumpster. Just, like, I, I would immediately run to the, uh, this, uh, this hearse. Oh, hold on, hold Don't open it or anything. I, I would immediately run to it and, and begin to inspect it and try to figure out what this is. Uh, you, you sprint on over to it. Make an investigation check for me. Nah, not great. Let's take a look. It's probably a pretty good plus, though. At least 15, right? It is exactly 15. Ah. You go. Here, you've got me As go you back. walk over, you inspect it, and you see a bit of shimmering sheen. Ooh, there sheen, is sheen. a magical enchantment I on the doors. I attempt to cast a spell. Okay. Um... Let me actually pull. I don't know what spell spell level this is. Are you ritualizing? Let me make that? sure. I, no, I, I'm gonna take a look here. Uh, no, I can't ritualize it. So I'm gonna actually cast a spell at a fourth level. I'm gonna upcast that bad boy. Ah. Um. As you do this, you cast spell magic, and a swoosh of silvery, shimmering magic falls over the carriage, and that sheen that you had once seen is gone. Are there? Is there any kind of way to look into it without opening it? Are there? Are there like you know? Windows. Windows no, this is a person you're normally familiar when in perhaps in cities, uh, or in in whenever you've seen a funeral that there might be glass panels, but these are completely boarded up. Not boarded up, but just it looks like a hearse, but it doesn't have that glass panel. I hate to do this, and doesn't like it. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can find a way to open it. You, Felix is very concerned that there's a child there. You uh, reach forward and you find that the doors locked. Physically, magically? Uh, magically. It seems as if whatever magic has been dispelled. Uh, it's only a third level spell. How about that? Wait, 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 wait. So it's not locked. Oh, it is locked. So the magic tra- the It's magic not tra- magically locked. It's, it's not magically locked. locked. It is now physically locked. Thomas! Thomas! It's locked! I need you to break it! <sighs> While they're doing that, can I check her body? Like, and Make see. an investigation check. Yeah, uh, I just want to see if she has like, uh, a key yeah, in her pocket I will or join Luke in checking her body. Advantage, please. Um, I'll come over to feed like. Tell him, please. I'm, I'm coming over. Uh, I have zero to investigation, but I got an eighteen. 
An 18. Uh, you reach through and you find um, some personal belongings, a, a coin purse, uh, but the important thing that you find is actually a, um, a, a ring of keys. And you also find what seems to be the fragments of a soaked, uh, charred uh, bit of parchment that seems to have a bit of writing on it. Um, so I'll, I'll take that with me. Tell you oh, run over Wait to a minute, wait a minute, you stupid boys. I have to do everything. Oh, and I'll be walking very slowly. Swing. I have to move my figure because if the figure doesn't move, I don't move. Um, you can't wait, see wait, it. I can he, see does, it. Any, does anything say your name on there? Does it... <laughs> don't follow me so closely. No. Ah. Okay. Um, so I'm walking very slowly and swinging the keys around my finger. And uh, once I get there, I'll... I'll very slowly and methodically try each key in the lock until uh, I hopefully find one. While she's fits. doing that, I'm frantically like like looking over the thing to see if there's a name or any writing or anything. I'm, doing, I, I'm, like, a, the, I'm in a tizzy. The old and I janitor a thing. You do that. As like, oh, the third one. key oh, on the ring it. fits in perfectly and you hear click. Oh, As soon as it pops, what? I would throw the lid. You, 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 you open the door. And you, no. You, no, 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 no. you rip open the door, and you see inside a of, of made of beautiful polished gilded wood. You see a coffin laying flat in the bed of this hearse-like carriage. Are there any markings or anything? No. How large is the coffin? Uh, it seems to be perhaps not child size, but very slightly larger. I would immediately, no, please, no, 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 Milo. You uh, go in and you grab the lid and you are actually able to just lift it up. It uh, opens on, on, on a hinge. And as you open it, you expect that same stench of death. Ooh. But the stench is outside from those rotting, singed ghouls. And you see now a girl, no older than 13, short blonde hair laying around her, her, her head as she rests holding a single white lily in her hands clasped, eyes closed, completely still. I would immediately how old does she look? Probably about like uh, 11 to 13, you'd have to guess. I, feeling this sudden like, holy shit, this could have been Milo. Yeah. I would, I would like try to like, like scoop her up a little bit and see if she's alive or, or anything. Like, you know, feel her temperature. You jet very, very tenderly, like, you know, almost as if she was a little sister. You scoop, you, you gently reach in and you pull her out and you realize now this little girl is wearing a, uh, a, a, a small buffle, bustle dress uh, that's um, that's of a complete jet black with white uh, white and red ribbons and, and, and designs and you gently grab her and pull her out and as you grab her body it's warm oh oh oh, oh. Iris Iris quickly I, I think she's alive quick please I chug my potion <laughs> um, and I slowly get to my my legs. Oh my god, I need to sleep. Oh my god. Oh, Iris, let me get you. What do you want? I'm gonna run over and just pick up Iris oh. again. All right, oh. then. You look really oh, bad, oh, but oh, I can't oh, do anything oh, with oh, this. Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna carry Iris over to It hurts, Harry. but not oppressively so. <laughs> this this is girl. I, I think she's still alive. Is there anything that you can do? She, she doesn't feel like she's dead. And I would like to medicine check her to see what I can determine. Please roll a medicine check. As... I, as you as you as you hold uh, Felix, you hold uh, this this girl gently, and she's a human. I know nothing. And um, the dress that she's you, you get the sense that she must be from Corvacchio. She looks has that same look of the of the, the the blonde hair. She looks her features look very Corvacchian, but the style of clothing seems. Uh, not like someone who would have been plucked out of Corvacchia, as if she was put into this dress and put in this state. And Iris, what do you roll, just so I know? Uh, five. A five. You place a hand. Seven. A seven. 
You place a hat on a pole. Okay, sorry. My modifier for that, I can tell you right now, for medicine, it is a plus five. Okay. And I rolled I a two. You, you yeah. place a paw and you feel very faintly. There is a heartbeat. Her body is warm. She is alive. But it is slow, I'll say. And that's what I'll give you. Well, no, she's alive. Struggling. Ah. Ah. While they're taking a look, I'll I'll just kind of unfold that parchment that I found. I'm peeking over Lupti's shoulder. I I want to see if I can learn anything about the woman we just slain. Okay. Um, I want you to make... I want you to make an... A reading check? I failed. I want you to make an investigation check because with the water and with the flames, it has been pretty uh, brutally uh, taken apart. Uh, girl, sixteen. Sixteen. <laughs> I, I don't. Gla- I, I don't understand Glazia. what this is. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So you got a 16? Yeah. Uh, can you make a quick uh, investigation check for me, Caprice? I can. But will I? Shevin. A Shevin. Um, <laughs> you... You, uh... You have really big shoulders, Luffy. <laughs> well, so wait, you're, you're not getting the corpse. I'm looking I'm looking over her shoulder. No, she's I'm reading trying to learn I'm shoulder. trying to learn more about the woman, so I'm trying to read what she's reading. Oh. I'm just, oh, oh. My okay. Apologies. apologies. I was very confused. No, I I'm, um, I'm actually not looking at the map. Once combat's over, I, I it's it's all theater of the mind for me. Wow. Um Must and nice. you are you attempt to piece together and you can read Elvish, correct? Me? Yes. Both? Yes. But it wouldn't matter because it's uncommon. <laughs> As <laughs> You can't read comments. Got him! Shit. As you see bits Check and languages. pieces of, of <laughs> words, and you tr- the sentences, it's, the, the ink is smudged, and it very clearly had a uh, a red wax seal that is smeared and melted away. Um, and you see the, 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 the remnants of a wax seal. But um, as you can see several words... And one that uh, leaps out to you is Ravenchild. Ravenchild. Another that leaps out is New Friend. New Friend? New Fred. Oh, New Fred? New Friend. Oh, Friend. New Friend. Is Friend by the three? Yes. Yeah. Except after C. Um, and then word. another word that is a word you don't know, Zaracosa, Zaracosa. How do you spell it? Z-A-R-I-C-O-S-A. Zaracosa? Cosa. C-O-S-A? Yep. Zaracosa. Um. L- 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 Lufty? Um. I might be able to to fix this. I, I know it's wet and, and charred and, and melted and all the all the horrible things we just did to her, but uh, I think if I have ten minutes, I could I could try to mend it. Take ten hours for all I care. I can't read it. I don't think we have ten hours, but um. um... Oh, and if it, I drop the keys, I don't really want them. But if anybody does, no, we should keep them just in case, and I'll, I'll pick them up and put them in the bag. One more thing in the bag. I'll start to can attempt the ritual of mending to see if I can improve the state of this. I'll put some pieces of parchment. Oh man! Okay. Uh, I'll put some. Uh, I, I haven't gotten to use this since okay. the last wax seal I repaired in like episode wow. four. <laughs> so uh, I will attempt to mend, and uh, you guys can do what you want to do for the next ten minutes. How? I mean, like, is she? Is she a large child? Uh, no, she's actually a <laughs> probably about average size. I only have ten. And strength. you get the sense where she, you get the sense where she's you know probably your average height, uh, average sized um, you know twelve year old girl. We'll say. I would see if I could like pick her up and like 
like, I would hold say her, even you'd be able my to shoulder. do that. Like you, you had been picking You're up Milo, and get, and he's a he's a young yeah, man. I'm I'm six feet tall. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I have ten strength. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, better than a comic. Why would you think I want to ask? I'm a little short. I want to be able to create like some twelve year olds like six feet tall. You know, especially with like what's in today's hormones and the milk and all that. Priest takes the remnants and the pieces. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm assuming she is very small. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I would, I would like scoop her up as if she was my younger sibling, and I'm very concerned. And then you do that. I'm gonna turn to Toe and be like, ah, I know this complicates things, but we have to get her to the, to the Count's castle. There's no way that we can leave her here. I can't leave her like this. Well, for, for now, just get in the tree line. Just move out of the way. And I want to pick up the the, the the wooden kind of drawing post of the wagon. Oh. And I want to try to start <laughs> he holds the pulling shit out the of wagon Make into the tree line. For me. Oh, I would immediately follow idea. him. I would, I would take his command and I'd follow him into the tree line. I'd start dragging some of the bull bodies into the trees. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, once I'm done, I would basically drag this body out, and I want to just okay. get every So why don't, actually, why don't total, why don't you just make it as an advantage, because she's helping you, and basically you work it's together. Much better. Kicks this dirt on. Um, <laughs> make it look come like on. someone not us. Come know. on. Uh, skills. That is a 20. A 20. You and Lufty... And you, you get in this thing, and you're not quite an ogre, but you can manage, and you can see how it works. And you heave as you pull, and it's a struggle. You, even though you're incredibly strong, you don't have the strength of a massive, especially the supernatural strength of an ogre ghoul. But I'll you manage to pull with, with Lufty's help. You manage to roll, and it clatters horribly as you manage to get it into the tree line. You're able to cover it with brush, pulling the last of the death dogs, the bits and remnants of the body parts that have been blown apart by Felix's fireball. You have to go over here, okay, there's an arm, uh, there's a foot, as uh, the ghouls got completely eviscerated. Look what I can do with these two arms. While while all this is happening, after Toa basically said, like, get to the tree line, I, I would make a small fire uh, yeah. and try to heat up water from my, you know, my water skin scheme. Mm -hmm. Uh, and tear actually like tear a piece of cloth off of my coat to dip in the hot water for hot rag to like see if I can like you know put it on her forehead and like clean her up a little bit and like see if she comes to it all. You do, and I'll say do a quick medicine check for me. Disadvantage. Shit, I don't even know what that. I, what's a medicine check? Wisdom. Poor. Uh, my oh, wisdom might be plus six. Let me check. Hold on. It's not a save, though. It's yeah, literally it's just my just wisdom. Uh, it's an eight. I got an eight. An eight. You gently, you get some water out of your your, wine, your uh, water skin, heat it and you, up you and gently like, you heat yeah. it up with your, your pesticide or firebolt or whatever it is, and it's a this beautiful warm uh, cloth, and you put it to her, her forehead, and she doesn't react. She doesn't stir, but uh, there does seem to be a softening as you as you gently hold her and, 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 and cool her off, but there is no fever. There is no, she just seems to be a very baseline temperature. And um, as that happens, you manage to, is anyone else doing anything out in the open? Are you, you're probably dragging the... Um, so I would like to drag the ogre. I don't know if I can drag him on my own. But I see with Lufty's help, dude, you're, like, you're able, and also he's got the hole in a part too. So he's like, okay, he's he's pieces of ogre. Okay, right, right, pieces, right? It's basically, yeah. So you're able to, to yeah. take chunk by chunk with everyone's help and get it into the tree line. And uh, right as you do that, uh, you see um, as you finally are able to, to take a look at the tree line, you hear a very distant squawk or cry, and you see far from the distance a vulture soaring through, a giant vulture coasting back over the valley, but you've managed to get to the tree line in time. So we're all in the tree yeah. line, hopefully hidden in the... I'm, so, uh, I'm in there just doing my little Mendes trick. Oh! I will say we will, um, we will do that. And, um, we'll do that. And you manage, you're, you finish the, the ritual and it glows and you see the pieces. Some, some pieces you weren't able to find are completely incinerated, but you see as it uh, oh, no, uh, folds together <laughs> and you see what looks like a letter from the princess. You open it, 
and you see this the red wax seal that had once been smeared away is turned into a, a still a little bit smudged, but you can see a seal and it seems to be a vulture with wings out to either side in front of a shield with a castle on it. And you read it and it's in common. And it says, Trela, T-R-A-E-L-A. I expect you'll deliver the child to Zarakosa after properly preparing it. With how some of the candidates have been reacting, we may have found the raven child yet. But if not, at least I'll have more new friends. Do not be late. You know I will not be happy if you are. And King Vorok will be even more displeased. Make haste. Warmest regards, your princess. How do I spell Vorok? V-O-R-R-O-K. Good old King Vorok. Hmm. Um, I don't know what the rest of the group is doing, so I will read it privately to myself and check to see what everyone else is doing before I attempt to convey this. I would say that you did that while the bodies were being cleared, and you're now in the brush, and you're there as the the final body is is being uh, is being dragged. Well, that's disgusting. Um, hey, uh, do you guys want me to read this letter? I was I managed to repair it. It seems to be almost complete. Yeah, what's it say? Well, <laughs> oh, weird. What do, what does that mean? So Zeracos is a place. Uh, I, I would assume it is a place, uh, based on the context of the letter, yeah. And we know it's to the north somewhere. We're heading with... southeast, so... So Vorak, may, or maybe Zaracosa, or Zeracosa is the castle or the kingdom of, of the king? I would deduce that as well. Yeah, sure. Why not? And then her name, and I point over to the corpse that I've now dragged uh, into the tree line. Uh, she must have been Trela. Trela. Um, just uh, out of curiosity, does this look uh, boop? And I attempt to make myself look like Trela as much as possible. Uh, violet eyes. Whoa. Dusk elf self. Hmm. Um... Did we hear her speak very much? Uh, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. She spoke, yeah. Can you give me a... She talked to you. Yeah. She sounded like a haughty, posh accent. Like... British RP. Yeah, British RP. Yeah. Received pronunciation. Uh, no, do I, I'm Trela. I'm Trela. I'm Trela. Do I look the part? <laughs> uh, do I look the part? Uh, am, I, am I posh enough? <laughs> it's pretty good. Right? Is it, do I think... Well, Toad will think it's great regardless. It's <laughs> <laughs> good! Yeah, I think it's well done! <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, I, wait, I just, I just wanted to make sure I had this arrow in my quiver. So to speak. <laughs> and now I will do a little jig. Even though Very I just good. watched myself get immensely before me. Guys, this is kind of creepy, because it's like you're here, but you're also there. Hmm. Well, she's kind of covered in brush. She's not that visible. Her horribly made corpses. Um... As you look over their toe, I want you to make a perception check for me. Oh. <laughs> we all prepare to die. I love the way you, like, devil may care toss your dice when you have to roll. <laughs> uh, 16. 16. Despite the stillness, you as you look and point to her corpse, deliberately looking at it, you see something in her chest, above her chest, a little slight movement. In trailers? Yeah. What the fuck? Uh, she's dead, right? Is it like a squirrel friend just rummaging around for little bits? Yes, I'm very dead. Oh, oh And I wanna I wanna go up and I wanna take a look. Oh probably just a squirrel. <laughs> you look and you start to see that there's subtle movement in her her vestments that have been mostly charred away, and you see bits of exposed flesh, but you see through the robe that there's a bit of... and it starts to move away from you. I try to grab it without, like, crushing it. Uh, let's do a, uh... uh acrobat... or a, a dexterity contest. <gasps> I 
That's very good. That's fair. That's that's fair money. That's very good. Not acrobatics, right? Uh, yep. What in the hell? I think it's a plus three. Uh, Twenty-two. Twenty-two. As you leap forward, you see as where this little slight bulge is on her person, about at her shoulder, the cloth rips and tears, and there's a flash of shimmering blue, and you're as buzzing wings as it flies out, and you lunge forward and barely grab it, and feel like you're about to crush something. You caught a bug as you hold it, but you manage to clench it in your massive fist. I open it just real quick to look at it. Just for or just you know, not enough to let it out how big I think it is, and I'm just like trying to trying to quick look and then close it again. Perception check. Oh boy. Let's see how much you see. No. Uh, eight. 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 <laughs> you see what looks like a blue beetle of some kind with a gem-like shell. As the, as it begins to, you feel a pain in your hand as it turns downward and attempts to bore, burrow into oh your into God. your. Oh God! As it starts to, I hate this. Uh, uh, it's burrowing into my skin, but I don't want to crush it. Why don't we put it to sleep somehow, anybody? Just go yeah, stomp on it. Why would it be? It's like some kind of blue beetle. Tell it no. Don't let it hurt you. Kill it. But it do a You take nine points of uh, of piercing damage Arr. as as it burrows into your hand and it it rips into your palm and you feel disgustingly as uh, this whatever you grabbed a hold of uh, burrows into the your massive hand and begins to uh, work th- towards the, your bone and tendons. Uh, I am going to... What the uh, fuck? Stuff it in, stuff it in, stuff it in! <laughs> I'm going to attempt to hold out an empty flat uh, uh, vial and okay. uh, try to have him cram it down the, the nose uh, and throat of the vial. Okay. Uh, I will say, as you do that, you uh, manage to slam it in. I will say that it would it would have normally had to have made a contest, but because it's halfway into your hand, you uh, slam it down, it. and it is burrowing. It is continuing to burrow it, burrow in. And so you, you move it away. I have a and dagger, and I can just sort of like get between the hands. Okay, the, let's do a the... quick as that brief moment. Let's it's see just how like fast Brendan you are. Fraser in the mummy. Oh, <laughs> uh, what, what kind of contest? Yikes! Um, uh, dexterity. Oh, that's where I'm a Viking. Seven. Uh, saving throw or just straight up? Just straight contest. Thirteen. Thirteen. You manage it as you uh, do it, and you see as this glass vial, you see a beetle with a shimmering jewel-like shell is scraping out. Its eyes are, you would expect, like wide, bulging eyes, but they're sunken in. And as the wings flutter in flashes of blue, they look like shimmering lapis lazulis. As you then see oh. when the, the shell comes down, it forms the shape of a hollowed, uh, corpse-like face of a human. And then, like a skull almost, with a little bit of flesh, as it flutters, as it attempts to uh, escape. Someone, the cork is in my pocket, the cork is in my pocket, the cork is in my pocket, the cork is in my pocket! Ah! Well... Holy shit! <laughs> what is that? Does anyone else Iris, see a do face? Do you know what kind of bug that is? You know bugs a little. That looks like an RSC thing if I've ever seen one. Iris, is this an RSC thing? Uh, Nikki's looking up something really quickly because I want to see if it's what I think it is. Have, have any of us ever seen anything like this before? I would say absolutely not. Uh, I want to inspect where I think, I want to basically rip the, the cloth away and try to see where I think it came from. Did she have it on her? Was it burrowing inside you of her? Rip the cloth away with your wounds is difficult with the wounds you unleashed upon her. But there's very clearly a hole in her chest that oh! was burrowed out. No! I'll slowly make my way over. Have I ever seen anything like this before? Uh, why don't you make a uh, religion check? Uh, probably not. At advantage. No, it's still felt, you know. I mean, you got a high, high bonus. Uh, high bonus. Yeah, That's not bad. That's fine. Pretty great. What you see, Iris, your knowledge of gems, your knowledge of 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 what you, everything you know and your, your religious teachings and, and everything experiencing Saket, that is unmistakably a scarab. That's a desperately trying to escape. And the the face looks like 
on the back looks unmistakable to one you had seen just the night before. Oh, like in, in my vision. In your vision. Shut that was the night up. before, though. What? That was during this day, wasn't it? Uh, no, 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 it would have been like a few, oh. yeah, a day or two because of we traveled. It looks like the face of a mummy in the, what the shell. What fuck? As it attempts, and you can tell very much that the shell is... This, the shell is, is, you're not sure if it's it meant to resemble a lapis lazuli, but it certainly looks like it. Well, it's the rough, the rough imitation of the scarab, obviously. It. Well, remember I told you about my dream? Yes. The face of the mummy. Well, look for yourself. And you see there are no eyes, so it's not a, it seems like a very strange scarab, and it's sunken in where there may have been eyes. Why would and that be and the limbs almost look skeletal. You know that bugs don't have uh, skeletons, but it almost looks like a skeletal. Uh, if you know a, a sculptula, a sculptula, or a played Warhammer, uh, you would know. Uh, just, it, it looks like a strange bone-like uh, pump. Further instruction, In- inspection. <laughs> but what 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 could your vision and and Sagat possibly have to do with Skethrino? Well, I have a fear. What do I know about dark domains? Give Being me a priestess of death. Give me an arcana check. And because of your grave clarity, let's give me give, give it to me an advantage. Advantage, you know. What on really earth? Really nothing. What on earth? No. Highest was a six. I rolled a two and a four. You oh, know, nice I would say that yeah, you I know uh, the that there are dark that there are dark to the shadow fell. I guess my biggest question is what I know that there are that the dark domains have their own lords. Yes. I would say that is something that you would know as part of the process of death. You know that some spirits, they go to the upper plane, some spirits, they go to the lower planes. Many spirits go to the shadow fell and all of the various domains of where they are depending on, on a wide variety of factors. You would know that. My fear is this. I do believe that Anubis is held captive against his will in the shadow fell. In the Shadowfell, there are domains of death itself, and I fear that this entity that I have seen is the Lord of Dread in the realm in which Anubis is held. Wait, you think We've that- been told that Skethrenil is linked very closely to the Shadowfell. If that is the case, and this entity is able to allow its creatures to walk about in the material world, it would go without saying that they would look and resemble him of some sort. Now, it is just a thought, a hypothesis, as well. but that is my fear. I, but what is that thing, and why the hell was it inside of her? Well, we could put it inside of us to see what happens. Well, no, 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 we're not doing that. Yeah, no thank you. Then I'm not sure. It doesn't even you really... could try to ask it. Can you talk to it? I can't, but one of you magically inclined. I can't. Hey, hey, bug! What, what, what you doing? In, in? It's desperately trying to tear away at the cork. You see, there's actually shreds of the cork now. Oh, bullshit! Uh, as it's, it's desperately trying to claw uh, with its mandibles and its, and its skele- It's almost like finger bones, like, uh, like appendages. <laughs> Caprice, we, we can't keep that thing. It's only a matter of time before it gets out. I agree. And cork is hard to come by. It's dang. The uh, <laughs> I could just let it go. No, we, no, we, I don't think that we should do that. You saw what it did to Tawa. We incinerate. Well, all right. Well, we should at least try to retain its form and hope that we could study it. So it's we let it out. Let's preserve and... it. Does anyone have? Uh... Do you need it alive? No. Well. What do I mean? I'll pop my wine skin out. Are you going to drown it in wine? Why not? I could just insult it to death. Well, you could. I, I could... figured that the alcohol would preserve it, but maybe not. I don't know how these things work. Yeah, insult it to death. That sounds like a, you know... At least it would be fun. It would be a first. I'd like to see that happen. Uh, I, hey, hey, bug, uh, if you can understand me, understand that you are uh, an inferior bug. Uh, we defeated your uh, host uh, master, and uh, you should feel bad about yourself and probably die at this time. 
<laughs> I'm not even gonna make a roll. <laughs> it, you see it skin up. And it immediately turns uh, full, uh, spins over, wait, wait. and its legs are in the, in the sky. For, for Vicious Mockery, does it not have to understand you? Uh, it, it needs to... I don't think so. Uh, it needs to be able to hear, though it need not understand you. <laughs> that is, wow. Imagine... Alright, alright, time out, time out. My sides are like actual in agony right now. <laughs> imagine Krampus. Imagine Krampus. You die at this time. You're just like walking through the woods one day, and then like, there is this red being with horns that you've never seen before in your life. Like, and you look at it, and it says, and you're like, what? And then all of a sudden, your brain is like, fuck, and you die. Like, that is horrifying. Yeah, pure av- attitude and bravado kills you because you just feel bad about yourself now. You're just like, what? Oh, man. That is fucked up. Well, think, think, think. well I, hey, that, that worked like Game Busters. Now it's uh, dry and uh, preserve it then. <laughs> I'll no. take it. Or you at least like take a look at it. Maybe you can learn more. I don't just do bugs. Inspect it. Um, it I want me. you to give me an Arcana check at advantage. Arcana. At the event. Fifteen. Pretty good. You take a look and you inspect the corpse of this little beetle. And I will say you're able to discern two things. That this bug is no beast or creature. It's very much undead. Whatever it is, is, I'm not sure if it was anything in life, but whatever this is, is undead. You would know that as a grave cleric far easily. And I would say as a grave cleric as well, you know that you feel a sense of faint, fading power. Just for a moment, as its life force finally disintegrates after being mocked to death by fucking Gabriz. <laughs> you feel the lingering remnants of necromantic magic. Not just animating this thing, but also within. I, I would relate that. Not quite sure what that means. But... It's good to know. It's a minion. Potentially. And he's strong enough to imprison Anubis. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's your story. Which is simply a guess. The magic that she cast, uh, the swirls, the hypnotic patterns, they were all uh, the same violet color as her eyes, not the lapis lazuli like blue that we're seeing on this book. Is, yes. that, is that an accurate yep. assessment? Yep. Hmm. What was it doing in there? To what I can say, to what your question, is Anubis's realms are not that of the Shadow Fell. It is not a place for gods. So what is that? I, that I imagine, though I do not have much experience with it, that a lord in his or her realm would have more power than a god. A god were to move where they should not be. Or be held captive. We'd probably need to save him. Yes. And I believe that is why we were told to come here. And to your question, Caprice, Mm -hmm. my fear is that the creature was embedded in her chest as a way for this entity to spy, potentially, or control. So the creature you saw probably just heard me say all of those things and yes. is aware of all of us. Oh, especially the great. and you should probably die now. C- control would have been my but first I'm not guess. Sure. But it's weird. I mean maybe it, it could be something as similar as what Beatrice is to Felix. Just some sort of familiar. Yes, and that because we killed it before it had the chance to make its way back to its master, that it won't hear anything we've said. Felix. Oh, it doesn't even belong to him at all. When Beatrix isn't around... Beatrice. Beatrice. When Beatrice isn't around, she's not inside of you, is she? No, I mean, I mean, she's a being of pure magic. So if we killed you, there wouldn't be, like, a Beatrice being like, 
Oh, fuck, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't teach us that at the academy. I mean, to my knowledge. No, 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 I, no, absolutely not. I want ins- to okay. inspect the corpse to see if I can see where it broke from. Like, where within her. And, like, roll her over and see, like... Make a medicine it. check to see how, how well you do that. Uh, I mean, that's not bad. Eleven. Uh, that's not great. <laughs> <laughs> it's with the amount of su- as brutal damage that you unleashed yeah, upon yeah. her. She's a fucking mess. She's a broken. And you can find the exit wound. She's a broken the, 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 woman. The burrow, on the, the burrowing, uh, the burrow wound. But that's about all you can see. Where her? <laughs> Would you allow me ten minutes? Her ashen gray skin. I mean, we we have time. Uh, we do have time. I mean, I'd like to get going, given that we just uh, brutally destroyed this caravan that they're expecting at some point. There isn't much evidence, but now I'm concerned about whatever potential host or spy is there is. Yeah. Take ten minutes, and as soon as you're done, then we can go. During the ten minutes, then, I would be uh, cleaning up what I had done to try to take care of this poor girl and prepare to carry her on the journey. Where are we going to take her? Just with us to the castle? Well, I mean, we, we can't leave her. I, yes, I think we have to take her to, to Count Kreskov's castle. I, we don't have a choice. He's our one potential ally in this realm. And I, I'm not going to leave her here in the woods. I, and this could have been Milo. Okay. So we just have to go in the woods. We'll have to be slow and steady and No slower take our than time. we already were. And as long as you two act as our eyes and, and, and we have Toa protecting us... And Iris is feeling better. We'll be all right. I, I, we'll be all right. This is fine. And and the count will help us. And we'll make sure that this this poor girl is, is gets to safety. And we'll we find have, out what she's being used for. Do we know when, how far away we are from the castle? It can't be that much further. Only another day, day or two. Yeah. We've come very far. And we've made good time. We haven't rested too long. And, and, and until now, we haven't really had any... Inter- interlopers or, 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 or stress we'll, we'll make it and we were crossing paths with this correct yep okay yep you were cutting across well we're going to have to be careful that letter said that they were going to you know I don't know it said be on time or something like that yes uh, uh, to, qu- to quickly arrive so they, they were really darting to uh, uh, zero Zaracosa. We have some time before anybody recognizes that they're missing. We can make good time in that in in that period of time. I agree. I think I say I would just wait until. Iris well, I guess is... I don't actually need ten minutes. Oh, oh even better. Great. I quickly set up stuff around me. We are going to talk to her. Yes. To the bog? No. Oh. To Veracos veins. Uh, uh, tra- tra- no. Trailer. You, you, trailer. you don't mean the, the, the absolutely broken corpse of the person that we've... Yes, absolutely. Oh, you do mean. Yes. Okay. Now, she has no reason to provide us truthful answers, but we can attempt to learn something from her. She will hear everything we say, but we only get five questions that she is she will be willing to answer, whether truthful or not. Five questions? Yes. Does she have to answer us, even if she hates us? She has to answer us, but she does not have to be truthful. However, we can speak to her outside of those questions and let her know that it would be in her best interest to answer those questions for us, so we need to be choosy with our words. I don't think I'm going to participate. Something tells me that I won't be very good at this. Well... Um... What could we... I guess first off, what should we say to make her... Do we threaten her? Do we say we can help you? Well, but we could start off by saying, if you answer our questions willingly, we have the power to bring you back from the dead. That's good. Not committing to doing it, of course, but letting her know that I do, and I could. Though I would reincarnate her, so she would not be a dusk <laughs> Oh, boy. I mean, do you think? 
Well, I need help with questions. So far, I only have. Were you aware that a scarab-like creature was embedded in your chest? Who or what does this creature belong to? We should ask uh, what the raven child is. And what? Yes, uh, that's exactly correct. At the bare minimum, we need to find out what they're doing with these kids. And who's the princess? What? Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe we can just know that it's the daughter of King Vora. Well, I, I think, honestly, I think the Count might be able to ask that question. We have to find out what the Raven Child is and what they're doing with these kids. We have to find out. Yeah, what were they, they going to do with her? Yeah, what were they going to do with her? <clears throat> yeah, they said they, something they about <laughs> deliver the child and pro- properly preparing her? I don't know. Do we need to know that? Yeah, look, from the context of the letter, it sounds like the Raven Child is something special. And they may have finally found the Raven Child within her. It doesn't mean they got it right. Maybe. But finding out what the Raven Child is may inform what they're looking for. Maybe how do we wake her up from whatever state she's in currently? Oh, you know, we could speak with the beetle. How? My spell provides it with a semblance of life and intelligence but to any corpse of my choice. I think maybe the spell, you can't use it on undead. You're correct. I cannot. <laughs> and it must have a mount. Wow, Toa. How did you know that? Uh, he hasn't pulled out. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just weirdly. Out. You hear, a, you see a pigeon. <laughs> and he gets killed by a vulture. <laughs> As it gets picked off. Well, so far we have four questions. Well, if you have a burner question, uh, how did it feel to die? Uh, how did no, it... don't ask that. No, that's terrible. I don't want to know. I don't know. I mean, I can tell you. It was <laughs> not, no, not great. Not. Um, don't you wish you didn't cast a spell magic on that old black man? Uh, <laughs> can you read off your current questions? Were you aware that a scarab-like creature was embedded in your chest? Good question. Who or what does this creature belong to? Also good question. Who or what is the Raven Child? Great question. So that's actually only three. It's three, and then maybe what what is the preparation process that they did on the Raven Child? Maybe I, I think we should ask what happened to the the children that weren't Raven children. Or Ooh. we could use the uh, at least one of the other questions to sweeten the pot. Should you answer these questions truthfully for us, we will make sure. That your name goes down in honor with what is the name of her boss? King from the letter? That sounds like a statement. She's probably not gonna Would you like King if you answer these questions honestly for us, would you like us to make sure that your name goes down in honor with King Vor? I think we can do that if the first question is a no. It should be the first question. Well, okay, then provided we do bear with me. We have four three questions. If we insert a question there, the first question becomes the second question. If the second question is a no, we don't have to ask the third question. That's true. We need a decision tree. A what? A decision I'm, tree. I'm go is a tree that head grows head decisions? I'm coming this, uh, with you. No. Yeah, Iris and I will handle this. Head. Yes. <laughs> Wait, I, I got a good question. Please. What happens when you find the raven child? That we can, we'll work that in. First question, honeypot. Second question. What is honey? Sweeten the deal. Oh, yes. Second question. If they answer no, then we don't need the third question. Because they're not going to know what the being is if they didn't know that it was in them in the first place. Unless they are lying. Unless they're lying. Damn. Would you lie to us? Do we know that they're lying? No. Double damn. (laughs) We could... If someone is capable, we could put down a zone of truth. Could we charm her? She's dead. So she doesn't become a, she's no longer a creature. Yeah, I can't do anything to her in the form of like suggestion. Oh, so zone of truth wouldn't So then maybe we, let's, let's wait on the third question until we get the answer for the second question. Well, so far we only have four questions. That's okay. That's good. So let's we'll let's go have through ten it. Minutes. We only have ten. Yes, to, oh. ask, to, to ask all of the questions. That's fine. We don't need that much time. Let's start at the beginning. Sweet and honeypot. First question is honeypot. If you answer all of our questions truthfully, would you like for us to make sure your name goes down in history with the Duke of the King of 
four. King. The Carrion King Vorok. King Vorok. Potentially. The Carrion King could be another king. <clears throat> oh, yeah? But we're not going to cross that threshold yet. So it doesn't yet. actually say I was the conflating. Carrion King. It just says the King Vorok. That's all we know. That's all we know. King If they say no, then we just ask what we, we ask. We will just continue to ask the questions. Perfect. And hope. The next one. Were you aware that a scarab-like creature was embedded in your chest? If yes, we ask question three. Who or what does this creature belong to? If no, we move on to question four. Who or what is the raven child? Question five. What happened to the other children that were deemed not the raven child? And then bonus question. If we get a no to question two, I understand this is very complex. Just bear with me. We need a bonus question. Uh, have you really been far even as decided to use even go want to do look more like? <laughs> Not asking that. <laughs> because even you confuse me on that one. <laughs> ah, my brain! <laughs> if you say 25 seconds, like then. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so good. Oh, the cramps. I need electrolytes. That's the second time that joke's been used in our campaigns. <laughs> bonus question. What happens to the Raven Child once it is, has been found? That's a great. We should. That should be one of the fucking primary questions. What do you think, Iris? My fear is that if we go down the road too deeply into the Raven Child, this person will not want to answer the questions. The only way we can convince them to do so is if they think we're not going to foil King Vorob's plan. How can we help find the Raven Child? Add that to the honeypot. What do we look? What do we look? Add for? that to the honeypot question. We we say we we have no need of this child, right? And could potentially deliver it to King Vorok because we're with looking your for assistance. Yes, 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 yes. In order to make her name go down in history. Yes, we got it. So the only thing we'll do is we'll move the 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 Raven Queen. I need to find out what happens to these kids. We're gonna move the. The, 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 what happens when they find the raven child question uh, above the, what happens to the veiled. We uh, could ask, <laughs> upon your untimely death, who is the next in command to bring the raven child to? Ooh. And then we have a name of someone in the ranks. I don't hate that. Because we could play subterfuge and pretend to be evil. That's always fun. I don't know if Toa could do it to me. Well, Toa can go over there. We'd have to pretend he's a mute. And also probably cover his face because he's always so smiley. (laughs) He's just watching a butterfly. Yeah, he's like sitting down. (laughs) All right, I think that we do that. Uh, we, we promise her fame. Uh, you know, she'll she'll have her name in the halls. Uh, she'll get a, a whole uh, a contingent in the army named after her called the Trail of Park Boys. It'll be great. Honeypot question. Sure. Okay. Then we've got Scarab. Mm-hmm. Did you know Scarab question? Scarab existing <laughs> question. If yes, we go to who put it there? Who put it there? If no, we go to... Who's your second in command? Right? Sure, I'm trying to write down these questions on a small bit of parchment. While they're writing this down, I'm going to go to the path and I'm just going to look up and down and make sure nothing's coming. (laughs) Make yourself some check. Scarab exists. Who put it there? That's if it's a yes. If it's a no, we go to second in command. We go to Raven Child. What, What is Raven Child? One, two, three, four. Oh, we are running out of questions quick. Uh, what happens when we find the Raven Child? No, what is the Raven Child might answer the question of who, what, what happens to the Raven Child? I'm looking up for vultures. I'm looking down the path. You see what happens where to the vultures have been overhead. Raven and actually further south, perhaps looking for where the caravan may have gotten uh, held up. I, 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 Second I, command. We don't have much time. We, we, we got okay. to we gotta Here, fucking go. This is it. This is it. I got it. 
Where? I cannot even read your handwriting. I'm sorry, I'll read it out loud to you. All right, the first one is honeypot. We ask the honeypot question. The next one we ask is scarab existing question. If yes, we go into who put it there question. If whatever, we go down to second in command question. And then finally, we go down to what is the raven child question. If no, we go to second in command question. We go to what is the raven child question. And then we go into what happens to non raven children question. And that's what it says. It's very plain here. Why can't you read this, Iris? Well, because I'm a well-learned daughter of the Pharaoh, my penmanship is immaculate. That sounds like it's supposed to be an insult, but I'm not going to take it as one. Do you think, hurry, before we get found out, we need to go, like, right now, so you better hurry. What was our fifth question? Oh, it depends. It depends on what happens. Why don't you ask it? Oh, All right, and I can't sweet, spell. Sweet Raven Queen, help me! I, I just said it. <laughs> The fifth question is that ridiculous bullshit. <laughs> I cast a spell. All right. It's an action. Okay. You do that. And uh, you channel the power of Anubis being the the farrier, the fairy woman of dead souls. You channel your your, your power and the, the, the power of, of, of death and life it's fun, fun. washes over this corpse as she's laid out, the hole still bored out of her, her breast and as soon as the magic washes over her you see her violet eyes now open staring I up I time the music like that <laughs> alright when well, your uh, name it I, I've happened for you. It's a- never done this before but we have no interest in the raven child outside of helping your great king if we do so, are you interested in receiving great renown and fame for this act? I'll say do a deception check at advantage for me, please. Why isn't Caprice doing this? I, I thought you were going to ask Ants the last question. No, it's a honeybug question. Oh. We mapped, we mapped this out! <laughs> no, I'm saying because we can each ask questions. So what Iris was telling you was that you would ask the last question. Oh, I misunderstood what, what you said. Was. I thought you said just ask the questions. If you want to take over, you can take over. Now that the honeypot question has been asked, at advantage, I rolled a natural 20. Yes! Oh. Which is okay. for, uh, what is it, deception? <laughs> yep. So here, here are my questions, if you want them. Plus two. So 22. They're on the other side. You Did I get the honeypot question close? I yes. flew directly okay. into my case. All right, fine. I will take over. <laughs> so you see... Can she move? She can speak. Okay, so she's laying up, and you hear the grinding of her bone. Her jaw has been dislocated oh, God. and sickeningly grinding against her skull. And can you repeat the question for the Dungeon Master, please? <laughs> the question was... I can uh, read it off if that would help. Sure. It says, we have no need of this child, and with truthful answers from you to the following mm. questions, um, could give you full credit for the delivery of this child to King Vorok, if that is what you wish for us to do. Question. Yeah, that's much better phrased than the way that I phrased it. We'll pretend like that's what happened. The voice rasps out her throat incredibly dry from her agonizing boiling, uh, the, 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 the blight that you put onto her rasped out. <laughs> Yes. Perfect. The next question is, then I, I, I guess, am I doing this? Yeah. Were I'm concentrating you, on keeping the magic right. going. Yeah. Were you aware that a scarab-like creature was embedded in your chest? Yes. Oh, fuck. Who or what does this creature belong to? Eyes stare upward. On Gatab. Not to be confused with Onga Hotep, which is my scarab. That's not a question. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not saying that out loud. <laughs> what is the Raven Child? Stares up, her eyes wide. 
the key to the Carrion's plan. Carrion King's plan. We've got one left. The two options, we have some time. We've asked these questions frankly of 10 minutes, yes. right? The other two options are find out who your second command is and potentially make some sort of deception play. Don't we've, or ask we've, any questions. Or we find out, I, I'm talking... Huddling. Or I, we find out where the other children are. I will leave it to your judgment. I must focus on the spell. Any input? Well, should we ask what the plan is? I think we need to learn about what the plan is. I know you want to know what the children are, or where they are, or how they are, but this might be more important. Caprice, any input? Data point, go. I'm sorry. Fine. What is the Carrion King's plan? Remember, you are at no obligation to answer these. But truthfully. Truthfully. Just make up bullshit. <laughs> you know, don't remind him. Uh, it's the DM. <laughs> to take revenge against the Raven Queen. I say I would hate this bitch. <laughs> Was that the last question? Yes. Yep. Ah, how do you determine the value of material components? Oh! <laughs> the eyes close. <laughs> <sighs> so assuming that all of this is even correct, we, we, it doesn't even really clear anything up. We just know that the Raven Child is the key to this guy's plan to take revenge on the Raven Queen. <sighs> Guys, I hate to do this, but I think we should walk and talk. And I'll be looking around at the looking up. At the raven or the uh, vultures. Damn it! Let's power Fine. walk and talk. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna scoop up the child. You do that. And and holding her over my shoulder, like you know, not like a not like this, but like this. I will walk. You are able to scoop her up, and you see that the vulture uh, riders are now far south. And you had heard that uh, Trela had said that this is a basically the reason why it was so difficult to convince her is because this is so much out in the wilderness. Uh, such a, 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 a strange stretch of the uh, the widow's road um, as you cross and you uh, make your way through the forest. And unless there's anything else you'd like to do, you travel for two more days and nights. I want to know if Iris uh, recognized the name. I would ask. I would ask Iris if she recognized the name of the the, the, the person or being. Do I? Um, My uh, guess is no. I would say, make a, make a, hmm, arcana hmm. check at disadvantage. Oh, it's a Well, I rolled a one and a three, so. Yikes. <laughs> you do not. So it a sounds, three. The name sounds very similar to the language and, and naming scheme of your people. Uh, the, the Osirian pantheon that you worship, but that name in particular does not sound familiar. No, it's similar to the name of my very own scary, who you've all met briefly. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh. Uncle Holden. Oh, Uncle Holden. Not Uncle, <laughs> Uncle. Oh. I heard Uncle too. Yeah, okay, so. Mm-hmm. But clearly there's a lot more going on than we realize, and I think we need to keep going. Yes, I agree. We, we just we need to keep her safe, and hopefully this carrot can help us. I wonder what he would want revenge on the queen for. We have to remember that we cannot guarantee the answers for untruthful. That's a good point. We shouldn't assume that. Maybe it was all just made up to throw us off the train. Or, as some want to do, the best way to lie is to hide the truth in it. So maybe he does want revenge, not on the Raven Queen. I have a dumb question. 
<clears throat> there are no dumb questions except for the ones that you ask, Caprice. What makes a count a count? Is it like a, like a lord? Or are you uh, I think it's a just duke? a title. It's just, well, well, right, but like in the hierarchy of titles, like, is are, are we like, uh, are there arc counts? Or they're like, I don't know. Viscount? Viscount? I think a count uh, serves under a king and rules over a specific part of land within his kingdom. I don't say that. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to be like, Toa, how, how do you know that, Toa? <laughs> I, tell us a spy! I don't say that Kill him! <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. What's a count? What's a king, really? I mean, you know, I, mean, I know what a king is, but sort of, you know, what, what's a king versus a count in this land, huh? <laughs> 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 Alright, well, I just thought I'd ask. Uh, just trying to gauge, you know, where the respect ladder is on this, uh, this journey. We're taking to uh, Count uh, Kreskov. I have literally no more questions for Irish for the next two days. <laughs> so, you camp out, and I'll say that you made a couple close calls, bits of valley where the vultures, riders overhead. You get to a bit more, uh, another more populated area where you see a castle out, and you see that all, of the, really the seeming the villages in this area are all around these castles. Um each within a certain area, and you occasionally see a road where there seem to be, perhaps, now that you know the gate, perhaps just as much, if not more undead, than Shadar Kai. As you have a couple of close calls, you hear the howling of wolves in the distance, you occasionally have a, a, a close call where you stay very stealthy, or a whole pack led by a massive direwolf alpha barely notices you and you continue to make your way. Did you say that we are encountering un just as many undead as Shadow Kai? As you see out on the roads, you're able to see some to with how mountainous you're, you're spending just as much time going up and down as you're going across, which slows you down for sure. As you can get great vantage points over how mountainous and, and just jagged and, and inhospitable this terrain is. As you can see long roads for, for, for many miles. And you can tell now that you've seen these ghouls, the gate that they have. Uh, many, many ogres, uh, or even larger undead creatures. Um, but m most of them being humanoid sized, or medium sized, and dragon's rules. And it's, it's, it's uh, towards, it's around dusk of that final day that you realize now that the civilization that you've left behind is, is where there have been fewer castles and villages and plots of, of farmlands within the walls, perhaps, or right outside the walls of the castle, the castles that are around, and you get incredibly remote. You haven't seen even a vulture rider in hours. As you see the occasional just smaller vulture flying overhead, but very few and far between. Till eventually you make your way into the most treacherous part of this by far. There is, you make your way to a small road and you realize that this road is very narrow, no more than, than, than five feet across, overgrown on either side, trees as if it hasn't really been used in a very long time. And almost as part of the forest itself, you make your way up these winding pathways around very treacherous cliffs that go down hundreds of feet. And eventually, as you turn around one of these bends, the, the rain starts to fall as the clouds boom with thunder and crackle with lightning. And you see five, the, the lightning illuminates five turrets of a castle built in an incredibly distant, treacherous, remote uh, pass in a jagged mountain top. And you see ahead the, through the rain and, and silhouetted in the mountain, a bridge that connects from the part of the, the, the top of, of 
the smaller jagged uh, mountain that you're on to where a large decrepit castle stands before you. And you see with each flash of lightning that there are gargoyles that line uh, smaller guardhouses on either side. Every uh, hundred feet or so. And you see now the walls that surround this castle and it's five spired uh, peak. And you see that there's a bridge across from one tower to another. And then one turret is connected to the very highest turret of all rising up as it crashes. And you actually see a bit of of moonlight as the, the, the sun sets and the moon begins to rise. It's difficult to see through the storm, but the, the wind howls and the rain pelts your face. You finally make your way up to where the small overgrown road arrives and no more than 50 feet ahead of you is the, the bridge that leads to this castle of Count Kreska. Giving cues. So is it is it like just right in front of us? Like right yeah, there? Yeah, you see that there's basically this, this, <clears throat> this spiraling mountain top, and it's the, 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 the relatively low mountains right here. But you see, is there's a bridge that goes across this massive ravine to the a uh, point of of stone in this pass where the castle is built into the wall surrounded uh, five towers in total. Um, uh, you can see now that it that the stone is crumbling. Uh, the wall is in certain parts are are in uh, disrepair, some f- falling a good, having been worn away a good 20 or 30 feet from their tops. Uh, but the, the bridge itself looks out of made of very sturdy uh, stone, but crumbling away in certain parts, the wood rotting. Uh, it looks to be in, in great disrepair. Has the girl stirred at all? Nope. No matter what, every night you check on her, she seems to be in some sort of stasis. I would be trying to basically press the take the rain off of us. You do like in dry clothing. So I'd be like constantly trying to keep her dry and like, you know, fancy whiz biz. Should we try to cross the bridge? I don't think we have a choice. We come all this way. We we just can anyone like teleport with her in case we need to get across and it starts to crumble. You can at least protect her. Can I teleport, my friend? Well, I'm just checking, so you can you can take her with you if you need to, without even hesitating. All right. <clears throat> As you approach, thing. the rain pelts you and the, the boom of thunder. And as you get closer, you finally see that the ta- this castle, as decrepit as it is, looming over you, you see a crash of lightning, and it illuminates what had been hidden before, but you now see rows and rows and rows of pikes outside of the bridge, and on top of each pike speared through is the head of Shadar Kai, in varying states of decay, in some cases just a skull. You guys want to ask them questions? Sure. I think we should be going. I'm with Toa on this one. Let's carefully cross the bridge. And we slowly work our way, trying not to, you know, crumble. Everyone just wait for Toa to go across first. <laughs> I think it's a like, common oh, no, way to get to everyone. What's way. between, like, what's the inner, inner tween? Inner, blah, 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 blah. There is a stone and wood bridge that's built across with uh, several, uh, basically, What's it overcross? Over a massive ravine that plummets down now thousands of feet below. Thousands. You see uh, some pine for you see some pine trees down below, but it's mostly barren. Wow. Okay. That's and this is an incredibly ball. remote <laughs> castle, and it's it's difficult. It's not hard to see how this this count allegedly has uh, not been conquered by the Shadar Kai, despite having turned against uh, the crown. And you see now the the uh, strung up on uh, metal chains 
are the corpses of giant vultures. As it's because of badass. As you see that it is that uh, that that the that the, the, the severed heads, the ones that are some are more recent than you would have expected, have where their necks are impaled is a completely clean severing. As you make your way and you approach the bridge, and who's going first? Guys, Toe is going first and alone uh, until he makes it to the other side. I, I, Hear me out. Maybe we should, you know, knock. Say hello. Hey, we're coming. Fine. But either way, I'm not letting Toe go alone. We're better off and I can help all of us if we stay together. You have to trust me on this one. Okay. Uh, let's let's go. All together? All together and close. It's the only way I can make sure we all make it across. All together now. 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 And we start okay. making our way all together. You do that. Well, together now. You run ahead, and what is your plan? What is my plan? Yeah. If the bridge begins to collapse, I'm going to cast telekinesis, and I can move up to 1,000 pounds with my mind. Oh. Roger that. And you don't have to worry about me, because you've seen me fly. Toa. Right. All right, I can try to keep the bridge. See, I have multiple plans. But All of you. You run forward. Uh, Felix, you're ready. As you make your way forward, Toa, you feel a your foot sink on one of the stones. Immediately, dozens of stakes shoot out of the towers right for around you, and they fly towards you. I need everybody to make a dexterity check for Yeah, me. I don't have abjuration. A dexterity saving throw. Oh, oh yes. I'm not an abjuration wizard. Oh. I don't think he means, like, meat steaks. I think he means, like, spikes. Yeah, I think he does, too. Luckily, I rolled really well. I got a 22. <laughs> 22? 23. 23. Uh, this also 23. 24. Was that? 23. 23. Iris. 13. 13. As you manage to make it through, but Iris, one of these stakes spears into your shoulder, Iris. piercing through. You're going to take some piercing damage. Oh, sweet Jesus. I'm going to reduce it by seven. Uh, and that will be... 16. No, uh, not reaching. Eight, no, I'm not going to do that. 18 points of piercing damage. All right. As it pierces through. Oh, dear. Holy it, fuck. <laughs> oh, you were right. Oh, God. Oh, that we was... should have known this is trapped. Let me try to pull I it out. I told you we should say who we are. Right in the kidney. They could disarm the traps, maybe. The thunder booms out and the lightning crashes the sky, and you see the silhouette of this castle as somehow the clouds almost supernaturally part reveal a massive moon behind this castle. We have to be careful. There's clearly booby traps here. Uh, should we keep going forward, or should we just try to get his attention? Uh, we, we've come too far. Uh, one or the other, quickly. Let's, let's, shout it out. Let's go. But let's walk slowly. And someone in the front needs to just... I'll do it. I'm going to walk in front of the group while they're behind me. Right. And, and I'm going to keep my eyes out for any additional uh, pressure plates or... You do that. Uh, Perception check for me. Just stay uh, close. Just the rain is, is incredibly uh, difficult. Are there like uh, like railings or on a this? Or not at all. What's that? It's Perception. Like uh, look, give me a tenzo on that. A ten. You make your way through, and as you uh, you parse forward, you walk very close. You're keeping your eyes on the ground. It's difficult to see with the rain uh, 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 coursing everywhere. It's as frustrating as it is for Dennis and Edry in Jurassic Park. As, <laughs> <laughs> as I mean, nobody, nobody cares. <laughs> As you make your way, and there's, there's no there's no pressure plates, and as you walk between oh. the next two towers, suddenly you all see a flash of green on either side. Green? And everyone to make a, dex uh, a dexterity check as alchemist fire blasts out Saving of the check. turrets on either side. Saving throw or check? Saving throw, apologies. And I need you to make a disadvantage if you're holding the child. Yeah, Dex? I kind of figured. Yep. figured that was coming. At least I'm a dice. If you ever give me any good rolls, give me two good rolls right now. For, and by two good rolls, I fail. Two bad rolls. Okay, I fail. Uh, I fail. Fifteen. Does that make it? Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-three. Twenty-seven. I fail. What you get? What did I get? I, eight. No, okay. sorry, a six. Uh, the DC is fifteen. <laughs> As the fail. Fail. six. Doesn't make me. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Just to be clear. I was confused. Just to be clear. Clear that it's up. meet it so, or beat it. 
Didn't do it. it doesn't, you it doesn't dive mean, yeah. through the the g- b- glowing green alchemist fire blasting out. Sick. It, it blasts you, Felix. I'm going to give you a and uh, I want I can give you an acrobatics check to see if you can shield uh-huh. the child oh, from yeah. the fire. No, not even close. If if it's between me or her, I would attempt to 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 save her or at least you know shield her. You said what? What am I doing? Acrobatics. Yep. I got a shot. Not with you. As fire I got a blast down. Shit. Oh wow. Fourteen. Fourteen. Mm-hmm. Not uh, good. I you are unable to do this. <gasps> Not good. As oh, no. as you're able to shield a good amount of it. Not but good. you're going to take Oh my goodness. Uh oh, boy. Oh my goodness, says the DM. <laughs> uh that's no good. Twenty-four. 24, 30, uh, I thought 24. of something else too. No, nope, I prepared. That was wrong. Uh, 31, 35, 30, uh, 35, 37 points of fire damage oh, right. as you are ignited in flame and you catch on fire, the fire clinging to you with alchemist fire as it be- continues to burn. Every six seconds, unless you put this out, you know oh, that it's going to. Please. And you see now in the girl. She catches some fire damage, oh, no. and she gets blasted. Her, her, her. The side of her uh, dress starts to ignite, and it gets her calf and and her and her hand. As she as, as, as the, it's almost uh, as much oil as it is flame. Would I know that this one, as a wizard, would I know that this fire is magic? And you, two, would I know that it's dispelled? I would say that you know. Don't even have to rule for her. That alchemist fire is a very common thing. That all you do is put it out. You, Okay, then and I would you, immediately try to put so her out before you would myself. take that out, and you're going to take an additional damage because you put her out yeah, first. No you see the singe, but it's not too bad. However, you're going to take an additional 11 points of fire damage. Got it. And then you then put yourself out. Got it. Got this it. This is done. too dangerous. We have to do something different. I'm just going to run ahead. Maybe I can get their attention. If you're too far away, I'm not going to be able to help you. I'm going to cast Mass Cure Wounds at a fifth level. Yes. You I do can do that. this all day. The power of Anubis channels. Uh, may I, may I, because we're standing here, may I also cast Beacon of Hope? You may. You, uh, so the storm, nothing's coming at you. I'm going to get down into a, a battle trance just so that yep. I'm focused and ready to yep. go. I'm focused. we we got to get through this. Can we just fly over it? I, mean, I can try to run through. I'm I, pretty fast. I can fly and, and, and get to the other side and maybe... Disable some some of this. I I I could try, I could see if there's triggering mechanisms on the other side. It all seems to be a part of this this bridge. Everyone takes twenty nine points of healing. Oh, that's huge. Ooh, that's huge. That tickles. Well, good as new. Oh, we should have long rested after the last. Yes. Correct. Yep. You would have. Yeah, yeah, Wait, after what? Days. After the last we battle. We had two we had days. Camp for two. Yes, I know. I got fucking shit on. No, in that yeah, fight, and obviously, so. and so did Felix, oh. and so did you. So, uh, so one. Okay. Um. Felix, do you want me to carry her? Fine, but don't go ahead. You have to stay close. No, I'm going to stay right next to you, but you need to focus on, on, on dodging. I heard her. I, and, I uh, hand her over. I'm going to walk over to her, and I'm going to place my hand on her, and I'm going to cast Death Ward. Ooh. Roger that. Okay. You feel, and you feel, you see the shimmering uh, golden turquoise light, and then it then seeps back in. She is watched by Anubis, just as you are. Do we just run through, or can we just... Lightning crashes, rain pelts on you. Lightning flashes, you see those spires, some crumbling. It's, it's, it's a miracle that anyone lives here. Let us continue. Uh, do you want to uh, be able to fly? I, we, you, you and I could be, and then and they could... Well, I, that's selfish, but we, we could get the girl to safety if, if, if one of us could fly and carry her. How, 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 what is the length of this bridge? Uh, the length of the bridge, roughly, is like an estimate. Probably another, probably every one hundred feet. There is another. Many, how many of those? Uh, there feet? is probably uh, every one hundred feet. There is is that, and so it's probably three more. I can make it to the other side in an instant, and depending on how many instances we have to go, I, I might be able to take one or two people. No, I think. Don't worry about uh, me. Just get her safe and get you safe. I'll be fine. I can make it to the other side. In an instant, then you take it. You go. I'll be fine too. Uh, are, are we sure? Just are we be absolutely careful when sure? you get there. You don't know what's there. I'm not quite sure it's a good idea for us to split up. Especially 
no offense, Felix, but the scrawny one going ahead, especially with the Raven Child. It's 300 feet, and it's fine. I, I get to the other side, and yes. it's no big deal. And something happens to you, and we all try to rush to save you in an instant of panic when we see you get attacked by a giant gargoyle or a huge, hulking, undead beast, and then we fall off the edge well, and die idea was and to, was to rush ahead anyway. I think it's worth the risk, because if she gets, if, if any more of these traps hurt the girl, we're much more hardy than, than she is. We she can take it, she can't. Maybe die. I can just trick us them and then, you know, boop around like I always do. I will not let her die. I'm going. I'm gonna just lower down and anime run off, uh, kind of being as cautious as I can to avoid anything as I come upon those, like, towering. And as I go, I'm... Count Graskov! Count Graskov! I'm screaming the whole way. I'm following. We're, I guess we're going! Come on! I, I would wait to see how far she gets. And if she makes it towards and how dead she is, and if she, she makes there. it towards the third gate or third set of towers, I will dimension door to the other side of the towers. You do that, but I'm you waiting wait. to see how it goes. I'm thirty feet behind her. Lefty, to keep up. you throw your arms behind you and you sprint through the 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 rain. And as you make your way, you're 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 fast. She's fast. As <laughs> you do, you, as speaking. you pass through the next guard towers and you hear a bubbling pop as acid bursts out in this this horrible sizzling sheet that, that appears and then drops that you have to run through. I need to make a dexterity saving throw to see if you can avoid it. Oh yeah. Uh, Dex, you say? Come on. 31. Oh yeah. You manage to run through and, and it crashes down. And then uh, Caprice, you're following behind. Lufty's already ahead. Yeah. Another sheet of acid make a dexterity saving Good to know. Me. Good to know. We're learning. Uh, that's going to be a 27. You manage to make it through before the sheet of, of, of acid uh, falls down. And Lufty, as you go, you make your way, and you see that there's only two more. There's only two more spans of this. You make your way, and you run through. And uh, as you, you run, you're, you're incredibly light, but you just feel a slight give. Uh-oh. As you're midway through a cross, and suddenly, <laughs> and you feel the bridge <laughs> open up as it begins to just completely drop. How far of a distance? Uh, it's, uh, what I said, 100 feet. So basically, you're in the middle, so it's, <laughs> the it's 50 feet. feet. So it's 50 feet as you begin to slide down the rain slick as the well, bridge itself do it. uh, begins to uh, close and open. The, the bridge begins to open up into the ravine, thousands of feet below. So I would. How how quick is it dropping? Is it like? It's like very quick. It's like it's probably like probably uh, two or three seconds. As long as you maintain foot contact with anything. Yeah, basically, I would just uh, like sprint as fast as I can down that slide and make whatever jump I can to try to catch the other one on its way down. I would say make a dexterity check. You can you're run up a dexterity saving throw, rather. As before, as you're sliding in... It is raining, though, and that does affect it, I believe. Right? She's so, like, it's slick. It affects climbing, but she's a monk and whatever. She's a, a storm monk. I think that's fine. She, yeah, I would say she's part rain cloud. <laughs> like, or... Yeah, yeah, well, she has levitate, regardless. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> she's literally made for this. Uh, again, 31. Uh, it opens in a completely vertical. You just, you see, you feel this, and as soon as the grinding of the stone drops, you immediately uh, spread, and you uh, leap forward. The power of the, you, you're riding the, the lightning as, as it crashes, and you embrace your thunder and, and lightning nature, and you leap to the other side, uh, quickly making, closing the distance, and landing just barely on the other side. as, And then you hear... I'll turn around there, I'll stop and turn around. Come here, stop! Uh, he screeches <laughs> as you almost fall off Caprice. <laughs> as it happens, open. and then you see as... I would have been okay. Oh. Toa? Iris? Yes. Yeah, are you guys right behind me? 
I look behind to see where Toa and Iris are and what they're doing. The howling of the wind is so hard, it's drowning out. You see them back where you had left them. As the three of you, I guess the four of you, including the uh, this this child, is it, are looking at the castle looming. The gate is not that much further for you. Just one more to go, and then you're at the span right before the gate of the castle. Uh, and thank you so much, Raiders. Uh, thank you for the there, oh, there's a oh, oh, castle this party in the middle of a storm is trying to get through. It's uh, a it's trappy. Bridge. It's a trappy, trappy bridge. It's a trappy bridge. Caprice, there's a there's a. A thing! There's a thing! Don't step on it! I, I might intentionally step on it because it seems to come up and then I can try to run across it when it is up, but Toa and Iris didn't follow me when I asked them to. Guys, what are you guys doing? Come on! I, I'm gonna look to the two of them and say, I can get her across. I can come back and I can take Iris across, but I can't take you, Toa. Well, oh, <laughs> no. Kitty's got claws, so I might just climb. Can you just use and your I'm gonna, and I'm gonna, across? I'm gonna scoot myself down along the side, and I'm going to kitty run with my claws across the edge of the bridge. Dude, I should have done that. Uh, <laughs> I will say, for, just for this sake, let's do um, an athletic acrobatics check. Uh, I would say I would have said disadvantage because it's slippery, but because you have claws, I'll just make it straight. Got knocked that acid. I fall to my death. Shut up. Probably not. We've got a tweeze. Ten. Ten. So, um, uh, oh, no. uh, Iris, you, uh, you, you begin to descend, and uh, you see Felix and Toa right there. And as soon as you jump down, you sink your claws in, and as your claws, you're shimmering, shimmying down, and it's very wet, and you're, and immediately your fur is all damped down. It's difficult to see, and then suddenly you uh, make your first move over. And suddenly your paw slips, and you begin to slide down, and you'll hear the scraping of Iris's claws against the side of this this bridge. As you can target everybody. As how far? No. You're well, way far away so from me. Yeah, they're you're, gone. Guys, you are hearing, you are hearing Iris scrape down and fall into her death. Iris is right next to us, right? She yes. took off. She took off. She, she, she's down in the second that she's getting down. She's sliding down probably about 20 feet from me. From us? Oh, okay, sorry. I was trying so, to- Hold on, so this, this, this matters, right? It does matter, so here's the idea. I can manipulate creatures or objects by thought. Right, I can lift up to one thousand pounds for ten minutes, but I can only move us thirty feet at a time as an action. Action, right? I can automatically move it thirty feet in any direction, but not beyond the range of the spell. It, my thought was, my original thought was that if here, feel free to read. Yeah. My original thought was that if if the entire bridge decided to collapse and we were all close together, I could telekinesis a rock underneath of us and float us across. I was not prepared for multiple levels of traps and acid and spikes and so oh, we how we doing, that we pause for we one second needed. and uh, take care of this additional twist of fate because I feel like we'll need it perhaps very thank you so much thank you so much welcome welcome thank you we have two we have two twists of fate oh, all think, in uh, one I think let me should be a total of five I can't do two at once should be more than five here's three hundred bits yes yes thank you we always do a total I can't handle two at once, so just one at a time, one please. Oh! Oh, that was a disappointment. Ah! 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 So you, you can target a creature. You could target I'm going to use Saber. my staff and bring forth my giant scarab beetle and jump on its back. As you, yeah. as you yeah. fall, oh I'll say you scrape and you, you, you then lose as you fall down, as it looks like Mufasa from The Lion King. As you do that, and you think for a moment, you <laughs> grab onto oh, your staff. Oh, save me! And so <laughs> a scarab that does not have a, a mummy face in its um, shell immediately buzzes out and you grab it by the legs and it begins to pull you uh, along. Has anyone seen Fern Gully? <laughs> What's for as you going? buzz oh, man, across, uh, and, and and which way are you flying? As you guys are figuring out what to do, I'm just gonna try and fly and get to Caprice. Okay, you uh, manage to fly around the outside, and um, uh, as you uh, you fly, you will see as as there seems to be some sort of sensor on the side of these turrets. You do see one, only one arrow. <laughs> 
fly out. So I'm just going to make an attack roll here. I could just tell he needs to see it like right on your back. <laughs> Both of them miss as they fly out, and you get the sense of how they might have also he, this 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 cat may have also killed uh, giant vultures. As oh, you you hear the buzzing of wings, and Iris, you land next to Caprice. It's just like you're, Game of Thrones. Your beetle. Uh, so as be- she was flying, there an uh, arrow attack. Oh, we're yes, on the outside, outside as well. Oh. Because we're gonna fly. Out. All right. Um, I'll make sure. We're gonna... Iris, uh, uh, this this mechanism uh, it makes the whole bridge just collapse. But then when it comes up, I think that we can race across it. But we need to wait for Toa and Felix. Toa, Felix. No, yeah, so here's what's happening, right, yeah. He's doing this. Toa and I are, I'm holding the girl, and what Toa it, and I, we're, we're talking. I am very, very focused, though, on Lufty to see what happens when she gets past the third gate. Yep. And I'm not doing anything until I see what she does. So I I turn and see him turned around doing this, and I'm just like, ah, and I will continue to run. You do that, you continue to run, and you see far ahead uh, as the lightning crashes and you make your way uh, halfway across, the gate is right in front of you, and you notice too late in the storm, as the lightning, you see the silhouettes of four huge gargoyles, bat-like, and you see (laughs) bat-like wings from the back of their, uh, uh, from, from their shoulders, begin to beat and fly and take off into the sky and begin to descend towards you. So she makes it past the towers with no issue. Uh, so that was the last trap. Or the gargoyles. The gargoyles, yeah. <laughs> but, but my, Funny, uh, I feel like I a guess, certain uh, cat mentioned there might be gargoyles. I guess, <laughs> I know what you said there, I'm like... <laughs> I guess it's my, crazy, Tuck Iris. My question, question is, is fucking so that she, she's over the bridge, and wherever she's landing, she's the over the bridge, and she's there. halfway to the gate. To the gate of, of the walls outside. So... Just just so I understand, if I cast a spell that yep. is concentration for 10 minutes, yep. generally, in combat, while I'm maintaining this concentration, I'd be able to cast another spell. Yes. May as I long t- as it's not concentration. Yeah, yeah. Concentration. May I take two, uh, two, may I cast a spell? That's 12 seconds, yeah, so you're, you're good. I cast telekinesis on tele. Okay. <laughs> I, am now, doing- I am now able to lift 1,000 pounds. Yeah. Dimension Door says, whatever I can carry, I can take with me. So, but it's only one creature of... A size smaller. It's, it's crew. When it comes to creatures, mm. it is... It, mm. it, it limits that power. Yeah, so you what can, you can carry, not what your mind can carry, what's magic. It, well, it says what you can carry. So regardless, it'd be a, it's a creature, right? There's, those are the limits. You can carry one creature, yeah, objects that you can carry. So basically, the limit is as one long as their weight doesn't exceed what you can carry. Yes. But Toe is not an object. Toe is not He's an a object. creature. Mm. Felix, come here! And I want to grab Felix, who's holding the girl, and pick us all up. Right. The issue is that we're never going to get there in time. We can only move thirty feet per second. I, I, that was. That's the only reason I was thirty trying to feet per thirty feet per turn. Over ten minutes, you, you, you definitely do. You could definitely do it. Not while she's getting torn alive by gargoyles. That may be our well, only option. Well, to be fair, I did warn us from splitting apart in case there were gargoyles at the end of this. The the point is, we have. I no, didn't hear you. That was <laughs> so. From a meta knowledge, that is obviously my plan to get over there. Right, okay. was to carry us all with telekinesis. It's not fast. It's not. It's not fast at all. Right. You guys will get there first. We'll eventually catch up, and that's fine. What I will do is I, I have Felix and the girl, yep. and I'm basically just going to sprint to the next trap. Well, and I'll say, take us over! Yes, and I will mentally move us <laughs> above and beyond the gates to not have to worry so about... So you move above and beyond yeah, you don't fly, want to worry about any of that shit. You're flying up and around, and I'll say that as, you, as uh, you're as you being carried, you're basically this uh, floating Mary Poppins. Uh, yes. As you float through the air, He's basically the arrows are going to fly over. out uh, in to attempt to shoot at you, uh, just as they, as they had to Iris and her beetle. My beetle. One misses, one flies out. Nope. The other is going to fire out, and we're going to see who that hit. The arrow pierces in to, uh, we're going to see who it hits. I know who's in this cast. No, we don't. Oh, it's Toa. It's Toa. As it pierces out, and it's going to deal. I'm trying to, like, shield them, right? As much as I can in my body. (laughs) 12 points of piercing damage. That's not too I'm writing down a name. It, in this it pierces in as you as you all float over, and eventually you 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 land, 
and uh, are you gonna basically fly over uh, Lufty and Burke, uh, I guess Caprice and Iris? Yeah, we got, yeah, we're we're going to the end. We're so, going to look. So basically, my goal is if we just going over each trap, so that I can sprint the rest of the way because it's much faster than That's you fair. just telekinesing us. That's you know what fair. I mean? You're uh, like. I, I would say, okay. like, just take me over yes. and strap it all yes. the rest of the That's way. Reasonable. I will say, say you do that. I can do so we, we go over the acid wall, yep. we fly over the pit trap, and then we get to so lift you with the gun. One more, one more arrow will hit you, Toa. Sorry, brother. As it pierces into you, that is going to be uh, 13 points of piercing damage. My as, uh uh, Lufty now, the gargoyles are about halfway, they descend slowly. They, you see that they are, they're, they're humanoid, they're bat-like, but they're made of stone and they're very clearly alive. Their eyes flash with this alchemical, uh, alchemical fire that, that, that animates them. As they begin to descend upon you, uh, you don't have much longer. Uh, uh, until seeing, seeing that they have lifted off and that they have passed the acid wall, I would trigger the, uh, trap to make the, the, um, Pitfall uh, go and then launch it up and go, Iris, we need to cross right now. So sure. you, need, you need to get halfway across, 53 to cross the trigger before it slides down. Or like a quarter. You have to be in the dead middle of it for yeah. it to even trigger. Oh. That's the point. That's, yeah. It's sneaky like that. Oh. I misunderstood that. I thought that it triggered as you crossed the initial threshold. Nope. Um, because then you were just like back up. But we know right. how it works, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No so reason. I'm going to use my feline grace or agility or whatever. Is your beetle coming with you? Oh no! I'm just bellowing. Okay. He's, <laughs> he, doesn't he, he doesn't. He doesn't last that long anyway oh, yeah, because yeah. he's the big one. Okay. So he's gone. Do that. Um, so I'm gonna preparing for this, knowing what Caprice told me. I'm gonna rush to the middle, um, and right as I get to the middle, I'm going to jump. I'm going to watch okay. her, and I'll cast Fly on myself, just to... Okay. I will say that, as you do that, Iris, you feel... But you feel like you're ready for it now. I need to make a dexterity saving throw at advantage, even in the rain, with the slipperiness, as you leap forward, and... Uh, I think it's a 22. It's 22. 22, as you leap, and even though it's going, you... Or feel like you're barely gonna make it, but you sink your claws into the stone, and you find the grooves, and you shamble your way up as you see your friends now, uh, Felix and Toa, landing as um, as the uh, as the gargoyles are, are are very close at this point. So, the where where I'm going, where they're coming from, are they coming like I'm here and they're, they're coming, coming the down, the or castle. they're coming towards? They're me. coming to the walls of the castle, and they're all gonna land here. So like and in I will front of you is they're the, coming towards yeah, me. The walls okay. of the I will castle. say at this point, as 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 Caprice is waiting, all four gargoyles are going to to slam down on top of you with massive fists. As uh, they're going to do that, I need to make uh, uh, four separate uh, dexterity saving throws. Oh, for me, please. no problem. No problem. From Lucy. No problem. Hey. Gonna use the same one over no problem. I've been doing okay. These ones haven't. She has four. <laughs> Please take those back. <laughs> I do. I just, this is the only one that I'm trusting at the moment. So this is going to take 40 minutes. But it's four. It's just four, four rolls, right? Four rolls. Just roll. You can roll all four. 21. Okay. A uh, natural no, 20. Okay. So you're 24. 12, you're 12 million. You're what? fine. Your dexterity saving from natural 20. Oh, wow. Okay. One in 400. 34. One in 400. Let's go for oh. uh -oh. 17. 17. Yeah, uh, that's a little low. Uh, you manage you. to dodge out of the way despite these four massive bat-like gargoyles sending like, their large teeth and, and like, roll uh, through uh, them. these large lower teeth jutting up. They they look at you with no, with just this, this this empty stairs. They slam down. You manage to dodge out of the way and just skid back on the slick stone uh, about 15 feet as uh, uh, Toa and Felix now land beside you. Uh, Iris now uh, climbing up and joining you. Uh, Caprice, you're Waiting, and so you start to uh, uh, hear it uh, grinding. I just up. want to see that Iris made it across safely, and as soon as she does, I'm going to zamp as quickly as I can to. Um, You're flying. Can, yes, I'm flying. My oh. jump is like that meme with the cat jumping off of the sail. The sail. sail. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you do that, and so you cast fly, and an arrow shoots out as you try to fly through, and it misses. As you all join down, as the gargoyles once again look, uh, as the the, 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 the crumbling dust uh, is whipped away in the wind of the storm, and they look, and, and you're nowhere to be seen, and they turn, and uh, they uh, take to the sky, and, and, and leap forward, and uh, begin to, uh, to descend upon you. What do you all do? Oh, there's no combat? They're coming uh, towards well, us. Aren't they? Well, you can, you can do something. I was you know. gonna haste my boy, but if we're not in combat, fuck that shit. 
uh, are they? They're facing them or me? They're facing you. You're now back with them. You've slid back, and they've all joined you. Everyone now has joined you. We're all together. We're all in line. Oh, I thought I like slid. And there are just four. Now, how big are these girls? Uh, they're uh like about the size of that the ogre, but also with wings and 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 tails. Giant, large. They're they're large sized. I'll take two steps forward. Count Kreskov! Where are your allies? Where are your friends? We're not Jedi Kai! Please! Zern! Zern! Mention Zern! Oh, that's Zern! Uh, but we have the, the, uh, we're, we're friends of Zern! We, everything's cool! We have like symbols, right? Like some you, sort of mana- have, I would, the, I would reach Raven. in while he's doing this and like wave the, the symbol of, of the, raven the Raven. Or, or, As yes. Yes. they fly forward, uh, you see their massive fists, these, their alchemical fire in their eyes as they lumber forward and you see uh, the fist slam and as they're right at you, Felix, and you see it slamming towards the child and I, and then as it slams toward the, t- the, sort of towards the child, the lightning mm-hmm. flash is illuminating it and then as it illuminates the sleeping girl, it, it stops oh. and I need you to roll a persuasion check at advantage. Oh, fuck. Oh, thank you. Hey, no, not me. I'm not touching the dice. Woo! Woo! <laughs> 24. Yeah, let's go. 24. That's pretty good. Um, it's okay. Uh, as it stops, the other one, the other ones look at it, and they all look at the child, and they all just kind of back off a little bit. And then uh, as as you as you uh, as you st- stand there and wait, the the, the, the wind and the, and the wind howling and the rain beating your face, uh, the thunder crashes, and then you suddenly hear <laughs> as the gates of the wall of the wall start to open, and you see as the lightning crashes, and you see the silhouette of a humanoid figure standing at the uh, behind the gate as it opens, and you're expecting to see some tall count. But then you see a very small, squat, stout figure, uh, shorter, shorter than, than, than Herja. And you hear a voice say, all right, boys, now, now t- take it easy, take it easy. And immediately the, uh, the, the gargoyles turn and they, they nod and they fly back up, their stone wings flying the up and they then begin to perch and then the fire goes out, and uh, you see as this small figure starts to move, uh, large feet and big hands, tiny little wings uh, on his back, as you see as a crash of lightning, you see very clearly what looks like a gargoyle, but small, squat, and stout, with almost like, uh, with, with bat-like features and a large lower jaw, and uh, and but seems to be carved into a butler outfit. As uh, he steps well, forward, as the wind, uh, as the, the thunder crashes and the lightning strikes. Uh, uh, he steps forward and says, oh, so, you, so you're the one that, uh, that the master was speaking about. Sorry about all that funny business. You know, you gotta take precautions. Uh, Those are some good precautions. Can we get inside, please? Please, I mean, like, we, we need help. Oh yeah, get, get yourselves out of the rain. Come on, follow me. And he turns and you see as this, uh, this small stone man uh, begins to walk and guide you in. What the um, hell? Uh, into a grand courtyard with the gates of the, the gates of the, or the, the, the large door of the castle open already. The very dim glow of the the very dim glow of just light candlelight from within as their stairs go up and you see there's actually a bit of a there's a bit of a, 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 a marble bl- or a stone block on one side of the stairs as as you see that through this courtyard it's effectively empty beside just rubble as as you see now is that there are gargoyles all around this castle and some spots where there might should be a gargoyle, and there isn't. As you continue to say, oh, come on, get your shoes right. And he uh, he leads you up the stairs as the <laughs> as the uh, the gates close behind you and you out of the wind and the rain. I would begin prestigiating <laughs> my friends to try to dry them off. Yes, oh, thank please. You. And, and a, trying what, to dry what us. Did you call it Capri Sima Wop? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a, <laughs> an accurate uh, acronym of what I called you when we were at the spa uh, so very long Yes, I'm ago. one of those. Oh, dear. <clears throat> I'm sorry about all that. Uh, m- my name is Major Domo Brutus. 
Uh, I am the uh, head of the house, or, or castle, so to speak, of, of, of the master. And I, I did hear that you was expecting guests, but you can never be too careful these days. Joho? Uh, jo- what? What did you say your name is? Brutus. Brutus. Major Domo Brutus, yes. Major Domo? Domo. Major, major Domo. Major Domo. 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 Major Domo. 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 Very important. So you're a butler. I think that a Major Domo is like the head butler of an estate in a in a, in a lord's castle. How did you know that? Why do you know all this? <laughs> God damn it. And you see as the... Oh, Mr. Major, it's nice to meet you. As this grand entrance hall where there are pillars, one is is, is toppled over, leaning to the side. I and you see this. that there's a number of, uh, of fixtures know. where uh, there are candles. Some are lit, uh, some are, are, are broken. Uh, there's just a very dull glow. And you see that there is a, a double spiral staircase going up. One side is just completely Ooh. collapsed in. And uh, and you see that there's tattered cloth where there may have been uh, tapestries. As um, we have many tapestries. And uh, and he says, um, I will say, uh, are you here to see the master by all chance? We're here to see the count. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we are. Okay. Um, uh, he's not in a good space right now. Uh, he's not feeling quite well. Um, but if you allow me to do the talking, I might be able to butter them up a little bit. Like a little butter roll. I mean, that sounds good. He looks at you with a, a, a grin, and you see that there's a, a stone tooth uh, on one side, and another one coming up. Oh, uh, I like his, him. <laughs> we have nowhere else to go. I mean, things are pressing, and it's urgent, but I mean, we're not going anywhere. Is there maybe like a fire we could sit by while you do whatever you do? Oh, oh, pardon me, we haven't a guess in, uh, well, weren't beheaded by the master, um, uh, in a long time. Uh, let me, uh, and you see there's a large, uh, there's a large, uh, fireplace in this, in this entrance hall, and he heaves apart, he heaves aside a stone block, and <laughs> as he, uh, begins to build a fire, actually very dexterous, despite his short, uh, squat form, really and a fire really roars <laughs> up, um, a fire roars up, and you realize now, at this point, that it wasn't actually him, that <laughs> there's a blast of flame that just comes from the stone itself, as it ignites, and, and he, uh, he, uh, says, uh, uh, give me one moment, and I will fix you in one shake of a little lemmy's tail. I was absolutely convinced that this was the Count. I'm not going to lie. I was very confused. I was like, wow, the Count is a uh, two and a half foot tall uh, stone butler. Very, very weird. That's weird. I don't know that's why that's the thing, but that's where we're going. Okay. Well, I feel like it's not unreasonable that a Count would have his own butler. I, 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 Someone I, needs to order all of the servants. Fine, around. fine. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not used to well, this. Well, it, now it's just me and all the stone heads up there, but, you know, it's Ender Master, of course, and it's a little lonely, but we may do. Uh, You're the only one left. Only one's left. Well, I, I, I'm the one. I, I got a stone head, but it's a little bit more thinking, you know what I mean? They all listen to me because I'm a major domo. Yeah, I can domos. tell. You're important. They're the stone heads. I'll, I'll, I'll go let the master know that you're here. And uh, you Fuck stay it. warm. I'm going to go uh, go make sure he's not in a, a state or mood. Thank you Ooh. for uh, thank you. Thank you for buttling. And, and we mean that sincerely. We owe you a lot. It is my duty and my role in life to serve the master. And he uh, he like bows to you, and he begins to uh, shuffle up the stairs, and you see a door open as it slams. And as the firelight flickers, you uh, you see at the center of this uh, audience hall that there's actually um, where at the center there's a a pedestal where there may have been a statue at one point. And you see the, the bits of crumbled pieces and ruins, and you see what looks like uh, what might have been a horse rearing up and a, a young man with a sword uh, held high uh, riding atop of it. Um, but it's just crumbled into pieces at this point. And the, the light flickers, and you're able to warm up and it's not much longer until the doors <laughs> they open, and uh, you uh, you see the small shape of Major Domo Brutus oh, fast. Uh, as he uh, uh, shimmies on down, and he says, "Oh, okay. Uh, the master's not feeling well, but he says that you all can come, and I like to take his word for it because if he doesn't, then oh, that's bad news for me. Uh, so let me do the talking, and I will." Uh, 
make sure everything's okay, and we'll have all the pleasantries. And then you can have your fancy uh, political count talk. We okay. won't say a word, right? Yeah, sure. Until you tell us to, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, and he begins to guide you through the castle, and it's dark, and it's cold. You see the, you hear the dripping of water and the occasional rumbling of the thunder crashing outside, lightning through the windows that you pass and you make your way, and there's very little candlelight. But then you can see kind of down hallways, you hear what sounds like the bubbling of perhaps cauldrons. You see the glowing of, of light, of magical green and alchemical goings on in various rooms and strange mechanical uh, uh, traps and, and, and features as he guides you through this castle and eventually you arrive at this grand door. And you see that on the door is some sort of sigil. It's, it's, it is a, a black horse with a fiery red mane rearing up uh, oh, to the side. And he says, remember, let me do the talking. And he pushes the door open, and the the on, on either side are rows of 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 of, um, of uh, candelabras that are lit, flickering in this dim space. It's difficult even for your eyes to adjust. As you see now, this this audience hall is very large. You see that one pillar is toppled to the side, and you see that there is. Uh, several stairs on a platform at the end of a, a large throne of some kind where a withered humanoid man, he looks like a human, uh, 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 is, is, is leaning forward. His long, uh, nearly white blonde hair is, uh, is ragged and disheveled, hanging Let's over his go. face. He's holding a, a golden uh, goblet inlaid with rubies as... Uh, he looks forward, it's difficult to see his face, and as you approach, you see that one little bit of, one little bit of, of, of actually, some of this actually pristine, and not in ruin, is a massive portrait behind him. And you see an absolutely gorgeous young man uh, with perfect, pristine long hair, and perfectly, impeccably dressed, as you see sitting on his lap is a beautiful young lady with black ringlet curls and a poofy dress. And as you approach, you see this man, he's, he, he looks, appears to be a human, his face is sunken, his eyes are hollow, as he, he, he looks as a, a thousand yard stare, and you see b beside, uh, beside his throne is a shimmering silver rapier. And, and you hear uh, Brutus clear his throat. <clears> throat> um, uh, 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 master, uh, allow me to present. Um, oh, I didn't get your names. What was your names? Uh, uh, oh, I have the guys. What? Uh, what a certain, what a certain sense, uh, just as ordered. Uh, I know you don't like them, but they are here, and they apparently mean well. They got a little child. The, the wings of the raven. Oh, the wings of the raven. Uh, and allow me to present, master. Uh, cut it with the pleasantries, Brutus. And you see as the the man lifts up his head, his disheveled platinum blonde hair hanging low on, on a, a t uh, in front of a tattered outfit as he looks at you. And he looks like a broken man as he forces a smile and you see a flash of candlelight glint across his teeth and you see a single fang and he says, Holy shit! How can Count Asha Kreskov help you? And that fucking is where we'll end the session. So, oh, so, holy I shit! I have to say, I don't remember when it was, but I said, I know who is in that castle, and yeah, I specifically wrote it, wrote it down. She wrote it down. Yep. I knew it. So, how'd you know? I just had a feeling. That you know how I uh, I was just see the future Prince because Renifold. I'm I'm clear I'm clairvoyant. <laughs> I was expecting Prince Renifold with the rapier and like very you know I was expecting very oh, fuck we got a lot to talk about. He only has a single fang. He's no, he just up. showed his single fang. Showed. He's oh. only able to open well, his mouth. Oh. He's also ancient. And you know what that million. means? You know who's on his lap? Yes. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, yeah. I think. What's your face? In the well, portrait. Um, I can't remember. Oh, it was in, it was, it was in the oh, portrait. Oh, I thought you were saying it was like actually. No, it's in the no, portrait. No, it's in the portrait. Yeah. yeah. It's in the mm. portrait. 
I can't remember. I, I, I We're not done. Oh my god. We're not done. What's next? Avengers and Chill. Avengers and Chill. What's that? It's, Which we, we've explained several times. It's not always new. chill. It's not always, it's not always chill. chill. If you it's are new stream. and you're not a stream. subscriber, that's totally okay because you'll get a five minute preview, but Andy's going to explain the rest. You may get a five minute I preview. Think. We don't really know you anymore. Think. But the idea is that after every single stream session of D&D that we do, we turn the, the camera over to a subscriber-only stream as a way to kind of give perks to the people who support us on a you know daily, weekly basis. Uh, and what we do is we talk about our favorite moments. We are going to unwind from the session. We're going to talk about our theories. You also get to drop questions in chat, and we will answer them. It's a little bit more of an intimate setting for us to all kind of like talk. And yeah, but, uh, it is um, called uh, a vampire therapy. Sometimes. Yes, sometimes uh, post session therapy. Uh, so if you're on the fence and you want a little behind the scenes action. Go ahead and throw us a sub. You know, uh, no pressure. And should we get all our thank yous that we may have missed? Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, I don't know where we left off. Oh, so Let's thank you so much, Lantern and Lord of the Rain. Oh, so, uh, so Northwatch, it. Ancient Gimli Northwatch, uh, 200 bits and 300 bits a piece. So thank you very, very much. Thank Lantern you. Noir, rated the channel, which I believe that we mentioned. Yep. Uh, that other pond, follow the channel. Thank Fallen you. 1, 121, follow thank the you. channel. Thank you. Thank you. Follow the reluctant hermit, follow the, the channel. Thank, thank you. you. I'm glad that you weren't reluctant to follow. Crimson Spartan 13, follow the channel. Uh, mm-hmm. Fallen 1, 121 cheered 500 bits, which Woo, is another twist, you. which I don't know if we got that twist or not. We will I think we did. Uh, yeah. Malkion Major, 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 follow your channel. Thank uh, you. Uh, Skull Kid uh, 3991, follow Thanks, the Skull channel. Thanks, Skull Kid. Spanky the Danky, Oops, follow the amazing. channel. Amazing. One Nerd Girl, follow your channel. Thank, thank you. you. Iron Board Dear more. gifted a tier one sub to Fox. So oh, thanks very much for that. Sticking around. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed yeah, the show. Fox. Ready to nap has resubscribed to one for 13 months. Yay. Thank you. Ready to nap. I Twitch 3940 oh, follow the channel. So good. Thanks so much for gifting five tier one subs. That's Thank you so much. Awesome. And then Fox also thank you. subscribed. So welcome to Cassimia, Ginger Nuples, Hello Bees. Hello Bees. Thank you. 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 Thank you.